previously on The Nationals. One more. And, oh, 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 and the hop oh, kick again. Oh, Side oh, lost his life. Oh, and he wants to match right now. Disaster. And the bow and arrow gets blocked. What a block by Jay Disaster. Jay Disaster. These three minutes right outside of range. But we also have to take into account this is for a million we're talking about. Wow, look at that. What did he just. Okay, I'm going to just. I'm going to tell you right now what he did. He oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Crouch cancel into electric. Hmm. Wow. What a preview that was. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to dwell into that any longer. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Nationals, the country's biggest and first ever franchise based esports league in the country. Yours truly, Pika, on commentary, and. Of course, Raf. With an R. With of course, <laughs> of course. That always had to happen. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, wow, welcome, welcome. Again, we are back for more second action here at the Nationals, ladies and gentlemen. As you saw earlier, that was day five. And now we are moving into day six of this 13-day conference, ladies and gentlemen. And the players have not been any hungrier when it comes to garnering points, aren't they, Ralph? Exactly. And as we are talking about points, which will be shown in a while, <laughs> the top three players have not really been moved. Mm -hmm. Ever since Vermillion secured that top spot, he has not been moved. And of course, talking about the players, these are our very, very beautiful players. Oh, look at look at look at those faces, both hungry and enthusiastic, all at once, ladies and gentlemen, from the Suha Execration Punishers to the Laos Auto Group Playbook Esports PLDT Smart Omega Signal Ultra Warriors SCIE Olympians Brand E Pros and Happy Feet Emperors. Wow, these guys are gonna duke it out again once more, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost halfway there in the conference, and again, the action never stops because we have seen changes in the rankings already from the bottom upwards and vice versa some people have sunk down just a little bit you know but not quite not quite there yet you know they, they're not gonna give up that easily when it comes to getting those precious precious three points for themselves wow and speaking of Raph look at this man exactly and as I said Vermillion in the top spot with 24 points both AK and Dojin with 21 Prime close behind with 20 Jules not so far ahead with 19 either, and of course Machine Head 17, and Haji slowly moving up with 16. Okay, so again with the lower half, we have, uh, I would not call this a very, very lucky 13 here, ladies and gentlemen, but mm -hmm. it is a three way tie between Coffee Prince, Mouts, and Maru, whereas Hap uh, Happy Feet Emperor's Ray is in 11. Lucky one ones right there, my friend. And Don Argus with nine, Jay Disaster showing a spectacular lucky seven, and Jason with five. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you win, Two straight, uh, two straight matches, you do get three points. When it's two to one, the winner gets two and the loser gets a point. So again, nobody goes home empty-handed, but of course, we're gonna want those three points straight on. Okay, so a preview of what is gonna happen today, ladies and gentlemen, the master of the time up right here. Ladies and gentlemen, Jay Disaster is gonna go up against LPE Jojin, who now is second uh, with, with, his, uh, with his grind, you know. And PLDT Smart Omega's duels against Don Argus will go second. Machine Head from Signal Ultra Warriors against Happy Feet Emperor's Ray. We have uh, AK again, Dojin's teammate right here against Brent E Pro's Mouts. Brian from So Execution Punishers will face on Haji. Vermillion, top spot right here against Coffee Prince from SCIE Olympians. Whereas Jason is going to grind those points against Brent E Pro's Maru. And this is only the first half of the day. Oh boy. Woo. Speaking. Okay, so please, please tell me what you think about this right now. Right? And again, the season is getting older. Aside from the mix-ups between the rankings, we mm -hmm. also have players picking up surprise picks like Vermilion picking up Steve. And Kazuya. Exactly. Right. Well, you know, it's a Mishima. It's, it, it's, it's something that Vermilion, of course, is not new to. Uh, we have seen this guy uh, on stream, you know, many times before. Even, even during the franchise mm -hmm. face-off, they have their surprise picks again. Speaking of surprise picks, Dojin being the first match, let's see if he has somebody new up his sleeve. And Jay Disaster, is he gonna go with Mr. Caballero Rojo himself? Or Gordo, which has been offering him a lot of clock mileage, if safe to say. <laughs> exactly. Both characters have been so strong for Jay. Jay has been slowly grinding it up. He has been 
he started a bit slow in the first few days, but lately he has been showing that's why why he's here right now. And yesterday's win was actually care of Miguel, you know, because he, he blocked really, really good uh, uh, lows yesterday and the hop kicks really paid off. Some of them were unfortunate axes wise, but again, he, he, he managed to pull off the win, right? Same and to say. Exactly. And before we enter hop kick city yet again, <laughs> We are going to take a short break again. My name is Raf, and this is Pika with a P. Just to be fair. Just to be fair. <laughs> so we are going to return, ladies and gentlemen. Don't go anywhere. The Nationals will be right back. And there you have it, reporting to you live here from Eastwood, Quezon City. It is the Nationals. I'll be your courtside reporter for today. I'm Theo Arcticuno Rodriguez. And man, oh man, day six of the Nationals right now. And things are going to get all the more intense. As our casters delivered earlier, we saw from the points that there has been an interesting shift from the bottom to the top as far as who is leading the fray and who is going to be playing catch up over the next days. But one thing's for certain, Vermilion still standing strong at the tippity top of the pack with 24 points. But what's interesting is trailblazing their way towards Tying for a second are our two boys from LPP, of course. I'm talking about AK and Dojin. Three points shy of potentially reaching Vermilion from potentially clinching that first place spot. Of course, as we enter day six, big question is, can anybody still oust Vermilion from that first place? But from the consistent performances that we've been seeing from Vermilion, it's going to be a tough job for all our players today. But we're still only near halfway through our conference, so... Some pretty interesting Tekken 7 games that we're going to be having, that's for sure. So, with that said, to our audience out there, be sure to also watch the broadcast of the Nationals on Pay TV at One Sports and EGG Network via Signal TV and on Free TV at 5 Plus via ESPN. The Nationals would also like to thank PayMaya, our official digital payments partner, and get updated with the Nationals. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. We're consistent on all platforms slash PH Nationals. But, you know what? I just really want to get into the action, guys. So, I'm going to be passing it over to Raf and Pika. So, bring it on, gentlemen. Thank you so much, Articuno. Of course, we're not going to let the people wait any longer, aren't we? Of man? course. He said of it course. himself. He cannot wait. And so can I. I know you can't either. And of course, our first match, the tour guide, the mayor of Hopkick City. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. I'll take that. I'll, I'll take, take that. It, take it, take it. But we is have. Dojin going to take it? 
is Dojin mm. gonna take? Okay, that's a very that's good question. question. That's a very good question. You know, interestingly enough, these two know each other very, very well. You exactly. know, wanna know why? Why? You wanna know why? Yes. I'll tell you later why, <laughs> or after the match, because that's going to be very interesting. As Jay Disaster again, is he going to bring out Eddie, or is it going to be Miguel, or is it going to be a Kazumi this time? Whereas Dojin can just pick someone right off the bat, you know, just shock us all as he did yesterday with the Noctis pick, if you recall that. Exactly, and of course Noctis, not a very popular character as of late, but Dojin doesn't care. Dojin's like, you know what, I'm going to play Noctis. Are you going to stop me? Of course you're not. How about Negan? <laughs> <laughs> Very banking on that Negan, but again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Nationals. Yours truly still here. Pika on commentary as well as Rafa than R. I said it for you. I said it for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, for speaking of getting ready, ladies and gentlemen, these two are on and are ready to go. We have here Suha Execration Punishers, J Disaster, and Laos Auto Group Playbook Esports' is Dojin right here. The Eagle is on very early on in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Will Jay Disaster find that eagle in the sky with his hop kick, or will Dojin <laughs> fly away? Anyway, yeah. hmm. that is a mouthful. Eagles is Eagles. where it's at. But, uh, and of course, <laughs> speaking of Dojin, we are seeing a curious pick here. Again, these guys, ladies and gentlemen, uh, they, they have been in the community for a while, and mm -hmm. if, if, you may, if you may not be so familiar with uh, Jay Disaster, he has been making the grind, ladies and gentlemen, from the bottom of the charts all the way to the middle. I know it's quite an uphill battle right now, safe to say, for Jay Disaster points-wise, but that's not to say that um, you know, and it can happen in a first to, uh, first to two, best of three, because that's what we have, ladies and gentlemen. It is a best two out of three here. And get again, the loser the will get one point battle. should it should it be a 2-1. Mm -hmm. Three and oh for the for the supreme winner. Or is somebody gonna get cooked? Oh boy. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna tell you why <laughs> shortly enough because of <clears throat> because Raph here has <clears throat> a lot, a lot on his chest that he's waiting to <clears throat> get out. Speaking of Speaking of getting out, this is Mishima building and they have three floors to work with, but nothing special, you know? This is just a normal stage, a very normal circular Round stage. One. Possibly the most distracting Fight. age of Tekken stage of Tekken 7. And of course, <laughs> we are starting off with a bit of spacing here. Jade Disaster already working on Dojin's legs here. Oh, and Dojin with a quick launch turn, Jade Disaster. This is going to be beautiful wall carry, great adjustment. However, no wall to maximize that damage. Wow, here we go. And the pokes are adding up for Dojin. What a low parry, ladies and gentlemen. And a convert, slight, slight convert here with 20 seconds spent and 3 plus 4 for connecting. What is Dojin's combo here? And Trying Dojin, to go optimal, man. And Dojin with that beautiful, beautiful whiff punish just stands there, minds his spacing, and Jay Disaster had to be at the wrong end of that whiff punish. Okay, so now, real talk. Oh, there we go. The Mirage was really blocked. I was, about, I was about to say that Jay Disaster has been risking that Mirage and, and that's very, that's very very dangerous because Law is known for ranged punishment. So here we are. That 3 plus 4, 4 is incredible for ranged punishment. Oh, oh, oh. And it comes out really, really quick, ladies and gentlemen. That is enough, enough scare for you to not actually attempt anything stupid. Exactly, and Dojin enforcing the slide mix up here, but Jay Disaster, you know what? If you can do it, I can do it too. Goes <laughs> for it first. Dojin, a bit of a life deficit here. Jay Disaster trying to pile up that life lead here. And Dojin has a bit of climb to make, however, again, with that 3 plus 4, 4, goes for the Legend Kick, whip, and another one! How many are we gonna see today? Magic Pixel here, what is gonna happen? Oh, wow, and Jay Disaster with a down forward for ending that round convincingly, here we go. And ladies and gentlemen, this really, really small stage is favoring both these players, especially Dojin, because Law has very, very good wall carry. He doesn't need to exert that much effort to do it. And what a slash kick here from Dojin. Jay Disaster not far behind. Look at these one twos adding up. Very uncanny for a Capoeira practitioner right there. Eddie playing boxing here with Martial Law. Here we go. Great block here from Jay Disaster and the Magic, magic Four clips. Four. And of course, Jay Disaster could be dead here. One more Oki. Actually, at this point, it's anyone's game right now. Jay Disaster with that red stuff, all, red stuff all over him could take this round away from Dojin. And honestly, even though Jay Disaster has been a bit more risky, it's great to see the confidence. Oh, oh and the rage drive whips! No. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, here we go. And Jay Disaster really gambled it all on that rage drive, but Dojin, again, blinking red as well, has a rage art in his disposal. So that really paid off for Dojin getting him some two rounds here. That was oh a boy. calculated risk, but boy, I am bad at math. <laughs> and of course, Dojin again trying to enforce that slide mix up here. Jay Disaster just backdashing away. Nearly hits Jay Disaster with a slash kick here. Ooh, what a duck by Dojin here. Okay, that hammer of the gods, ladies and gentlemen, that 
that fist, that really heavy fist that Law just did, gives him absolute priority over any situation. So JD has to better be careful. Speaking of being careful, that is a well placed DM2 from Dojin. A little too close on the wall combo, though. Great duck. What from a Jade beautiful Disaster. duck. And of course, Jade is asked to answer it back. What are you doing, sir? Goes for the relax stance again. Mixing Dojin up. Can Dojin answer back? Dojin in the red stuff now. Enforcing the slide mix up. Not flinching here. Dojin still has a chance to steal around. But Jade is asked to says no. What is going to happen? One more one more pixel for Dojin here. All Jade is asked needs to do is to sneeze on this oh, guy. But no! Man. Five seconds. What's going to happen? Oh! That is so clip worthy, ladies and gentlemen. What a clutch for Jay Disaster there. But Dojin, Dojin just relentlessly throwing back 4 3. Oh my goodness. One while standing four could have ended it for Dojin right there. And Jay Disaster better rethink his ways here because Dojin now has one win on the board and he needs just one more for a crispy, crispy 3 0. And Jay Disaster, all he had to do was sneeze on that man. <laughs> that man would have died. But Dojin, with no fear going in, no hesitation, takes the round away from Jade's Asta. He would literally call Dojin's name, and he <laughs> that would end the round right there. The breath that hits him <laughs> on the cheek is fatal. Oh. But then again, here we go. We, we, we don't know what Jade's Asta has in store for Dojin, but we have seen this Miguel deliver results before, and we are moving into Hammerhead. This time, it could be more favorable since the carry is a little further. And Eddie, we've known Eddie to be a little iffy on those combos, right? They might be cut in half, you know. Before this queue or after this queue, it might tend to, to to be your worst enemy, and that's what what's been happening. So is, is Miguel gonna make the adjustment here? And of course, Miguel can out damage Law here with less execution, mind you. Law needs that uh, drag DSS to get, get that legend kick out, but Law, Miguel, oh my God! And as I am talking, Law already losing half his health here. Jade is Asta already making a lot of violence. Beautiful duck and an adjustment here from Jade is Asta. This could be dead. No, did Dojin rob the round again from Jade Asta? Or will Jade Asta deny him this time? Uh oh, this is not looking good here. Nice step here. Oh, and from behind. Crazy, crazy wow. pixel of health here from Dojin. And Jade Asta, of course, capitalizing on that bad access that Dojin landed himself in. Here we go. What a duck from Dojin. However, Jay Disaster, we, we, this is what we said earlier, man. The Miguel pick could be paying off, but it's too early to tell. We've seen Dojin in that situation before, and he has risen from the grave. Okay, here we go. Great 3 plus 4 here from Dojin. The mix-up, again, the move alone can make you think, because you, you don't want to block that last hit. Otherwise, Law will have no risk. Exactly. And of course, Jay Disaster has been showing a lot of great stuff from his Miguel, aka the mayor of Hopkins City. But Jay Disaster, uh, Dojin not really giving him a chance. And like I said, jo Doji taking a quick round off Jay Disaster here. And this stage has no gimmicks, my friend. They are just raw, raw angles right there. And Dojin already with a slide worth of damage. Never Ooh. mind, because Jay Disaster. Oh, what what a very gutsy move here from Dojin. Down 2 3. Very risky Legend move, ladies kick. and gentlemen. Wow. My goodness. And Dojin really showing off his execution here. Jay Disaster in a corner right now. He does not want to be here. And but Dojin, Dojin really wanted that to happen. Get back in your favorite court, sir. <laughs> and of course, ladies and gentlemen, Hammerhead, one of those stages with, with an actual afternoon change, or rather or rather a daytime change, so to speak. We, we are now afternoon here. <laughs> Very quick, just two minutes in, and the day is already an afternoon. Here we go. And Jade is asked a great block Hop on the down kick. two three. There's the mayor right there, my friend. <laughs> Welcome to Hopkick City, Population U. And of course, Dojin says, no, sir, I'm only a visitor. Not a permanent stay here. Back three from Miguel. Trying to enforce the plus frame. What a break by Jade Disaster. Gets hit by the magic forward. Dojin with a conversion here. Can take him to the wall. Beautiful adjustment here, but no wall ender. Makes his legs crunch. What's for breakfast? What a low parry by Jade Disaster here. Jade Disaster still alive. What's going to happen? Hatchet kick. One more mix up for both players here. Oh! oh what a block there from, from Jade Disaster. But again, forward 2 2, just snagging. Snagging Jay Disaster. The second hit is a mid, ladies and gentlemen. So wow, congratulations to Do Jin. He, he he imposed his will literally against Jay Disaster right there. Wow. Hmm. Pika, it's the first match of the day, and did we see a 2-0? Yes, we did. Oh no. Oh no, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we've been cooking, and he is bringing out. Don't get me started, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Don't get me spatula. started. Hashtag kiss the cook right here, <laughs> because that is the first two O of the day, and this guy, this guy is gonna bring out the spatula every time that happens. Okay, so congratulations to Dojin getting himself three points early on, and that could be a game changer right there exactly. all already, right? Wow, Jade Disaster, of course, showing us Miguel. Always a treat to watch that character, right? Always, always. 
Ooh. So, Raf, please, please, wh what were you banking on in that match? Now, I wouldn't say Jay Disaster got cooked because he did have a very strong showing. Is, I'm sorry, is the spatula distracting you, no, sir? No, it's not. It, just get, <laughs> be careful with that thing. It hurts and somebody. of course, like I said, Jay Disaster did not get cooked, although it was a 2 0. Jay Disaster really showed signs of life, and he is improving as the season gets older. However, Dojin shows his chops. Beautiful, beautiful 3 plus 4 4 punishes there. Incredible spacing, great adjustment overall. And of course, it's only the first match of the day, ladies and gentlemen. So st <laughs> that is the equivalent of a wand to this guy. <laughs> but anyways, again, you know, I just like to mention that Jay Disaster and Dojin are actually related. Mm. That's what I was that was what I was gonna say. That's why they're closer sir. than you think. I see. There we go. They're actually related, but we're gonna dwell into that another time. Congratulations again to Dojin from Laos Auto Group Playbook Esports. Wow, okay, so while while these guys are preparing, we're not going to tell you just who, you know, who's who's going up yet. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning into the Nationals. This is Pika and this is Raf with an R in commentary today and bringing you the action. You know, I'm, I'm going to think of something because you're a cook. You know, you're 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 one of those you're one of those guys. Please just just leave the sp <laughs> we, we don't we haven't seen a 2-0 again just yet because the action is a little too close and these guys really want those threes. Exactly, and they are very. Hungry for points, and someone is going to serve them up. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay, fine, fine, fine. Speaking of hungry for points, we have here PLDT Smart Omega's Jewels against STIE Olympians is Don Argus. Are we going to see Bob, speed and weight, Mr. Hunger himself, or are we going to see somebody else from Jules' arsenal? Because as we have witnessed a few episodes ago, you know, including yesterday, Don Argus does have a Heihachi to Jisan bring out. Heihachi. He, he does. He does. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's very, very good to note. Okay, and they are already on stage, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in again to the Nationals. As and, you know, for those of you who just tuned in, this is only our second match today out of about 14 matches. Yes, and we have a lot of matches coming up. And just as we say that, the first match was already incredibly exciting. And hopefully, the rest of the day will be as intense. Otherwise, you're going to bring out that, that thing again. You're going to bring out... <laughs> That utensil <laughs> of <Yes>. discipline. <laughs> okay, so here we are again. Oh, look! Look, look at the back. It's it's a uh, former birthday boy, uh, machine head. Former it? birthday boy. What else can you say? He was a former child. He was. He was. He was born at a very young age, ladies and gentlemen. That yes, is sir. machine head right there. But again, things are gonna get nitty gritty here, really serious between PLDT Smart Omega's Jewels and STIE Olympians' Don. Argus, wow, we have quite the treat here, and there it is. Like I mentioned, it is not the hungry guy right now. It is the Exorcist himself, Claudio Serafino, against a, a hungry vampire. There we go. Isn't that really anticlimactic, right there, my friend? <laughs> of course, these two players no are stylistically vampire. somewhat opposite. Yeah. Jules very patient, and Don Argus a bit on the wild side here. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, as an Elisa, you have to be very innovative. Very creative with how you use your moves because you are not a conventional second character. And speaking of damage right here with Claudio, unconventionally with six seconds in, already has a combo worth but not even a mid-air combo. And Don Argus trying to stop the bleeding already because he is a vampire and he does not want to get hungry here. Jules just trying to chip away from Don Argus here. Not really going for anything big, however, gets that confirmed. And that is a chunky, chunky amount of damage. What a duck by Don Argus though. And Don Argus trying to answer back. Trying to make a way for this life deficit here. He does have the red stuff. What a wall to wall here. And so one of the smaller stages, the red stuff for both players. One more mix up for both. What is for breakfast, ladies and gentlemen? Is it blood, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, oh my god! Goes right through, and these guys are so close to dead. Here we go. Great block on the Ira and Don Argus still alive here with slightly bigger health. But never mind, Jules goes with a natural combo down back 4 3. Ladies and gentlemen, if the first hit connects, the second one will as well. And of course, Don Argus not checking his shoes there. That could have been very painful from those very pointy boots here. <laughs> of course, Don Argus now on the uh, offense here. But Jules says, nope, nope, he's not. It's my turn. Oh, goes for the cheeky. What a hot kick from the cross up here. I was just saying Jules is a very patient player, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have any crazy mix-ups of his own. And he can actually assert dominance given that Claudio is a character who can establish harassment. There we go, the bloody drive. And Don Argus is going to close this with authority. Great call on the bloody drive there from Don Argus. That was a beautiful hit confirmed there. Oh. 
Did you see that? It was, it was. It, it, was, it was a full connect, and here we go. Jules tried to, to actually float that slide from Don Argus. Here we go. Oh, the, the back sway. Here we go. And Don Argus with a slight disadvantage on health because of pokes here. But Jules, again, sitting pretty with getting those plus frames in. And let's, let's mention, this is Souk, right? Exactly. This is a pretty iffy big stage if, if, if you're going to look at it. I like how everyone is just there. It's like, there's a vampire and an exorcist in the middle of the market. And let's cheer them on. <laughs> What's going to happen? And of course, back to the match. 30 seconds in, not much has happened here. Players, they're starting to play a bit more conservatively. Eliza has a stick of butter there, but not letting it rip just yet. Oh, and as I say that, yes, he does. But does with it. Don Ar uh, Jules also missing his starburst there. Beyblade punch there from Jules to no avail, and he burns the, the starburst stance. Whereas Don Argus as well did burn that blood glass over there. Six seconds, and both guys are just refusing, refusing Three to seconds. let everything. And you want a block from Jules with, with one second left. He managed to combo off of that. And Don Argus, still left behind, of course. He still has two rounds to work with. And of course, he also still has that, uh, it's not butter because it's red. So yes. it's, it's the blood glass. It's a blood glass here. And Don Argus, as we were talking about him, is taking Jules to the wall here. Like you said, Sook is a bit of an iffy stage because of the size of it and the weird angles to it. And Don Argus already imposing on Jules right now. Can Jules mount a comeback or will he get a very clean round off him? And that is the latter, obviously. There we go, very great poker. And look at this, the bats and the blood have all piled up for Don Argus. He is ready to go, but he spends one right away at the beginning of the round. There we go, Jules with a great forward 2-2 punish. Here we go, that is a very quick move, ladies and gentlemen. And Jules not burning the blue power right there called Starburst, but now he does. And this is going to go to the wall, should Jules carry properly. Not quite. And Jules trying to answer back for that round that happened here. Don Argus running low on resources right now, burning everything. What a whiff by Jules. And Don Argus with a counter hit here. He is going to be taken to the wall. Can Don, Don Argus maximize? He does have a stick of butter for the reset. Goes for the EX dive kick here. Just goes for... Ooh, what a beautiful punish by Jules here. Don Argus in double red dress right now. Oh, and the low oh. and that should be the round for Jules. Down 2-2, two, two. closes that match right there. And it is not natural, ladies and gentlemen. You can block the second hit if... You can react it. Yes. And again, that, that, that was on Don Argus' uh, account right there because, again, it wasn't natural unless he did press something. Now we are moving on to a different stage. And I, I reckon that Don Argus is sticking with Elisa. And mind you, down 2-2, two, two, that was the first one of the set. <laughs> that was the first one we saw, one for one for Jules right now. No conditioning needed there mm -hmm. for, for Jules. And of course, sticking with Claudio and Don Argus. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you're not aware of the stipulations, they can change characters should they lose. However, uh, if you choose to stay with a character, you are no longer viable to, ch to choose the stage. So, and here we are with Kinder Gym. Uh, we, we, we do play, you know, uh, stage bingo. One. <laughs> stage Once bingo. in a while, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Jules looking to tie Don Argus's laces on those beautiful heels. But Don Argus says, you know what, here's a boot to the face. Launches Jules beautifully here. Nice adjustment. Can he do a bit more damage? Goes for the dive kick. Okay. Oh no, the DP gets punished. But too early on Jules' part. Floats him instead of a full launch. Here we go. And I, th that hop kick right there from from Claudio, again, very meaty, but a little too early, as, as Raph said right there. Okay, here's a combo starter of his, of his own, Don Argus. Should this go to the wall, it will be the round, and Don Argus will not hold back on that ender, that hip smash. Wow. Okay, so Kinder Gym again, quadrangular here, and uh, it, it's, it's going to favor either one, you know, with a proper launch, right? Exactly. Although Jules has that, in, like you said, a meaty, meaty up forward for the hop kick. Honestly, that hop kick has made a lot of people stop playing this game. <laughs> and as I'm saying, no hop kick yet, but already Don Argus losing half his health right now. Oh my goodness, and that should be it. One more mix up. Sneeze on him. And he was sneezed on. <laughs> Again, that was the blue power we were talking about of Claudio, ladies and gentlemen. Sh you, you see that hand of Claudio right there? The one bandit, ladies and gentlemen? That is where Starburst comes from. But speaking of power, bloody this, drive. this is where Elisa really shines when she has a full blood glass and the, the, the bloody drive doing its work. Here we go, Don Argus with a sizable lead against Jules. Great duck there, wow. This is looking like a perfect for Don Argus, but we cannot count Jules out. Jules, again, a very creative player, very crisp movement. And this is... Oh, again with that back two. Back one. Uh, back that, one, rather. Here we go, with, with half a clock happening, ladies and gentlemen, and Argus without without those two bars to save him. What a block here. And it's, it's, it's still quite a long match with 23 seconds to go. Jules can make something happen here, but is Don Argus going to seal the deal immediately because he does have access to one, one blood glass. 15 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. 
Again, this is this is just too intense. Oh, and a bl and a dark wave right Round there. Four. The street shark, the vampire street shark bites him on the on the ankle. That does not go full screen. <laughs> Jules, though, incredibly patient in the round, did not want to overstay his welcome in Eliza's pocket here. Eliza already pushing up here. Don Argus still wants to keep going for the aggression. Keep going. He does not want this momentum to stop. And Jules is happily taking this very calculated, very patient player. And as I am saying that, Don Argus takes game two away from Jules. Will we see a character swap or a stage select from Jules? Right, that is again the advantage of the losing player to change the character or the stage whichever this player feels comfortable with. And hello there to <laughs> to Brent E. Bros. Okay, to Oh, he, he, just, he does twice. Okay, but then again, the character select, as we mentioned, he does have an idea right now. He does, he does. And of course, with the gym pick, this is going to be a... Not really a radical shift in playstyle, but there will definitely be differences. Down back four is a counter hit. Generally having better counter hit tools over Claudio. Yes, and Jin, of course, with the almighty parry, as we mentioned. Let's see how Jules will play the cards here, because Jin considered one of the strongest and most improved characters of the game. But then again, Elisa, of course, belonging to those characters with bars, could make a difference should she fill up that glass, that blood glass right there. And moving into Twilight Conflict 2, whereas, ladies and gentlemen, you might think that uh, this is just exactly the same as the first, the first Twilight one. Conflict. Well, you're right, but with a slight difference of where where the balcony breaks, right? Exactly. It's the same, but not really, but it is. Yeah. And of course, the god kick already <laughs> coming out from Jules. Had a solid read on Argus here. Don Argus getting chopped to bits. Already 50% here, but does not wane with his aggression. Keeps going here. So and compared to Claudio, this is the actual uh, entity that Claudio is trying to exercise. Just look at that, ladies and gentlemen. And Jules right there. Getting himself one round, and again, this is worth noting, ladies and gentlemen, none of these guys are gonna get three anymore. Exactly, Jules showing off his gen skills right at a very early four and four, making Don Argus fall like that. And Don Argus, like we said, although facing a lot of pressure, does not want to stop his own. Wants to keep the Don Argus train keep going. Okay, here we go. The, the, blood, the blood glass is nearly full again, ladies and gentlemen. There we go. Remember, Elisa can do incredible, incredible feats when, when that red bar right there starts blinking. Wow, and then the bats. So, you know, I love those bats. Like, personally, I, I, I just like how they, how they appear once in a while. Oh, and speaking of bats, there we go. There it is, the down four here from Elisa. And is Don Argus going to carry to the wall? A little close. Almost. Oh boy, a little distance and 15 seconds left on the clock. Demon Bok connecting. Oh, the DP. The DP. Worth it. That was absolutely worth it. Pika, what game is this? This oh, is oh, what? <laughs> this is second. What a what a duck there from Don Argus. And should he carry this to the wall, it will be enough. Not quite. Don Argus fails to follow that up. And Jules still with it with a slight life deficiency here. Better catch up. And what a splat here from Don Argus. Don Argus is currently smothering Jules right now. Jules had a Great very impressive first ball. round. But is this going to be combo video here? Here we go. Wall to wall, almost. No dice. Trying to trying to harass with that demon paw there. Another one. This is going to be big damage. Jules for the Oki here. Again, it's still anyone's game. Don Argus still has a half a stick of butter here. Both red players butter. Red. Yes, red <laughs> butter. That, that is not very healthy butter, sir. I, I'm sorry. 20 seconds on the clock. And Jules here. Both actually, both have rage. And even they game. better be careful. Oh, that the demon, demon paw. paw hitting its mark. And Elisa has been humbled there. Ladies and gentlemen, now they are on the bottom floor of this stage. There is nothing, nothing to stop them from getting to each side of this map. And of course, Don Argus down around here. Will he adjust the game plan or will he keep eating Jules' demon paws here? Or the god kick. The god kick. Because this is, this is, this is Jin we're talking about. There we go. Great axe kick from Jules. Here we go. Using Zen 1 plus 2 as a wall carry. Here we go. Demon paw Another again. Another demon paw. And it looks like Jules is trying to complete the exorcism he was trying to do with Claudio here. And <laughs> instead with Jin. Oh, and the street shark that does not go full screen. There we go. Great poke here. 2-1 from Jules. One speck of health away is Don Argus, but the combo. He's alive! The combo starter connects. Should this go to the wall? This will be huge damage. And with rage. Goes for the cheeky cross up, but Jules not falling for it. Jules, a very patient player. What a duck here, but no punishment by Jules. This is anyone's game right now. Don Argus still in red. This is anyone's game! Oh, the back, back to, to one! one. Clipped in mid-air and congratulations to PLDT Smart Omega's Jules. With a little bit of patience and the right calls, it really can go a long way. Wow. Whew.
that, that was that was too much of a neck biter, if you get what I mean. Ah, ah, ah the puns. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. uh, we're about to get fired. <laughs> no, we're not, dude. But uh, real talk, ladies and gentlemen, that was quite a match. 2-1, so no need for the spatula. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. The National is still here. Yours truly is Pika and... Raf. With an R. With okay. an R. He, he, he was waiting for it. He was okay. waiting for it. Okay, so while Raf is, is over here, we are showing a few highlights, ladies and gentlemen, because... Right here, right here, right here. Okay, and that is Jules with, of course, the Claudio pick to start things off. He did get a convincing win out of that as well with the exorcism. But Don Argus, of course, still the Elisa master right here. And he is doing his job quite wonderfully. And like we said, Don Argus hit, did not hit the brakes at any given time. Even if he had a life deficit, a mm -hmm. round deficit, he would not stop. And that is what's lovely about Don, uh, Don Argus. His aggression... It, it's, it's already a, a weapon on exactly. its own. I was a lot at a loss for words there because that's that's just how it is. You wouldn't think he would do that, but like he did. You he know? does, and it, it really it really did the work for him, getting himself one win, uh, and then forcing Jules right there to change from Claudio to Jin. Right? Exactly. Very important. And like we said, two not radically different, but quite different characters <laughs> in Ju uh, in Jin having overall better tools compared right. to Claudio. However, Claudio does have those. Easy plus frames. <laughs> better, easy, better, better unquote. fishing of pluses, right? Exactly. But Don Argus would not fall for it here. That's why he forced the gin pick. Mm -hmm. And okay, Kinder Gym being naturally a smaller stage, you know, I think it favored Don Argus because it's easier for Elisa to actually carry from one end to the other. And this is what we're talking about. The dark wave, of course, one privilege that Elisa has, a projectile, despite the fact not going full screen, ladies and gentlemen, because compared to Geese, who can actually go all the way, Elisa's actually stops him. Uh, around three fourths of that. the stage, right? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, even though that does not go full screen, as Pika said, that is something you have to keep at the back of your mind, ladies and gents. Just as uh, what happened, Jules was pushing forward. He took one. That was obviously that was not expected, and of course, he lost the round that way. But speaking of projectiles, again, we are gonna see, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Howard Specialist himself. Real, really soon, we have Machine Head from Signal Ultra Warriors against the Ninja of Happy Feet Emperor's Ray. Mm -hmm. Again, this is this is going to be tricky because both characters have their own specialties. Geese, gr granted, he gets himself that one, that blinking right there <laughs> at the bottom of his screen. That is going to spell trouble. Master Raven, however, should Ray pick it, is a master literally of wall carries and wall combos, right? And of course, Master Raven, although very ladylike, does a man's worth of damage. <laughs> a lot of damage, especially at that wall because of... Back turn 1 plus 2, 3 plus 4. Yeah, so on and so forth. You know, the mix-ups of Master Raven can go for days, especially if you're unable, if you're unable to get them into that, to, to get rid of that back turn mix-up. And of course, Ray has a very distinct style of playing Raven. He right, right. has a lot of sidestepping and lateral movement that, of course, we see at high levels, but him more so, which could be a problem for Machine Head because he's a 2D character. Mm -hmm. 2D characters infam uh, are notorious for their... Somewhat below average tracking. So again, ladies and gentlemen, a belated happy birthday to this guy right here. <laughs> Signal Ultra Warriors is machine Former head. Happy birthday, boy. <laughs> okay. Anyways, again, the stoic look of Machine Head just imposes that he means business. business. And this is Geese we are talking about. Again, ladies and gentlemen, a pretty big character to note because Geese is a little, a little above those usual sizes of Absolutely. characters. I, I, I'd name some. Kazuya Mishima, you know, there's there's also... Uh, Slightly chunky characters. Yeah, like martial law. You know, Geese is a, is a notch or a couple notches above that those sizes. He is quite tall as a character. Yeah, and uh, again, that does not limit him from doing something normal or quite exciting for a male character, right? Because he can still make some movement. Again, we were playing the, the stage bingo here, ladies and gentlemen, because we are back to Sook. Wow. Welcome back to Sook, ladies and gentlemen, a.k.a. the smallest map on the entire planet. This could benefit <laughs> both players greatly, actually, because they have, I, I would say, atrocious there. wall damage in the sense that I do not oh, want one. to be at the end of that oh, wall yeah, combo. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, either one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, here we go. Early on, ladies and gentlemen, what a, <laughs> what a jump back there from Machine Head, making some space, literally making some space, and a Rebukin to just put some scare into the heart of Ray. Yikes, and that forward three is an easy plus for him here. Ray already showing off his movement. Look at that. That's a beautiful sidestep here. But Machine Head clipping him on the left, trying to discourage him from doing that. The down jab. Wow, what a parry by Ray there. 
the Blind Ghost mid, uh, hitting Machine Head right then and there. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Blind Ghost is the name of that skateboard move, but you can call it skateboard. <laughs> you know, it's up to you. Here we go. And Ray Wow with a sudden strike. Is he going to carry this to the wall? Yes, sir, but fails the wall combo, yet he still has a life lead with 20 seconds left. And we have a Red Goose here, very dangerous. He doesn't have a meter yet, but when he does, we are going to see some crazy, crazy things. But Ray not allowing that, taking a quick round off the Machine Head. Wow, okay, so one round goes straight to Ray. Here we go, and you hear that, ladies and gentlemen? Right there, that uh -oh. is Machine Head warning you like a rattlesnake that he is ready to strike. Speaking of, there it is. What is the wall combo here from Machine Head? Again, as my partner mentioned, atrocious damage. Unbearable. There's a Crusader from Ray. And of course, Ray trying to find his way out of this corner, but Machine Head does not want him anywhere else right now. Machine Head going for that down jab again, just trying to stop him. And of course, Quicksand with the second hit, and now Machine Head is on the receiving end of the positional battle here. Ray trying to answer back at the wall attack. Oh my goodness, that nearly gave me a heart attack. <laughs> okay, so Machine Head with a flying plank over there. And the sword so right. Literally, and the Shippukins as well. Look at that, the meteor shower as we call it. <laughs> Oh boy, while well standing 3 plus 4 here from Ray. Blinking red. Ray. Oh, a Nine little, seconds. A little oh my god. Far for that wall bounce for the, the buzzsaw three. cancel, not favoring Ray. Because Fight. could that have been a wall bounce? The round is definitely over. Here we go. The back turn mix up starting for Ray. Ooh. Falls for the back turn parry. And Machine Head now with his with, with a little bit of deficiency in life with 10 seconds spent. But again, we have a geese with a meter here. We don't know what's gonna happen. Ray is not allowing any space for Machine Head here. This could be big. Uh, completes this. What's for breakfast? And the Mid Crusader breakfast. right there. Oh my goodness. That's what you were mentioning earlier, Raph. That really hurts. And that is devastating for anybody. There we go. Back turn two to the one four. That is guaranteed, ladies and gentlemen. Should they be pressing buttons in between that string? But not to say that Machine Head does not have a meter to work with. And he uses Blue Lemonade right away. Blue Lemonade. Really now? <laughs> And of course, that is not a, si a drink that you want to take a sip from, especially if you are the receiving it. That man's smile is very deceptive. That is not the bringer of happy times. <laughs> not for you, especially. Ray in the red right now. Ooh. Great block and punishment there from Machine Head. Again, Ray now, Master Raven rather, with a huge, huge gamble with a quicksand catastrophe. Here we go now with one, ladies and gentlemen, and this is a final round of the first match for this, for this third match we have here, ladies and gentlemen. The thing, we're so early in the day and we're already having so many close matches here. And it's only the first set for Ray and Machine Head here. Machine Head trying to discourage a lot of movement here. However, he gets hit by the surfboard here by Ray. Ray really looking out for those street sharks, just trying to distance himself. He does know that he has two meters. Geese becomes incredibly dangerous with this because he does have access to Raging Storm right now. Here we go, the rising elbow here from Ray and Machine Head now has his back against the ropes. And there's the blue lemonade. What's the, what's the guess? What the game? a oh block! Oh my goodness, and Machine Head could end this. Should he should he do what is needed? Oh, oh, the Rage Art by Ray! And it low crashes for the extra salt. Talk about insult to injury. What a round closer there from Ray. And he gets one win against a very, very game Machine Head. It's just this. <laughs> and he's being surprised there in the back. Oh, the sword? The sword drop? Yes. And of course, Mouts himself. Oh, okay. <laughs> Scratches sneaking himself. In. <laughs> he is sneaking in his signature pose again with the Oh, home cut. court advantage here you for know, Machine you know, Head. Mouts could have scratched that part of his head with that same hand, but he chose to go with the other. not to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Howard Estate, is this going to be the game plan? Yes, it is for Machine Head. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you have the privilege of choosing your stage if you intend to use the same character. And wow, mm -hmm. that, was, that was a crazy closer. For, uh, for Ray right there. Rage art finish, picture perfect, it's safe to say. And Machine Head still with that dominant smile and he's like, mm -mm, this is <laughs> my house now, lady. But of course, Master Raven has access to ridiculous combos as well on this stage. Oh, of course, we have the hype intro that all our geese mains love, even though they've seen this like five million times now. <laughs> and that, that's only the past year. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't okay. you mean six months? <laughs> Here we go. And she is indeed on the mission, ladies and gentlemen. Can Ray get himself the three crunchy points here against Machine Head? And there's the chariot. Will Quick we see the spatula? Catastrophe, are we? But, there it, but it's too early to tell right here because Machine Head, again, we've seen him in a situation like this. There is the reverse chakra to the Crusader. Here we go. And of course, we know Machine Head from day one had a lot of comebacks, even on day one. And of course, he is very capable of doing the same thing right now. 
Great blocks here from both Ray and Machine Head, but with 35 seconds on the clock, anybody's game, one a Oh, there we go, the, the overhead one-twos here from, from Geese. And Yikes. this is gonna hurt. Oh, and the adjustment from Machine Head here, this could be big. Goes for the wall break. And oh, are we gonna the see deadly the deadly rave? Come on, chant, ladies and gentlemen, chant. Deadly, deadly rave. rave. Oh my goodness, beautiful. The world is joining in, and here we go with one poke Watch away. Wow, and Ray with a generic low to seal the deal. You don't have this, Geese. Welcome to Tekken, sir. <laughs> but of course, that was hype. That was incredibly hype. Everyone wants to see the Deadly Rave, unless you're, of course, the other player. <laughs> nice. Here we go. Great chariot here. And there, there's that Iron Maul. Here we go. Oh, nice parry what? by Machine Head. Talk about a perfectly placed parry here. And of course, Machine Head making Ray pay for his mistakes. He still has meter that he hasn't spent here. He is on the offensive here, and of course, Ray answering back. It's still anyone's game here. Both characters running away. The Chimpuka here does not want to get hit by anything right now. Oh! oh! Speak of not getting hit by anything. A down three, a Tekken move that, you know, Geese has. <laughs> closes the deal. And there we have, I, I, I would like to think that the uh, lemonade glass is three-fourths full right now, mm -hmm. Rath, but mm -mm, you do not want that. Here we go. When you're back against a breakable wall, this is where Machine Head and Geese will both shine together. Here we go. Double Ripukins. Blue Watch lemonade is running out, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Sidestep three. And Machine Head doing a good job of the refill here. Ray, good job on the defense as well. However, you cannot guess all the 50-50s here. Ray already in the red here. What can he do with the near-perfect health Machine Head? And look at the time. We only have 30 seconds left here. Goes for the double three, back three plus four here. Oh, What's gonna happen? What a break by Machine Head. On the Undertaker, here we go. Oh, and that is what Machine Head needed. Uh, just a little bit, a little bit of knockdown momentum. And he gets himself two rounds now against Ray. We remember, ladies and gentlemen, we still have one wall to break and one balcony to go. And Machine Head already starting strong here. Wants to close the game out as much as possible. Ray looking hungry, eating all the mix-ups right now. Now two bars for Machine Head. Machine Head can have all the crazy things from Geese right now. Oh, oh, and the Raigo Ripukin just finishing the job. No need to combo there, ladies and gentlemen. Machine Head. Machine Head already. already. Oh, there it, is. there it is again. As we mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, the machine is getting whispers from the devil, Jin. <laughs> <laughs> right there, his teammate. Both very evil characters mm. from different periods of Tekken. Season 1 Game-wise evil. Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Okay, and Ray is doing a little contemplating of his own. Is he going to stick with Master Ray? Oh, it looks like he is. And now going to a stage select, I would say. And of course, Ray has a lot of confidence in his Master Raven. He should. His Master Raven has been a very good character to him. And he has been playing her to a very good extent, you know. And Mishima Dojo, of course, again, a humble, humble stage. Ladies and gentlemen, just four walls and a roof. But of course, we're not going to get to the roof of this stage. And there are no gimmicks here. No breaking floors, no balconies, no wall breaks. Just you and me inside, inside four lines, four rights. Roof rather. bounce season three. Ooh. Roof bounce. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going back to those past iterations of the game here, Raph. <laughs> but here we go, here we go. This is 1-1, one, one, ladies and gentlemen. Machine Head versus Ray. And again, again, how many times have we seen this early on today that no one is getting that three? Of course, and of course, they are both looking to close it out here. Goes for the flash punch, enforcing the plus frames. Ray with that great whiff punish here. Oh, and Machine Head taking a lot of damage right now, and he has not built a good amount of meter for the second round as well. Great block on the cru a great hit of the Crusader there, all the way to that really, really heavy heal. There we go. What is the mix up? Again, falls for the back turn parry is Machine Head. And of course, Machine Head wants to rethink his game plan here because Ray is getting away with a lot of things. Still does not have meter and goes for the quicksand. Another one. The blind ghost has added up, ladies and gentlemen. Great block and punish there from Machine Head. This is where Raven is also dangerous. She does have legitimate 50-50s, ladies and gentlemen. Magic Pixel here for Machine Head. Gets hit by another down four. Ray is trying to run away with this game. Machine Head does have one bar here. He can still make a comeback. Ooh, oh, there we the go. Crash. That is the, the, the back turn reverse chakram all the way to a Crusader. Guaranteed two hits, and there's the blue lemonade. Great block here from Ray. Oh boy, here we go. Oh no, no does not continue. The link here is Machine Head. No, Ray does not want to be here right now. This is a humble stage, but walls are walls. What a wall spot. Great adjustment, but whiffs. Oh, is this for Oki? Oh boy, here we go. And the combo, the combo is really, really gonna go to the wall. And yes, it does. Here we go. Stunda. Oh! 
What just happened right there, man? What just happened right there? Oh boy, here we go. And Machine Head with one round, ladies and gentlemen. Again, this is this is not over for Machine Head. He does he does get momentum. You know, we we know Geese as a character can build something out of just one bar. So rap. I, I am clenching and holding my breath here right now. You are not the only one. That was <laughs> that was the reason why I was so quiet right now. And Ray, look, at, look not looking too healthy right now. Machine Head still near perfect, uh, near full health here. Nearly gets meter as well. Trying to oppress Ray as much as he can, but Ray trying to answer back. Does not want to get bullied right now. Down four, but no counter hit. One bar on Machine Head. Machine Head can't take another round away from here. And the wall attack. Ooh, and gets scratched. <laughs> the Literally. barrel lady nails. <laughs> down, uh, there we go. There we go. The down forward two of Geese, ladies and gentlemen. That claw, the homing claw, after getting hit by the flying plank known as Geese, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here we are. So, again, 10 seconds in, and these guys are now more cautious than ever. What Great a block. block from Ray. And of course, Ray's defense trying to show now. Spiral cannon to the wall combo. Here we go. Oh, oh the parry! The, the parry from Machine Head. Great call. The blue lemonade is running. And Machine Head is going to go with a lot of damage here. Jake and Ha! Machine Head takes the life lead that quickly. Just one bar, ladies and gentlemen. What oh, a crush! reverse Chakram to a Crusader. We have seen that so many times today. Oh, and that is not a very safe move, ladies and gentlemen. Ray is on the verge of death right now. Machine Head. Oh, Never the counter mind, oh, the board. link has been cut! The backsway! And the down, down jab by Machine Head. Wow. And and did you see that? He took he took off his bifocals, ladies and gentlemen. He took off the glasses. Wow, Machine Head really did mean business there, man. Are you doing it? <laughs> uh, I need this to see, yeah. actually. <laughs> but congratulations to Machine Head. What a battle well fought. Really close. Too close to call there from Machine Head. Barely escaped because their lives were nearly even when that happened. And like we said, Machine Head has shown very, very consistent comebacks. This is not the first time the man has made a comeback. And of course, Ray also a very good showing with this Raven. A lot of hit confirms that Machine Head obviously did not want to take. Wow, again, these guys may not be going home with their three points, you know, because it was a 2-1 in favor of Machine Head. But ladies and gentlemen, let's just make a quick recap of what is happening right here. Look at, look look at, at, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this man. Street Shark. Hmm. <laughs> there we go. And Ray, again, this was a very good round for Ray, you know. Uh, and But not to say that Machine Head did not put in a little bit of work. even with Oh, they're, they're, I love that. The that cancel. Is, that is crunchy. And oh my god, the heartbreaker of a jab just stops Ray in his tracks. <laughs> Spiral cannon all the way to the wall. And what is the wall combo? There it is. Heavy Chakram to end that. Ooh, Look juicy, the juicy. Damage. And the Crusader. The thing is, Raven fundamentally is not the usual second character. Yes. And that's why Ray has to play this unorthodox style that he is very good at already. And of course, Machine had showcasing his defense in that last clip there with a the full crash down forward two. And yikes. Ooh, this is a heartbreaker. That was actually, th that was what I was talking about. You know, this is a very convincing match for Ray because he made the right call with enough health, of course, to spare for that rage, rage art and ending that, you know, that, that first win of his. And this is when Machine Head's starting to get momentum himself, this wall break here. Machine Head really, really comes alive when he's on the back foot. This was hype <laughs> as hell, but Ray was like, mm -mm. welcome to Tekken. And Down the deadly four. rave, the deadly rave. You could hear the crowd from here. They were really good. They were I going love it. Ha, 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 for every hit of that uh, deadly rave right there from Geese. Congratulations again to Machine Head. And ladies and gentlemen, we are not, we are not prepared for this one. We have <laughs> the Eagles, AK versus Brand E Pro Mouse, okay, AK so the man with the pose himself. Right there. Is this the right hand? It is, but of course, okay. I'm going for this right now because you've already done that. You've already done that. Uh, mm, mm, that boy right there, he is he is down and he is down to, to, to do some work right now. And Mouse again, one of these guys who actually make really really sick comebacks, right? Exactly. And AK with that very Stoic demeanor, very quiet personality in real life, but a complete killer in the game. Very. Don't don't let this fool you. Don't let yeah, that. Don't, 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 don't let no, fool no, you. Don't because let this this is coming out. This mm. is gonna come out when you start playing. Sometimes two of those, and he could even wink at you <laughs> while while he's on stream. But again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning into the Nationals. You're truly still here, Pika, and you you can't you can, you can't not okay it's raf uh, i'll tell and you right my now my spatula <laughs> <laughs> he is so ready okay so here we are these guys already preparing 
And say hi to that really, really uh... invested man in the background behind AK. <laughs> very, very, very <laughs> much, very oh, much. Oh, and Mouth's getting the, the cleanup. Oh, yes, yes. Get All me right. ready. <laughs> Literally brushing it off. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is Mouth. Mm -hmm. I love this. I love the antics the players are showing. <laughs> Ever since Team Kill Day, everyone has loosened up, and I love it. <laughs> and look at those teammates right there of Mouth's just. Just really goofing around, whereas AK, again, the this stoic. kid, yes, very, very steady, very, very uh, serious, I would say, but not to the point of uh, combative, being exactly. combative, Still right? very friendly, shake your hand, but that doesn't mean he didn't molly a game. He'll do this, right? Like, oh, that was a nice game, pretending he didn't, like, 13-0 <laughs> or something. It's like, oh, yeah, sure, that, that was a nice game yep. for you. For you. Okay, again, now, ladies and gentlemen, as we've seen before, Mount and has defended it as well. He is a Nina loyalist, so most likely we are seeing that here. And you did not see my partner who just clenched his fist, wanting to see more Nina. And he's doing it again, but you'll see that later. Like an angry monkey. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, that is Sir Angry Monkey to you. Mr. Angry Monkey. Yes, that's Mr. Yeah, Dr. Professor that. Monkey for you, sir. <laughs> okay, here we go. And Shaheen, as AK thinks, I do not wish to hurt you. But she will. If he must. And look at the masochistic Nina right there. This should be fun. Getting hurt will be fun, but not in this tournament, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Brimstone and Fire. This map does not have any breakable walls or floors. Just really, really iffy. And of course, don't confuse it with Devil's Pit. But before we talk about that, 10 seconds in, Mouth's already lost a huge chunk of health here. AK trying to play a bit compact here. Mouth's whiffing that beautiful whiff punish by AK here. Gets taken to the wall or very close, yes. Brilliant adjustment, but Mouse trying to answer back. Broken by AK here. You know, real talk, that combo that AK's been doing for the past two days is insanely hard to do. The one with two threes, you know, that those two kicks, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, it might look uh, just pretty plain, but that is pretty hard to do execution-wise. Here we go, and one round goes to AK with a good, with a good, good showing in that first uh, first round, rather. AK doing a good job not playing in Mouse's pocket right now, but Mouse has taken AK to the wall, and it's his turn to do a bit of damage here. AK smartly rolling away from the wall here because Nina is oppressive at the wall to say at the very least here with the sidestep one cancels. What a beautiful parry by AK here. And you don't even need to be by the wall, you know, to get hurt by Nina Williams. The moment she lands right in front of you, there is a problem going on. Oh, wow. oh my goodness, let's let's the string <laughs> rip. As a Nina user, you know how risky that may that, be, but I that think was incredibly risky. But Mouse, of course, I think made the right read, knowing that AK might try to punish that kick alone, the very first kick. And here we go, one round to Mouse. Ooh, look Commando at that. roll, wipe the floor, guaranteed FF3 here. A bad oh. habit, literally a bad habit there for Nina Williams. And of course, AK does have a bit of ground to make up here. AK very compact right now. Ooh, Mouse showing off that movement from Nina. Ooh, Ooh, counter down back two here, gets taken to the wall. This could be the round or one more mix-up. Oh, oh, and that is, that is a classic setup right there from Mouse. And again, that throw, you had better be ready to duck. But that, that that's when the mix-up begins. And Mouse convincingly, again, with one round, there, there's a sandstorm. But of course, AK is AK. AK a very, very patient yet wild player. Two opposites, but still in one player. A very, how would I describe it? He's good at the game, that's basically what I'm saying. Both players are. And of course, AK already chopping away at Mouse here. No combos yet. Again, as you mentioned earlier, AK does land himself on both sides of the spectrum with both offense and, and defense. defense. Here we go. And the, the, but with AK's back against the wall, wisely, wisely creating some space between him and Mouse. Oh no, bad positioning here for AK. The whiff on the hop kick there. Mouse tries to throw him, but very good break by AK here. AK just observing his spacing here. Mouse does not want to get into that hop kick range, and we only have 10 seconds left in the round. So what is going to happen here? A bit of a stare off here. What are you doing? <laughs> eight seconds. Oh, oh, that is going to be huge and enough to kill. That is indeed, ladies and gentlemen, a throw that comes out, and that is a high. However, th this is this is not going to look good for Mouse because AK now again getting into his face. Gets stopped by the up four or three, but Mouse here very wise usage there. That, that is minus 13 and can be very dangerous when thrown out in the open there. It is very punishable, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're trying Ooh, to say. The hot kick again. These guys are risking a lot right now. Speaking of risking, the back, back one. one again and. Mouse, no dice right there on that attempt. Here we go, 35 seconds left, ladies and gentlemen. AK now with a slight life deficiency here compared to Mouse. Oh, the, the pokes are adding up rap. And right now, this is anyone's game, really. You can't really say who's on the advantage or not. AK may have a life deficit, but he does have rage. 
but Mouse trying to close out game one here, goes for the empty dashes, but gets hit by the blue stuff, and AK could possibly rob Mouse of this victory. And yes, he did. Wow. I really clenched. I really get clenched. Wow, okay, so AK now, ladies and gentlemen, again, he, he, he he's doing those nods. <laughs> you know? Oh, and <laughs> Prime thinking, ooh. Ooh. They, 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 <laughs> They're, they're either they're either complimenting or back or back or backwards insulting they Mouse like right now. No, infinite azure. Okay, so Mouse again sticking with Nina Williams, maybe maybe eyeing for a slight slight um, advantage when it comes to spacing because Nina Williams is indeed that character who has a uh, you know has that little deficiency in range. So maybe the plan here is to you know. Just to keep press pressing forward. There we go. There's, and again, Infinite Azure being a wall-less stage. There's, no, there's nothing to save you here. You can keep running, but again, that might not be good for you in the long run. Here we go. Do you know why Nina has a wedding dress on? You can explain that to our to our viewers later, man, because I do know the lore. It's because it, it needs commitment to play Nina, that's why. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'll take that. Course, the start of the round A. Slight difference last time, it was a Pope heavy game. Now already starting with combos themselves, however, the Mount special does not land here. Here we go, and it's a great side step to a 1 2 here for Mouts, and locking in place is Mouts. Never mind, because AK wiggles right out of there with that, with that sandstorm. Oh, a little short on the DF2. Great, no duck there for Mouse. And of course, the movement is being showcased there with no walls or any limitations. And what a beautiful rage drive by AK. Again, this is the round for AK. Yikes. Wow. And Shaheen is a character, you know, very, very uh, fundamentally strong. Nina, of course, not to say that she cannot do that, but Shaheen, of course, with very little execution requirements. Again, there it is, the AK special. Now we have one of those too. And now let's look at that damage, man. It's unbelievable. And I think that's probably stronger than the usual staple. Exactly. What do you mean I don't need walls to do a lot of damage? And of course, another <laughs> down forward too by AK. And the combo short here, goes for the Oki instead. Mouth trying to answer back, gets parried again. My god, AK is looking so good right now with those reads on that. <laughs> again, Shaheen paying off, paying off. This pick again, AK has never ever doubted how Shaheen really works. Oh. oh boy, here we go. So with five seconds, with five seconds or ten rather, spent here and AK, AK now with a huge combo lead against Mouse. He has to make something happen here. There we go, down back two. And of course, Mouse trying to build as much momentum as he can before this bleeding is gonna kill him. Oh, Magic 4, however, it's too far for the QCF1 to connect. Goes for the goes for the crouch mix up here. Mouse trying to answer back. Does not want the AK train to run him oh, over right oh, oh. now. Here we go, 25 seconds left. And look at look at Nina blinking furious right now with rage. Nina again with the execution can take so much that I can give so much oh. damage. Oh, oh the what drop. a bad but drop there from Mouse, and there it is. One butterfly flap to a generic low, and it got the job done. Mouse here still alive and kicking. Mouse obviously still alive. Goes for the beautiful punish on that, but a little off axis there. Not connecting everything. AK trying to chip away at her beautiful, beautiful high heels right now. <laughs> oh boy, again, no walls to save you here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the back one again. Oh my goodness, Mouse has been using that. Also, that full crouch that double jab four, that's, that's crazy. Here we go, and what is the ender here? Running Blonde Bomb and Mouse makes some space between him and AK, knowing that Shaheen oh, is Oh, the wow. counter forward three! This is gonna do a lot of damage here. Goes and for the, the Oki instead. It belongs, it belongs to Nina. That ender is all Nina. Speaking of, here we are, two, two, rounds wise. Ladies and gentlemen, do we have a match here in the form of Mouse and AK, Infinite Azure, and this is not the night time yet. How many double uh, double Luigi's have we seen today in four matches, mind <laughs> you? Here we go. Okay, so Mouse now with a slight combo lead, 45 seconds on the clock, and he does have he does have to be careful because AK, we've oh, seen him in this risky. situation. Oh, it breaks the the tackle there. Again with a down for two. AK looking very sharp with those things. Mouse keeps getting caught, and Mouse does not want to play in the pocket here. You know, if I didn't know any better, AK really looked for that opportunity to make that beautiful combo connect from a down forward two, and this is going to... Oh, oh, not quite! Still here. Blood oh, bomb! chunky! Chunky rage drive, but... Uh, what did you say about the slide? It's, what did you say about the slide? It's chunky. <laughs> Never mind, because it was enough. A sandstorm was enough to put AK on three. Like, literally a three-pointer right there.
And again, AK, both sides of the spectrum. Good defensive, but again, we'll throw that hop kick. You know, Very I'm going to commend AK right now, man. When, when he made that down forward to connect and went for that throw as a filler, that was really innovative of that kid. Congratulations to AK for getting himself a very, very well-deserved three points right there against Mao Tsuo. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Let's see this. Let's see this. Uh -huh. Oh, look yes. at that. You can see that now? Oh, you mm -hmm. can see that. Okay, there we go. And that is AK establishing his combo prowess. And of course, it wasn't a wiggity wiggity wash. Mouts had a very strong showing, almost taking a set off AK here. But again, it looks like AK has adjusted to Mouts' playstyle and has added more significance to his facing, mm -hmm. showing with the attack throw there, the down forward twos that have seemingly landed. But it's like aimbot. He never <laughs> misses with those things. I, I would I would say it, uh, it's it's also a keep out tool. You know, it it keeps you at bay. It makes sure that you don't overextend yourself. Like you you don't you don't harass me too much. That's I think what AK is really going for. And speaking of combos here, this was really enough for AK to secure his his streak. See, look at that. He does it again, but this time he gets hit by the forward three by Mouts here. And oh my God, I am honestly speechless. There we go. That was a great block from Mouse right there. I'm telling you. Okay. Oh, we did not see it. I'm, I'm, I was, I was really so stoked because the down forward two combo was beautiful there from AK. Wow. And that, well, that was the blonde bomb, uh, the blonde bomb rage drive that both gave Mouse a chunk of damage and at the same time it kind of cost him a little because he ran right into a sandstorm. Exactly. And of course the running situation is a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. You cannot defend yourself when you are running. Yes. And sometimes you have to gamble. Am I going to get the shoulder or am I going to get the ultimate tackle? Right. The game is weird like that sometimes. Okay, so I, I would say congratulations once again to AK for that very, very dominant but not not far off of a match against Mouts. Wow. Uh, yeah, he's doing it. He is doing it. He is going to do it. Oh, do it. <laughs> yes, and Raph is going to bring out Lay Spatula right here, ladies and gentlemen, because that was the 2-0. But before he rants, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to bring you more action. Of course, the Nationals will go to a short break. Please do not go anywhere. We will be right back. And remember, kiss the cook.
and welcome back here to the Nationals Live from Eastwood, Quezon City. Of course, I'm your courtside reporter, Ark Takudo, and joining me today is Jules. Jules, man, great game you've had against Don Argus. But I got to ask you, so with the number of games that we had from all of you players, looking at you guys behind the scenes, it seems that all of you seemed very comfortable with each other. So what's kind of the mindset that you've developed going into now that we're on day six of the Nationals here for Tekken 7? Um, well, since we're pretty much familiar with each other, so I think the proper mindset to it is uh, try to make us, oh, well, rather try to make less mistakes and be a lot more patient. Um, also has something to do with the discipline whenever we practice, I guess. So, yeah, I guess we got a little bit more cautious from the first one until, until this day. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Okay, so... As I mentioned, we're currently on day six. So you've been, I mean, a lot of you guys, a lot of familiar faces, of course, entering the Nationals. But I got to ask you, because from what I've been talking to the other players, it seems that with the ground that we have for Nationals, they've kind of gotten their own thing off of this through the experience. How about for you? Is there anything unique that you've gained from participating in the Nationals um, in comparison to the past years you've been competing here in tech, the Tekken community? Hmm, that's interesting. Um I think I would say that uh, the stakes here are pretty much higher than the rest of the competition. And uh, of course, the caliber of the players here are just insane. So it probably has something to do with the fact that it's on the national level and it's televised. So that pretty much uh, sums it up. Yeah. So you still have one more game later on during this day. So any quick message you want to give out to the people that you'd ideally want to give you all their energy? <laughs> Uh, thank you. Thank you for everyone who's watching and supporting. Uh, thank you, PLDT Smart Omega. Uh, I'll try to get this one as much as possible, so stay tuned. Jules, I'm so looking forward to games earlier. You started off this again great, and I hope you end on a great note as well. So with that said, guys, that has been our interview with Jules here. And we'll be entering our next game, actually. We're not even halfway through the Nationals for Day 6. So without further ado, I'd also like to encourage our viewers to watch the broadcast of the Nationals on pay TV at One Sports at EGG Network via Single TV and on Free TV at 5 Plus via ESPN. And of course, the Nationals would also like to thank PayMaya, our official digital payments partner and get updated by the way on social media with what's happening at the nationals we're pretty much consistent on facebook instagram and twitter that is slash ph national so without further ado like i mentioned we still have a lot of games to go so i don't want to prolong this any further get ready for the next cap battle so you know what let's go for it casters thank you articuno and where's jj i've been looking for there oh my goodness jj's right here hey and once again, guys, we are your casters for today. I'm Ernest Yarra Piki Bizant, and here with me is JJ Kun. And I've been, they I've been did. having a lot of fun with the, uh, I've been having a lot of fun with this cowboy hat. But of course, we're yeah. talking about Tekken action right here. Some good, classy Tekken. Just to word out, uh, Poru Kun right earlier. And really, one of the best things about this is we're actually just in the middle, smack dab in the middle. Mm -hmm. After a few close matches, not right. few close matches, a lot of close mm -hmm. matches. Mm -hmm. So, what can you say right now, especially the last game, man, it was so close. Uh, like you said, each and every match that we just had for the first, mm. uh, for the sixth day, everything has been so close. It was so hype, I've been shouting on the audience's uh, seat. Yeah. I'm part of the audience <laughs> seat, I've been watching, I've been hyping up, I've been shouting. That's definitely going to be a good case there, but of course, uh, speaking of like close matches, of course, we have guys, we have top performers here with Suha Execration Prime and Happy Feet Emperor's Haji mm -hmm. facing off against each other right now. And they've been like, these guys have been at the, have been at the upper half of the standings right, for like right. for the past few days. And it's still, as, one, as much as I'd like to say that it's still like, you know, it's still not the 13th day and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's still really, really, really dangerous. Right. And... Like I said, even though, like you said, even though there's still a lot of, you know, days to come, still a lot of days to play on, you know, like you said, it's going to be dangerous if it comes, if, you know, if you... If you, get, if if you, you slack get, off, yeah. Yeah, if you slack off a lot. Now, we're not saying that the, the players are, ca are slacking off, right? We're not saying that, but, like, we got to get it. Like, a single up. slip. Yeah. yeah, a single yeah. slip can cost anything. But right now, guys, once again, it is going to be Sue Execration Punishers Prime versus Happy Feet Emperor's Haji. Mm -hmm. And look at them. They're ready and prepared. Mm -hmm. And it is time for them 
to get into the character select. Dude, look at their hairs. I like that. Yeah, they definitely. Like, they have really mm -hmm. nice hairstyle. Like, right. Um, like, Prime does especially to knock, uh, uh -huh. rocking that top, uh, top knot slash man bun right there. And, of and course, Haji, Haji having really, really amazing, um, um, like, an amazing part there with the undercut yeah, yeah. there. Like, they're rocking really well done hairstyles here. Like, well, what's with the... I don't know. I just, I, 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 the I total noticed. jealousy between their noticed. hairstyles. What's with, what's with that? I don't know. I, I just noticed. But I guess they really have good hair right now. Mm -hmm. And of course, that also means that since this is... Oh, uh, look at these, huh? With the hair as well. Oh, I'm telling you, though. Julia Chen. Like, okay. <laughs> okay, we can, well, let's go with that, of course. And of course, <laughs> Prime picking up his uh, tried and tested geese against right. Haji's tried and tested Julia. And Both of these characters, DLC oh, characters. Oh, and right. Both of them have... Really tricky, uh, a lot of tricks up their sleeves. Right, and we are going to be on Infinite Azure. Mm -hmm. Not going to be in favor of any of these characters, because, you know, mm -hmm. Geese has a lot of combos. Pump up like, the wall. Yeah, a lot of damage with the wall. Right, and Julia has a lot of wall carry combos as well. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be like, both of them are going to be on the disadvantage. Oh my them god, she's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> putting them on an equal... Uh, Equal footing. Anyway, going back to the game, let's go. Mm -mm. All right, definitely putting some pokes right here into Prime and Haji, like having the movement, uh, having right. the movement right up his, his favor. Prime responding with his own. Mm, no nice. beater yet, so no combos yet. Oh, nice. Flashing arrow. Ooh, and of course, ooh, that ooh, one's ooh, it's still nice pretty one close. 1 1 2 here for Prime. Uh -huh. uh, 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 uh. The, hop kick. the hop kick launcher coming in with a combo right there. Mm -mm. And one of the trickiest things about that hop kick too is if it is very hit confirmable, you can right. release oh. the, first the first hit and, and still be safe after. Mm -hmm. Like it only is punishable when it's like when you let it rip, have both yeah, hits have the come adder, out. Yeah. The adder one. yeah. Anyway. Prime here getting in one bar now, and Haji on the life disadvantage. Wow, nice bone there. Like nice duck, nice uh, nice, duck, nice yeah. low. Ooh, there we go. Just like you said, it's really really confirmable. Yep, incredibly hit confirmable, and that's what uh, that what make Julia. That's what make Julia. Uh, that's what makes Julia good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm slipping up a bit here. Like help me out. <laughs> Ooh, wow, counter hit four. There we go, we're gonna see not much damage here. Going in for the only carry combo without the walls. But oh, Rage goes, aren't gonna be oh, used, gonna but be it blocked. gets blocked. There we go, nice punish from Prime. Nice intuition. Amazing intuition. Going in for that empty dash instead, and goes for a block immediately after. See, Max mode animation. is ready, and he Ooh, spends nice. it all up. There we go, nice block from Haji on the NC, even a block. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a whiff, but once again, hit confirmable, hit confirmable right. hop kick. You can recover Ooh, much nice faster bone. with only the first one. <laughs> it's ah. amazing. Wow, again with the magic, not actually a magic core, but you know. Yep. But of course, uh, Prime here, trying to look for his own mm -hmm. openings. Right, both players are still just poking each other out yep. without actually having to commit. Just looking for the opening for the combo, but as I was saying that, Haji getting in the stagger on the counter head, getting in some more big damage. Yeah, that damage is pretty nutty right now, but Prime Ooh, is so close, but he gets out Run of it four. and the round goes to Haji this time. Right. Ooh, nice, counter hit four. That's actually a maximum maximum damage right there. Just most uh, commonly you, you'll do down four, forward three, down four, forward three, right? Yeah. But if you do a counter hit down four, and then down four, and then forward three, you'll get more damage. And definitely, like definitely optimizing here is Prime, and he does have two whole sticks of butter for himself. Mm, nice break. Nice break here. And of course, Haji still looking for his opening and gets the launch, mm. party crashers, there and into oh. the screw, uh, finish uh. it off. Oh, oh max mode combo. That's gonna be it. I feel so. Is it? Is it gonna be it? That, that's is definitely it. it. <laughs> that is definitely it right there. And of course, Prime putting himself on the board. This is the final round for the first game, guys. Right. And Haji getting poked out here by Prime. Nice. More openings Ooh, coming out there. We go. He's been pretty solid so far. Both players Ooh. looking pretty damn solid. Nice and ball. good sweep here uh, from uh, Haji. Uh, 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 uh. There we go. Nice, Prime here on the red bar, on the red stuff, with two bars as well. Yeah, two whole really? bars of meter. He can immediately erase Haji's health bar from right. here. With the max mode ready, goes for a Shimpuken. Ooh, there we go, one bar left. Ooh, the bow oh, and arrow. arrow! 
Good stuff Ooh. here from Haji. Oh, and there it is. Party Crasher yeah. to finish it off. You're going to crash your party and going to get one win. Uh-uh. See ya. <laughs> but again, again, guys, it's just Julia. Stream's still not over. Stream's not over. It's never over. And right now, Haji collecting himself. It was pretty close. It, it is. And of course, that, that means like he shouldn't be a little bit... He's not, he's not feeling confident, but he is feeling himself. Right. I don't know what I don't know how I could word that better, but <laughs> that's definitely like what I'm seeing right now. Mm -hmm. Keeping himself calm. Right. Wiping his eyes, telling himself it's still Collecting the first game. Collecting his own thoughts. Collecting his own thoughts. That's right. definitely it. All right. So we won't be seeing any character changes, but we definitely saw here a map change, a stage stage, a and stage of course, change. Yeah, prefer the wall. Like it, right, right now, both of these guys Go prefer wall. the wall. I told you earlier this that these characters are those characters that need walls to get the maximum, mm -hmm. maximum damage. Mm -hmm. And God, she's pretty. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> you would date her. I would date her. I would date her. But, huh. but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the fighting right now right. with Haji. <laughs> Already put some, uh, already put some damage there in his go. name, uh, and Prime uh, having a hard uh, time defending oh, against nice. it. Bow and arrow Bowen once arrow again. Guaranteed hit, getting in for the first round of the second Fight. game. And second, mm, nice forward one plus two. Oh, Haji hit, still, still feeling a bit more confident. The momentum does belong to him, right. and he's playing much, much, he's playing much, much Ooh, less restrained. Nice. But of course, Prime trying to, trying to take advantage of that. Right. Ooh, nice cancellation of back three, three, two. There we go. Uh, 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 uh. Ooh, nice stock coming in from Prime there. Uh huh. And of course, trying to look for a hit confirm Prime, but and he does have the life lead. But Haji looking to shred that out, shave away some of that health, and he right. does have the rage available. Oh, oh what a power man. crush! That's gonna be it. That's gonna be it, baby, my baby Julia. Hey, hey. Hey, yo! Oh my mm. God! <laughs> She's so pretty, just like you said, huh? She's incredibly pretty right now, and of course, Julia right. getting swept here, forced oh, forced to wow. stand up, but at still being put down. Prime looking for a round for himself, but Haji is feeling it all today. Right, the mom, the, the, the what do you call that? The, the momentum. momentum. Yeah, the momentum is on Haji right now. Wow, just like when. Just when I finish saying that. Yeah, and of course, Happy uh, Feet Emperor's Haji takes it two to zero. Three points for him, right mm -hmm. down, right down the arc for him, and that means that he's just really, really happy right now. Right. And like as I said, like it was a little less restraint mm -hmm. at the second game, mm -hmm. more, like, much more confident, and right. knowing that like he found out the holes in Prime's defense today, True. and he's been, and he just let it rip every single right. time. And just like you said, right. The difference between Haji's plays between the first match and the second match really, really, you know, you can really see it, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, at the first match, they were just trying to fill each other out, and then yeah. on the second game, Haji just... Yeah, he clicked. Uh, he clicked uh, all together, and it just went more, like, he just went more and more as the game went. And right, really, right. Um, ha like, like, Prime, Prime has not, like, Prime himself, like, it's just such a difficult opponent to play against. Right. Like he's incredibly and solid, and so Geese is also incredibly impressive. Right. Like you put two and two together, and like he's no slouch at all. And true, you could see this kind of movement. Like you should be incredibly threatened whenever you see that. But of course, Haji in playing incredibly confident. Right. And again, like I'd like to point point out that you know the rage the rage art of Julia when mm. you know his uh, prime was just bashing in. Mm. Empty. Yeah, it, the Dude. empty dash. Like, it, that's why. Like I'm talking about how incredibly, uh, how incredibly solid right. Prime is. But when it comes to when it comes to like confidence, pure mm -hmm. unadulterated right, confidence, yeah. I'd that like is. to say this was the moment it's that it showed right. when Haji Hon went for the power crush. Even though he had the life mm -hmm. deficit, he realized your True. bio wall, all options. Like this is probably it's one of enemy. the best options I could go for. Right. Mm, that's it's what he on does. Me. It's on me. Yeah. The message on me. It's. Oh, you can't do anything. And you might be keys. Yeah. You might be keys, but I'm baby girl. Yeah, but yeah, the oh. power power crush like, definitely gives the wall bounce, and like mm -hmm. it was the best possible thing that he right, could do right. from there. And Haji, props to him. Congratulations to you. And you get your three points. You deserve it all together. But mm -hmm. speaking of which, the next match is going to be... Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you just did that? Did you just do that? <laughs> <laughs> Signal Ultra Warriors Vermilion versus STI Olympians <laughs> Coffee Prince. I didn't, I didn't know 
<laughs> what? What? You didn't know. I didn't know. So you were just like, Ugh. I pulled it out. I yeah, pulled out yeah, what the yeah. next match is, guys. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll go back to that on a later day. But now, again, Vermilion like versus Coffee Prince. Vermilion right. at the top of the standings, incredibly comfortable. And mm -hmm. but Coffee Prince, super scary, Steve. Mm -hmm. Probably one of the uh, probably. One of the only guys that uh, gave Dojin the run, a run for his money right, when it came he, uh, to like when it came to like results when it came to a two zero coffee yeah, prince two zero on mm. with Steve last yeah with Steve on, uh, day four day on four. day two was it day two day two day four it nah, was day okay four. we're getting it was day four. we're getting all jumbled uh. up today but of course uh. coffee prince incredibly scary and of right. course let's not forget. Best this Devil Gin in the Philippines right now. Arguably. Arguably the best the Devil best, Gin in right. the Philippines right now is Vermilion. And right. mm -mm. like he is feeling himself. Look at He's that. been watching mm -mm. every match so far. And he like he's like looking at everyone, downloading everyone here. Right. And Coffee Prince. And he's in the top of the standings right now. Top of the standings. That's right. why. Like he is downloading the guy everyone. to beat. The he's guy the, to beat. He's the one who's downloading everyone even before the tournament started. Uh-huh. And he is the guy to beat right now. Signal Ultra Warriors Vermilion. Coffee Prince, on the other hand, um, like incredibly mm -hmm. solid, incredibly scary. And he do and he has like I don't say moments of brilliance because everything he's done was is a moment of brilli right. brilliance. He's a uh, good intuition. He has like amazing intuition, amazing mm -hmm. movement, and internationally he has performed amazingly well, too. Very yeah. well as well. So oh, wow, this <laughs> well section, huh? Yeah. And really, we'll see what he's going to pick out here. Is he going to go with a tried and tested Steve, Steve yeah. or is he going to pull out something else? But of course, uh, he goes for the Boxer, Devil and Jin. of course, Vermilion goes for the Devil Jin. Both of them use their mains right here, right now, only here on the National. Of course, and of course, Forgotten Realm being the uh, being the stage right here for them. Could be Three floor breaks. Could be the best, uh, one of the best maps, one of the best stages that Devil Jin could have. Actually, well, for both be. of them, like for both of them, yeah, both of them can like extend their damage with the floor break mm -hmm. and set up a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And really, there's not. I don't. I can't call it enough stage. I don't think there's enough stage to work with. But right, when it comes right. to vertically, there is enough stage to work right, with. Right. Anyway, for Trump, round go. one. Mm -mm. Mm. All right, round one for Vermilion versus Coffee Prince. Of course, a Vermilion rocking the red, representing his team right here, Signal Ultra Warriors. And SCI Olympians keep Coffee Prince already putting out the pressure here. There Steve go. really down good three. with that. Uh, down down back again. three, wow. two. Down back two. There we go. Sorry for this patience. Yep. But anyway, we're going down to the floor. Ooh, wow, he went for the Garn instead. Yeah, but of course, because it was fatal. There was enough damage for him to yeah, kill. Yeah. So you know, he could have, he could have, you know. he could have spiced it up a bit. That's what you're thinking. But no, Coffee Prince, huh? a man, a, a man of oh. pure business. Heaven's door, getting one more combo potential. Uh, going in for the O key. And there's a lot of damage there. 80 damage already against against Coffee Prince. Steel pedal being used. Uh, uh, oh, ooh, trying to flo break the floor did. there. Didn't get the floor break. Oh, nice punish coming in from Vermillion. Round yep. three. Mm -mm. And Vermillion trying to feel himself right now. Electrics aren't coming out yet. Like, right, right. Like it's, still, it's still been with Godfist, but of course. I haven't, I haven't, we haven't seen the electric. Yep. Right? Uh, but All both right. of them get one round apiece now. Yeah, Ugh. one round apiece for both of them. And of course, Coffee Prince putting up, up against mm -hmm. pressure once again. One Steve has some of the best side steps in the yeah. game. He does, since he technically just has two buttons, because the other right. two buttons right. are used for movement instead right. and stances. It's, oh, oh wow. good interrupts, jab against the health sweep. Interrupts the health sweep. Yep. Good job for compliments right there. But Vermillion now with the red stuff. Oh, power that's crush. Be it. Uh, F and the double F forward two, two after. Forward, forward two. Uh uh. Vermillion. There we go, trying to poke out Coffee Prince right now. Getting in for the open. Oh, still electric. So surprising. Mm, incredibly surprising right now, but still. Vermillion Ooh. playing it solid, playing it, uh, playing it safe, looking for his opening. Mm -hmm. Only using the electric as a whiff punish, most likely. Steel pedal right. being used once again. Ooh, nice dog coming in from Vermillion right there. Uh, uh. Still trying to kill each other out right now to get an opening. Nice! Still pedal right there. 
guaranteed if you didn't if you didn't know guys. Uh, uh -huh. And of course Coffee Prince oh on my the red stuff. Right amazing now. movement Ooh. uses the rage the drive. Rage drive. The blue stuff. Oh! That was so close to being a wild man right there. Oh! oh and and a punish. Punish that. One, two, two. One, you should two, punish two. that. You should punish that. And of course, Vermillion picking up himself. There's already the wave dash that we've already known from him. But of course, Coffee Prince going for the Albatross, going for the wall carry. And Vermillion responding with himself. Oh, trying to look for some opening. Jab once again. Wild Man being used by Coffee Prince. All right. And now Steel Petal. Uh. Now, Coffee Prince on the rage. On the red stuff right now, but a 1 1 Flash in. punch combination. Oh, punish! 1 1 2. Amazing Again. stuff here from Vermillion, and he takes it 1 to 0 against SCIA Olympians. Coffee Prince, but that's still not enough, guys. We still have one or two more games, depending on how the next results come out. Right, and. Again, Vermillion's one of the double team players, and it just shows. Yep, it the absolute shows. comfort he has whenever, whenever he's playing this man. Mm -hmm. But it's just surprising. It's not that we're not seeing, you know, the electrics come out. You know, it, it's not like Coffee Prince is playing incredibly compact. That right, is why. Right. Um, of course, he wouldn't want to. I, mean, I mean, he would have done that if Coffee Prince wasn't playing that compact. You know. Yeah. Like Coffee Prince playing incredibly compact, Round Vermillion four. not uh, not showing us Fight. any of the electric simply because of how how well Coffee Prince is defending himself. Right. Because that's why how clo that's you can see how close those rounds were because of mm -hmm. do you see this kind of movement Prince is showing? Ooh, there and there it is the electric. Double back to three. Uh, uh. There we go. Ooh. Went for the health nice. sweep. Health sweep right there. Ooh. And good stuff here from Vermillion, but of course Coffee Prince huh? going for the flicker Ooh, stance and the low parry. The low parry. E. Wow, off axis right there. And now Coffee Ooh, Prince wow. going ultimate for ultimate tackle, tackle but no response here from Vermillion. Oh, counter hit. That's gonna be it. Uh, uh. And that's game right here. That's the round for Coffee Prince. Even though he has rage, that's all he needs. Just mm -hmm. one low kick that can nice. go for him. Wild man being used, and of course, Ooh. flicker stance. Incredibly dangerous. It is. Ooh, back wave, one. Wave. Good uh. night, Harada. That's what it is. Uh. Masachi Ooh, from Coffee go. Prince. And if you guys didn't know, he's getting additional one damage for each time the opponent is hitting the wall. Yep, that's one extra damage, and it really is paying off in dividends. I mean, in like paying off a big sum, I mean, here right. for Coffee Prince. And one, Vermillion one, with the flash two, punch combination. Two. Ooh, nice for delayed off kick right there. Uh, uh, uh. Still filling each other out until the late game. Wow, the DF2. Uh, 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 getting into the wall. Uh, uh, there we go. Getting in for the OK again. Uh, uh, nice game for Vermillion. The round. Who's just dominating that round right there? Pure domination here mm -hmm. from Vermillion in that single round. And of course, Coffee Prince still has the round lead, and he right. might do something else from here. But the Hell Sweep says otherwise. Coming right. in here from Vermillion. Look at that, the wall carry. Was Even that enough, though? Even though it's not enough damage, like that's amazing wall carry from a, from a health sweep. And, oh, there it is, Coffee Prince having the red stuff, but Vermillion is already having the life lead. Even right. though he's up against the wall, it's still incredibly dangerous. Oh, the rage drive coming in from Coffee Prince. Uh, 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 uh. Good side steps here for Coffee Prince, and he's looking to open up Vermillion right now. The movement right. is Ooh, very, very cautious stuff. from both of them. Red oh, stuff, that's and that's the it. screw, and that is the kill for Coffee Prince. And of course, guys, we are going to a game three. Oh, man. The way that the way that Coffee Prince is doing this right now is so good, man. It's just, man, you got me in the first round, Getting him second round. We talked about it. Like we talked about how compact he can play, how well he's he's sidestepping. Right. His movement is amazing, mm -hmm. and it's really showing against Vermillion, who is at the top of the standings. And let's not count out Vermillion. He's he is a god when it comes right. to when it comes to uh, this kind of movement, the wave mm -hmm. dashing, the right, 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 and the uh, what he called this, the back dashing, wave dashing, and every and all the cancels that he does. It really is oppressive. He is an offensive monster, but on the other hand, Coffee Prince, seeing uh, seeing that, playing incredibly compact and like as a as a response. True. And either of these players can now get only two points 
Because of the st of, uh, of uh, the uh, points, right? Yep, definitely. Instead of a since it's not a two zero, guys, it is gonna be a two. Like Point. two points for uh, for, for either, either way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. For and the other, who, and of course, the win. person who loses the series gets one point mm. due to due to the single win he gets. One credit. Yeah. One credit for them. Yep, uh, that's uh. the point. And what? now here we are, guys. Uh. Game three. We see uh, Signal Ultra Warriors uh, uh. Vermilion and SDIA Olympians Coffee Prince. Oh man. The movement the is immaculate. Movement. The neutral game is so good between these two players. Mm -hmm. The neutral is insane. They're just choosing for safe moves. Laser Scraper. Vermilion lo looking for more of this. As once again, uh -huh. Laser Scraper Ooh, is a go. good way to try to stop Ooh, the side nice. steps. That's gonna be it going in for the wall, is it? Gonna be it? No, it's not enough. Wild Both of them the the right now. Rage Drive. Uh. You can hear the crowd scream at the background. But right now, Vermilion does have the red, red oh. stuff. But it's an incredibly oh unsafe Rage Drive, so you have to use it sparingly. Oh. But there the it is. Raw down four. The generic down it. four to finish it off. First round goes to Vermilion. Man, it's hitting me up. Yep. Oh, I Steel can. Pedal being whiffed here. Coffee Prince responding with him with his own combinations here. And right. right now we're not seeing enough combinations, but there is a lot of stuff here coming in here from Coffee Prince and the life lead interrupting two, two electrics in a row already. And like we said, man, the neutral game of these two players are so good that they the only thing that they can do is just poke each other out until someone gets an opening. Yep. And right now, they're not giving any openings at all between the two of them. And another steel pedal. Stand up, that's what he says. But of course... Oh! That's gonna get blocked! There that gets we go. blocked, and there's the full punish coming in here for Coffee Prince. That was... Kind of kind of late, if you, if you think about it. But if yep. he did it a little bit earlier, it could have uh, hit. Yeah, definitely. But of course, Coffee Prince going with that empty dash. It was amazing there. And Vermillion oh. looking for more, uh, looking for more openings. But wow, good block, block here. Hell sweep blocked here. Albatross Ooh. for OK. Oh, oh wild rising too. Uh, uh. Oh, we won't be seeing much wall combo damage right there. Oh, <gasps> okay. oh. That was incredibly nutty here for Vermillion, and he does get the second round for himself. Third round, I mean, for himself. But Wild Man coming out here for Coffee Prince. Oh, nice conversion coming in from Vermilion. We're gonna see a wall here. We not in my, not in that razor, but uh, we still got a wall here. Another combo going in for another. Oh, went for the okay instead. Running FF2. Sorry, if not running, but FF2. With the FF2 being used here, but of course Coffee Prince refusing to lose. But right now Vermilion poking out really well. Oh, he the race drives. Looking for the sidestep left here. But oh, that's way too close. That's way too scary. But right now, looking Magic. for more targets. Magic Pixel coming in from Coffee Any Prince. Any mix-up can do right here for right. Vermilion. Oh. But Wild Man once again from Coffee Prince. Oh. Oh. That is punishable, my friend. Oh, the down back three God. gets punished. And oh. Signal Ultra Warriors Vermilion takes it. Two oh to one against SCIE God. Olympians Coffee Prince. Look at how. Look at the sigh of relief coming in from Vermilion. Man, we were just, oh man, it's so close. It was so good. The, I like it. The <laughs> matches were incredibly close today, guys. I love and it. You, yeah, sigh of relief here from Vermilion. Dude. And really, Coffee Prince has been putting him <laughs> up against that wall, up against that corner, and every single time right. Vermillion says, I need to like, I need to respond. He's mm -hmm. been responding every single time, and he wasn't even playing reactionary. He was playing proactively. Right. They're just going up against each other really well. You can see this, the Heaven's Door from Vermillion mm -hmm. like in the last time. Mm -hmm. but, okay. But of course the OK, Coffee Prince on the other hand, responding with his own like compact movement, right. and Vermillion has just found the right amount of openings for himself. I, I don't know, man. Both of these, the, the, this game right here is the definition of what a neutral game is for Tekken. Yeah, definitely. And if you guys want to play, want to play Tekken, don't go ahead and do combos. You need to learn the neutral game first. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, one of the biggest things that most right. beginners would do. Like they would mm -hmm. learn combos immediately, but. You can see why fundamentals are more important, why the neutral right. is incredibly important. These these moves, you don't go for launchers immediately. That's mm -hmm. why these guys go for pokes. They go for safe they, options until, until they, they find yeah. an opening. They right. condition their opponent. Mm -hmm. And yes, in like Coffee Prince has been doing that to Vermilion and Vermilion doing that to Coffee Prince. Man, this is this so is, good. Again, the definition of a high level play. This is yes, the very 
aspect of high level play right here. You might think if you're not an actual fan, you might think they're just why they're not attacking, why why they're just moving and moving. Yeah. That's called you know the mind games. That's the in. neutral. That's the that's, movement. That's the mind games right there, man. It's so hey. it's so pressuring. To use like to use another uh, another terminology here mm -hmm. for uh, what do you call this for? <laughs> you just did that. Oh yeah. my god. The term <laughs> like to use another piece of terminology from another fighting game. It's called uh, what do you call this? <laughs> oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I was late. Like you were a bit late, but of course, um, PLDT Smart Omega Jason and Brent Ipro Maru is going to be the next match, guys. <laughs> but another thing is like the terminology, the footsies. I like yeah, the footsies from another fighting game. But well, of it course, it's a very fair. applicable like thing to every like, just, fighting game. Yeah, constant movement, mm -hmm. constant like feeling out each other, mm -hmm. seeing where the openings are, and that's what they did. It was mm -hmm. so well done. Man, I I don't know if it could be the best match we've seen. So far in Conference One, mm -hmm. definitely, yeah. like it was incredible. I mean, no, wait, sure, no, no, no. I mean, no. sure, we've seen. There's a lot. A lot of there's a lot of things to choose from. There's so yeah, there's many guys. Like I told you, there's a lot of hype watches. But in terms of like, if we're gonna choose like the best, mm. I guess arguably the best uh, high level play, I would say <laughs> it would be arguably. Oh my God, what is happening with Mar? Oh my God, look at him. So VIP, man. Yeah, incredibly VIP here. Uh. The water from Mouts? The guys from Brent are like giving oh my God, all the pampering what is in the world. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Pika. <laughs> oh. uh, Pika giving his player the treatment. Mm. This is amazing right now. <laughs> 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 well done, well done, guys. And of course, PLDT Smart Omega Jason versus Brent Ipro Maru. This is going to be a match for the ages. Maru wanting to put himself up the upper half. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, PLDT Smart Omega Jason wanting points in general. Like mm -hmm. he's been playing incredibly solid, but just falls short from small little heartbreakers. That is so true right now. Unfortunately for Jason, he's currently on the, the bottom uh, of the, the barrel. bottom of the standing. So he's gonna need a lot of wins right now. I mean, like I said, like we said earlier, we still have a lot of days, but it doesn't mean that you can slack off, even though there's still yeah. You have to be incredibly up. aware. Right. And really, this is what they've been doing right now as Jason looking for his target. And mm, that is it. He quickened the, the Jaguar. The Jaguar main chooses a Jaguar. What more can I expect? Goes for the king against Maru's Kazumi. Kazumi and Kazumi, Kazumi, as a character, Kazumi. we talked about it before. Fundamentals are the name of the game. Get ready for the next Kazumi battle. is definitely what it means to put your fundamentals to test, yes, to the limits, because she is a very fundamental heavy character, yeah. and that if you have good fundamentals, even if you don't have good fundamentals, these this character can will force train them you. into you, yeah, right, exactly what I'm trying to say. Thank you very much, my boys. Yep, definitely, and of so course the uh, on the other hand, King, a jaguar that's one. been that's been high up the tier list in Tekken Seven thanks to a new few new moves. And turns him into like an amazing offensive Ooh. monster. No, no break. No break on the on the shining wizard. But of course, oh. Jason looking what? for an opening there. Yeah, he's standing up looking for his opening. The, the I, I thought there was while running wall. one. Good stuff right there. And ah, the wall, like the wow. wall grab right there from Jason going for the full damage. The big boy stuff. And of course, guys, this is what I'm talking about. Like one two one one. One to one, one again. Like oh, all huh. the good stuff coming in here from uh, for King, it's been oh, really like he's become go. a striking monster aside from being a grappling monster. Like his movement has been like uh, all the stuff that that's been given to him has turned him into a complete character altogether. That is true. And there's a lot of difference between the King of Season One and a King of Season Two. And definitely we're gonna see more changes. Stature oh, the low kick. Parry. <laughs> the changes of Season Three on September. <laughs> uh. There it is, and of course, Ooh, once wow, nice again. Step coming from Death and here, back Good turn, launch! Guaranteed hit! Oh! oh! Drive. Yo! Good decision! Key oh! charge! That's done, baby! The key charge! Oh, I like it! I'm liking it! I'm liking the game with Jason right now! Jason is feeling oh. much, much more confident right now! This his, king his is at the top play. of the world! His game is so different from when it was before! Man, so good. And right now, today is probably his day. Jason the Assassin is already gonna start. Ooh, one, two, punish. 
Not enough though. Uh oh, one, one, two coming in from Maru right there. Oh, getting the wall, one plus two. That's kills. Tiger, not, not enough. enough. Not enough, but it was so good nevertheless. Swipe that credit Woo. card, Maru, trying to stop the momentum that Jason has right now. And he's already getting a good round out of it. Wow, nice slice up coming in from Jason. Man, it's so good. One, one, two coming in from Maru right there. Oh, back three. Uh, down back Another three. one. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, looking for some. Looking for, for his own openings. Okay. While running. Oh, while running nice. one. While rising two. Punish right there. Coming in. Getting into the wall. Not enough. To get uh -uh. Uh, there we go. Not enough to get the Oh, good damage break anyway. here from Justin, but Ooh, it's not enough. And Maru gets his final round. And of course, oh. guys, this is the final round for both of these players. Did you see that? The tiger. <laughs> yep. The tiger comes out. And of course, guys. Anyway. Back one two here from Jason. Good response. Trying to poke it out. Not moving at all. And once again, an another set of strings from the Jap. Oh, nice water rising one two. But gets punished anyway. The I back like one two really well done here from Jason. And like he's looking earlier. for the hop kick, but it gets flash cut. Right, and when like we said earlier, Kazumi is a very fundamental heavy character, and we can see that Maru's really playing very patiently with Kazumi right now. Good pokes, good punishes, and everything else, but the giant swing gets broken here. Oh my god. Final round for this match right here. Down back three, down back four, sorry. Stature uh, kicks uh. are be being used, but of course, Jason going for that down back three. Ooh, gets twin one, piston two. into the wall. Ah, oh, nice break. break. Jason oh. get, whiffs it, and it's so close right now for him. Looking oh. for the targets. Three seconds left on the clock. Oh. Unblockable. Gets dodged, and Maru takes the first game. The tiger, the tiger call it. Uh. Kitty, kitty, kitty. How do you, how do you call it? How do you call a cat? Or I prefer. It's gonna be it's gonna be a. How are you guys? If you're watching at home, how do you call a cat? Yeah, how do you call a cat? Would it, would it be like a or a me 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 me? It's gonna be a Paul right now. Yeah, we. Tech and Paul. People people get to vote. Don't worry. Yeah, you guys get to vote. How do you call a cat? Or a me 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 me. But really, like going back into the game, guys. Again, another Jason picks, uh, picks up the Armor King, yeah, something armor that he's a bit King. more comfortable in. Either yeah. way, this is a completely different like ball game altogether. Mm -hmm. Armor King, a bigger character uh, when it comes plays, to size. And plays differently as well. Plays incredibly differently. Round a lot of wave dashing, a lot of pressure, Fight. and big nutty damage. The Jaguar Mishima. Here yep. we go. Ooh, one, one, two, immediately coming out from Maru. Here. Ooh, one, two, while rising. Good punish right there, but of course, Armor, uh, Armor King looking for his targets here. Good grapple, good bound, and there it is into the Shining Wizard after the shoulder, but not enough. Down back three being used. Mm, one, one, two coming in again from Maru again with a one, one, two. Oh! oh good optimal nice. health sweep punish oh, here. But drops it though, both on Reza right now. Both have axe to race right or a race. Oh, okay. Nice, nice parry, parry right there. <gasps> ah! No close. The so blue board. The, the, the blue stuff. I'm sorry. Oh, again with Kazumi now. Green one, mist. One, one, two. Green mist misses, and of course the one, one, two being finished wow. off here against Jason. Maru taking himself in, and oh, Tiger uppercut being used, and now Jason is in a world of hurt. But what? That's the response right now for Jason. Comeback kick misses, and now Maru once again going for the uh, look, going for the laser scraper into the tiger, and Ooh, shoulder go. tackle being used, and Maru feeling himself incredibly well right now. Fight, Jason. Poke, yes. nice poke. Ooh, the punish. Ah, there another there. shoulder being used here, and the parry. parry. Being used Ooh, once again. Wow, nice block coming in from Bow right here. Oh, you're not gonna see some wall here because this is an impetus kick. What maximum damage coming in from Bow right there? FF4 gets blocked. Uh huh. And now the pokes, the pokes might be ready here for Jason. He does have the down threes. He does have the down forward ones. But of course, looking for more tar uh, looking for more openings here. Using for using the grab, and it's so close. It it is his game life today because it's Ooh. so close. Game point here for Maru and. Red stuff for both of them. Who's Ooh. gonna go for it? Green Mist, oh, Shiny Wizard, go. but no, break uh. that face instead. And now Jason, key oh, charging wow. once again. And guys, if you got hit by the great drive of Armor King, you cannot, you cannot break any, uh, any grabs. 
Yep, and that's what uh, that's what's showing right now. Jassen looking for another, looking for a mortar, uh, looking for his opening here. One one two here from Maru, and Jassen once again. Ooh, forward, forward. Good movement, but wow, Maru nice. with a beautiful punish. whiff punish. Uh, 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 there we go. Yeah. Red stuff. This might be it. Oh no, that's not yet. But Jassen has a red stuff right here, so it could be. Not okay. yet. Oh, both of them oh. are right there. Oh, Back of the oh. head. Look at oh. all that damage. And the ghetto stomps. Get Final up! Round. Again. Win. I, mean, I don't know anymore, man. It's, uh. it's really good stuff here. It is. But of course, the hell sweep being used by Maru. Jason looking for his openings once again. Shining uh -huh. Wizard gets broken. And now Maru approaching Ooh. Jason, breaking nice the throw. One, Flash one, two, punch two. combination once again. Oh, again, another break. But Jason still not giving up on the, on the, on the grabs there. Oh, one, one, two. Flash punch after the stature kick. Stature kick once oh, again. Oh, good sweep. There we go. Oh, is this potentially going to be it? Oh, this is going to be a lot of damage, but it might not be it yet. Yeah. Oh, uh, is it uh, enough? Let's see. Sorry, uh. sorry. Here we go. Oh, uh. not enough. Magic pixel. What's Magic pixel. Do? Oh, oh, punish. And my goodness, Maru. Amazing defense from him, big smiles on his face, and the Bren crew are giving him him giving him his rewards. Bren Ipro Maru taking that two to zero against PLDT Smart Omega Jassen. It was, <laughs> I mean, I mean like, if I were in this situation, I would also go for the low. You Ooh. know, it's it's kind of like an intuition uh, on you, like if your opponent's on the real. But pistol. that's the thing. These right. guys are incredibly good. Mm -hmm. They can, like, they, they know. They, they know. They like, know. They yeah. know. Whether or not it's a low, whether or not it's a mid, mm -hmm. they can immediately have their incredible Im reflexes, by the way. And reactions as well. It's not just mm. the reflexes, it's also the reactions, right? I mean, even if you they got. They kind of work the same way. <laughs> yeah, but, like, you know, there's something, like, you, you know that that's going to come. Mm. But you don't, you can't put This on. round, especially for Jason, was amazing. And it's a total heartbreaker that he lost. But look how, look right. how well he plays it out. And the Ray Shrive coming in right there at the back turn combo, man. It was mm. so good. Incredibly like amazing. That. And Jason is playing incredibly mm -hmm. confident this these two games. But it just really, it just really went down the wire. And Maru closed right. it out much, much better. In the like in this, these two set of games, but once again he takes three points and Jason takes mm -hmm. none. I'm incredibly tragic for him, but of course Brent Ipro Maru, you could see the fundamentals really activating here, mm -hmm. and this is this is what we talked about. Kazumi, uh, Kazumi having really good fundamentals, but of course Jason just beating the uh, crap out of uh, 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 uh. out of Maru right there at the back of the head. But this was it. This was down the wire. Right. It was really close match, man. Yeah. I don't... Look at that. And Ray Shard as well. Ugh. Ugh. Just a little bit more and it could have been it. But really, Maru predicted that low. He it saw did. the future. He did. He did. He did. He, did. he, he did. saw the future. He saw it with his little crystal ball, big smile on his face, mm -hmm. you know? And of course, like the Bren crew fanning him out. <laughs> but of course, guys, we're going right. to go on a short break mm -hmm. right now. That was some great tech in action coming in here for the Nationals. But once again, I'm Ernest Yarmouf Fikip Zon. And here with me is JJ Kun. This has been the Nationals. Stay tuned for more Tekken.
And we are back right here at the Nationals. I'm your courtside reporter of Pio Arcticuno Rodriguez. And joining us today, actually the very recent victor of our recent match, it is none other than Brent Esports' Maru. Maru, how are you doing today? Uh, thank you. I'm good right now and pretty nervous. <laughs> okay, let's just shake it off for a bit. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but big question, man, because I've been following you even before the Nationals when you've been competing in other tournaments. And in comparison to before, I got to give you kudos because holy cow, the improvement that we're seeing from before and now, absolutely insane. So if you don't mind me asking, what has been the biggest difference in terms of practice for you before the Nationals and well, actually going into the Nationals? Um, actually, um, uh, it's a big help to have a teammate like uh, Mouts and Hapon, uh, sparring with them and coaching each other. And uh, uh, um, Tekken is actually a lot tournament in Tekken. Uh, that's why it's a yun factor kung bakit siguro I improve ako kasi uh, madalas naglalaro. And um, nakakalaban ko yung mga best of the best here in the Philippines na player, Tekken players. That's actually very respectable. In all fairness, ha, pag nakikita nga namin sa camera yung support na ng teammates mo every single time. Actually, all three of you. Thank so, you, Mouse and Hapon. There you go. So, you're going up against AK now in a while, in a few games later. So, any message that you want to give to your supporters para continuously na supportan ka here at the Nationals? Um, pwede kunin ka lang. Yes, okay. let's go. Uh, yes, yeah, So, magpasalamat kila Sir Jeb, Sir... Victoria, Jeff Victoriano, and sa bumubuo ng Brand Esports e Family. Um, batch 2018-2019, uh, pamantasan ng lusod ng Pasig. And last one, shout out sa Army's Angel Integrated School and Signal Village National. Thank you so much, Maru. See, see you guys. Not only prepared for the games, but also prepared with the shout outs. So with that said, we still have a lot of games to go. We're only halfway through day six. With that said, for our audience, by the way, be sure to also watch the broadcast of the Nationals on pay TV at One Sports and EGD Network via Signal TV and on Free TV at Five Plus via ESPN. And the Nationals would also like to thank PayMaya, our official digital payments partner. And be sure to check us out on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at slash page Nationals. Without further ado, we're going to be passing it over to our casters because I am raring to go. Let's get it on, guys. Thank you so much, Articuno. And of course, guys, this was the first segment of it all. Mm -hmm. And the amazing, amazing stuff here from right. uh, from Maru. It really does show, like, as he said, there is a lot of competition here. There's a lot of tournaments. There's a lot of, definitely, like, a lot of players that you can drive yourself to improve with. And of course, right. this is the standing so far so with far. Signal Ultra Warriors mm -hmm. for a million at the top of the standings with 26 points. The LPE boys, AK and Dojin, having a two-way tie with 24 points. PSO Jewels at 21 points. SXP Prime at 20 points. Machine uh, see Signal Ultra Warriors, Machine Head, and Happy Feet Emperor's Haji, two-way tie with 19 points. And Brand Marrow on 16 points. Coffee Prince on 14 points. Mouse on 13 points. Ray on 12 points. Don Argus and 10 points. 10 points, uh, JD Zassan on 7 points, and still on the least, Jassen on 5 points. And incredibly, like, heartbreaking, like, mm -hmm. he just got, he got too owed by Maru there. And right. With who, perform, both of them performed Perform incredibly, well. Yeah. incredibly well, and still, it, and still, Maru got everything else and mm -hmm. took everything away. But that being said, that there's still more chances for everyone. This right, is there's still, still more days. Mm, there's still more days coming And in. definitely. Jason wasn't slacking off. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know. Yeah, Jason wasn't slipping. Yeah. Jason wasn't slipping. Maybe it, it like just, a, it's just, you know, Maru was. Maru was just performing really well mm -hmm. that time. But of course, guys, we're going to wrap up today. As once again, this has been the Nationals. I'm Ernest Yama Fiki Bazan, and here with me is JJ Kun. See you more for next Tekken Action, for more Tekken Action. <laughs> <laughs>
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Nationals. I'm Ernest Yar Rafiki Bizon, and here with me is JJ Kun. It's the geese. It's the geese. That's a goose. <laughs> Singular. <laughs> Singular. <laughs> That's goose. Wow, okay. Yeah, it's the goose, but it's the geese. Yeah? But of course, guys, we're still here for some great tech in action, and of course, that also means that we still, it still ain't stopping. The train ain't stopping, boys. Right? Tekken uh -huh. 7 is still on the menu. And here are our players, and here they are at the standings. Vermillion right here from Signal Ultra Warriors being at the top of the standings with 26 points. And the LPE boys, AK and Dojin, not too far from him at 24 points apiece. PSO Jules with 21 points, SXP Prime with 20, and a two-way tie between Signal Ultra Warriors Machine Head and Happy Feet Emperor's Haji with 19 points respectively. And Maru having 16 points, Coffee Prince having 14 points, Mouse having 13 points, Ray having 12 points, Don Argus on 10 points, JD Zasa on 7 points, and again, Jason on 5 points. Yep, definitely, uh, definitely a story to tell right here for everyone, and everyone's still trying to claw their way upwards. And mm -hmm. that's that means that there, there's going to be a lot of dangerous, dangerous things coming into play. These guys are going to go all out, Super Saiyan mode, basically. Right, and... Again, the price pool that we have here in this tournament is 175,000 passes. That's a lot of money. But of course, guys, we are now at segment two of day six with Happy Feet Emperor's Haji and Signal Ultra Warriors Vermilion being the start of the segment. SEO Coffee Prince and PSO Jason being the second. Brent E Pro Maru, LPE AK being the third. Dojin versus Prime being the fourth. Ray versus JD Zessa being the fifth. Don Argus versus Machine Head for the sixth one. And the and last the one, last but not least, mm -hmm. Mounts versus Jules, Jules for match number 14. Mm -hmm. And here we are, guys. This is going to be the second segment. A lot of things have already happened at the first. First seven matches, and they've already been incredibly right. close. I don't, I don't know, man. Like... I still can't move on with Jazzin's back turn combo. That's it's so good. <laughs> it was so drive. well done. But when it comes to high quality Tekken, mm -mm. you can't count out the two guys that are going to face off mm -mm. today, which are Happy Feet Emperor's Haji and Signal Ultra Warriors Vermillion. Again, it's the oh, girl character specialist versus mm. the arguably the best yeah. uh, Devil Gene user. And let's see if they can do that. But for now, like, let's see if they can duke it out and give us an entertain entertaining show, I mean. Mm -hmm. and But for now, we're going to go on a short break, guys. This has been the Nationals. But don't you dare, don't you dare change that channel because we have more Tekken action coming right up.
And hello once again to all of you watching right now live here at Eastwood, Quezon City. It is The Nationals, and I am your courtside reporter for today, Theo Arcticuno Rodriguez. We're pretty much halfway through day six right now, and man, oh man, things are getting all the more intense here today. And as far as the points go, though, what's interesting is that we haven't really seen any significant shifts just yet. But heading into this next match with Vermillion and Haji, well, things are going to get all the more interesting because Vermillion still sitting at a tippity-top whilst Haji... Just a little bit of a setback from the previous day, but with this opportunity right here, not only does he have the chance at pulling maybe Vermillion down, but also maybe get a climb up for himself as well. Of course, that'll pretty much be determined as we head into the game in a little bit. But of course, to all of you watching here right now, be sure to also watch the broadcast of the Nationals on pay TV at One Sports and EGG Network via Signal TV and on Free TV at 5 Plus via ESPN. The Nationals would also like to thank PayMaya, our official digital payments partner. And be sure to get updated with everything the Nationals happening on social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We're pretty much consistently posting out there at slash ph nationals with that said we're going to be passing it over to our casters because i'm ready for the smackdown let's go guys thank you so much arctic kuno and smackdown is the word of the day and that means it's gonna be happy feet emperors haji mm -hmm. and signal ultra warriors vermilion they've been incredibly solid right now they've been on a tear vermilion as arctic kuno would say at the tippity right, top. Right, I right. love saying that. That sounds amazing. It rolls off the tongue really well. But of course, Haji, on the other hand, just oh. recently, just recently, get a, uh, got a 2-0 against Prime. Right. So uh -huh. like, he's he's incredibly scary himself. Let's not forget that. And again, like I told you earlier, it's gonna be the arguably the best Devil Gene user in the Philippines versus the women character specialist. Female I'd character like, specialist, I'd yeah. Like, I'd like to optimize my wording for that. But <laughs> I, you know, Female I, character specialist, that's yeah. going to be the case. But of course, he prefers mostly Julia and Anna. Well, if we're going to talk about the Nationals, mm -hmm. we haven't seen him play on other characters, on other tournaments as well, right? Mm -hmm. That he's using different, really different characters. But for the Nationals, I guess, you know, what he it's wants to use... Comfort is comfort. And comfort is comfort, mm -hmm. right. Like comfort is comfort, and that's going to be the case for him. And, of course, this is going to be Haji versus Vermillion. And you already hear it. The ring announcer screaming that it is time, boys. It is time. We're going to see a lucky Chloe pick right now. Just like mm. you said, he's kind of comfortable with a Julia now, but we might see a different character. Oh, Lily as well. Mm, so Lily ha having amazing side steps, And, of course, look at against something like Devil Jin. Oh, look at Haji. Oh, just taking out the mole. <laughs> <laughs> Haji, what's up? He knows what's up, but of course, mm -hmm. Lily, incredibly good, having really good side steps, and they already uh, they already found out a little bit about like Devil Jin. Mishimas are of course vulnerable to side step left. True. Uh, really good, uh, really good target right there. A uh, really good side stepper is Lily, but of course, going with a try to ah. test it, Julia instead. Uh, uh. The comfortable pick. Mm. Uh. Pure unadulterated comfort right here, and that also means. That uh, that also means that Haji is gonna have a lo little bit of fun with himself mm -hmm. and also Vermillion. This meet, this is it, guys. The first match of the second segment: Happy Feet Emperor's Haji versus Signal Ultra Warriors Vermillion. Right, and we are gonna be on Jungle Outpost Season Two. Mm -hmm. That's why for the two. Huh? Stream yep. is live. And God, she's still so you pretty. Ready? Stream is live, baby. So you better not go away. Stay tuned. More good wow. tech and action. But yeah. Round one. Oh. Round one, guys. Here it is. And Vermillion going for the classic shirtless devil gin. Uh. Good health sweep right here. Uh. And into the wall carry. Uh. Look at all that real estate. It is amazing right now. Yeah, there it is, guys. And look at all that real estate. It's so amazing. Right. All right. Oh, wow. There we go. Party Crasher. No counter hit coming in from Julia. Uh. Still trying to focus on one one two coming in from Vermillion. A good flash punch combination right there, but there it is a whiff punish. Wow. But no double forward four for the screw. Instead Drops going for combo. another one. But no, he was setting up for Oki. Don't worry, guys. Fight. Oh wow, that's some <laughs> good analyzation. I like that. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Here we are, and another double electric being being used right here. Mm -hmm. the wall. There we go. The going Lockers. downstairs. Heaven's door. Uh, uh. A lot of damage from Vermillion, but of course Haji looking for his 
looking for his response. And Party Crasher whiffs, but instead goes for the back turn. Beautiful 12 frame, and there's the power crush into the wall bounce. Wall break is going to be the name of the game after the shotgun. And that's a lot of damage coming here from, right. from, from Haji. Putting Vermillion on the red stuff, but getting access. Oh, the electric. Nice conversion coming in from Vermillion right now. Getting the maximum combo that he could have got on that conversion. The beautiful bow and arrow and Haji feeling himself really well today. And Vermillion, uh, Vermillion looking for his targets right now. But of course, Haji with another sweep, with another wall carry. Look at all that real estate being covered. Mm. Maximum damage, big boy damage right there. Uh. Uh -oh. Bow and arrow gets there finally blocked. There's the can cans, and now Vermillion putting some damage mm. into that name. Put the screw wow. down and electric the steel pedal. What's next in the menu? Uh. Oh wow, Vermillion now in the red stuff, getting active rage. Oh, the rage drive gets hit. Gonna get for the maximum wall combo damage gets in for the Oki. FF2. Oh, nice. There we Flash go. punch. Oh, steel pedal. Oh, in favor of Vermillion, wow. the trade. Well done, well done here from Vermillion. Steel Petal has a lot of has a lot of damage and is really good for that trade. But of course, the wall carry insane right now. Oh, the wave, wave will coming in from Vermillion. Definitely a Vermillion thing to do. Ooh, nice bow and arrow. Oh, the rage drive gets blocked though. Oh, oh, Another bow and, bow and arrow. arrow. Well done here from Hachi. Another sweep coming out. Okay, looking for that flash punch, but instead goes for the one two. Uh, uh. Now trying to back out a little bit. Oh, oh nice. while rising while two. While rising two from Vermillion. The reaction is so good. And Vermillion's wave dashes are incredibly compact, and he is okay yeah, compared to his play earlier. Yeah, bre oh. breathe it in, breathe it out, mm -hmm. and he is Welcome going out all out. That's what he is. Seven. We're gonna see a character change. He's gonna go for the. Devil oh, the Anna, the flying pig, right there. Yeah. I thought he was gonna go for the. But of course, Anna Williams being uh, being really good at the mix up right here and hits like a truck, has a lot of right. plus frames. Mm -mm. But on the other hand, uh, Vermillion relaxing himself. They go to Souk, an incredibly compact stage in comparison to everything else. Mm -mm. He does have uh, he does have a little bit of extra extra squeezing room when it comes to the other side of the stage. Mm -hmm. But at the start, you are packed in. Right, and it's. Like you said, it's a rectangular re side. Yeah, a rectangular, rectangular stage, stage. Yeah. yeah. Mm -mm, the sock. The uh, Try showing me a good time. Yep, and yeah, that's that's some uh, uh, good timey stuff. <laughs> the core, core values. The wow. core values the core are <laughs> like the core values right now here for Tekken means the fundamentals, and that also <laughs> means that they're just gonna go all out. And that is a very good launch here from Haji. Uh -oh. mm, nice mm. maximum damage coming in from Anna right there. Ooh, the hell sweep going in for the combo. Mm. And now, and we were talking about this uh, actually. Like, where, where were the hell sweeps the last time? Here it is. Oh, oh the setup from the key charge. Ah, nice coming in the power hit from Vermillion. Going back to the wall, maximum damage right here. Uh. He was looking for a setup, but instead he gets oh. himself mixed up by Vermillion. And good stuff with the rage art. And guys, you might you might say that that key charge was kind of taunting, and it wasn't. It's a setup. Yeah, definitely. If it's in the middle of the game, guys, it might it it still is a setup. Key charge, a little bit of a taunt, a little bit of shimmy, but it's not. Like, it's yeah. still it's not enough to like you know really put you out of your put you out of your misery. But on the other hand, here, Haji having a hard time. Vermillion pushing his advantage against him. Ooh, Ooh, while rising. Ah, that's gonna be it. The heaven's door. Ooh. Uh, round oh, the wave dash. Yep, a lot of wave dashing, oh, feeling yeah. himself right now. Vermillion mm. gets launched, the though. Uh-uh. Not enough with the rage. Mm. Another conversion going in for the wall. Nice. Uh, Laser OP, oh, good stuff. Oh, the wave, wave, wave. There we go. Launches Vermillion. Is it gonna be it? It, it is. is. It is. And we can see definitely the core values of this game. Uh huh. Uh huh. And of course, <laughs> Anna wanna get, wanna having a. He wants to have a good time, but right now, Haji not having a good time himself as the hell sweep is being used into the wall and okay. laser scrape oh, all the nice way. Oh, Barry coming in from Haji right there. The good stuff Ooh, right here from, nice. from Haji. Going for the stomp. The high heels are really crazy right now. It is. Oh my goodness, look at all that oppression right here from Vermillion. Ooh. 
Oh, went for the mix up. Oh. Ah, good duck wow. here from Vermillion. Boat now on the red sub gets axe for Rage Rider. Oh, right oh. good launch. Good but kill. Didn't need it. Didn't yeah. need it. No need for Rage Drive if you get the good reads, and the good reads ah, right now say go. that I will launch you. That's what Haji is thinking. Uh, trying to spatial each other right now. Spacing out. Uh, uh, the neutral game again. Like it's both clear. The neutral game in this game is very, very important. Beautiful can cans there from Vermillion, but no conversion after. Going for uh, going for the OK instead, but once again, Twin Pistons has punish. Mm -hmm. Oh, went for the mix up instead. Did commit. Oh, the one two coming in from Haji. Wow, getting <gasps> good oh, launch, man. and that is gonna be game two uh. for Haji. Props. It's gonna be a one one now. The core values at your faces again. Uh. Mm -hmm. Haji taking a swig of water. Mm -hmm. No special treatment for him. He's just gonna put it down. And right. he's just, he already got he already got his coaching from Ray. Vermillion, on the other hand, probably talking with Machine Head. No, he is deep in thought by himself. Mm -hmm. He already knows what the situation calls for. It's just going to be a stage select, and he's going to cool himself off and cool Haji off at the same time right. by thinking about what the stage is going to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, yeah, we've seen Vermillion in lots of situations, and like we've seen him get out of those. Really tricky situations from him. Uh, I'm pretty sure he could do it right now again. You know? Get ready for him. The next mm, battle, just thinking. Battle, battle. And, deep and in thought. Vermilion, deep in thought. He is gonna wave dash towards his problems right now. W face them head on against Hot Happy Feet Emperor's Haji. Mm. And still, Mishima Dojo. Amazing Mishima stage. Dojo. It's very, very solid for both uh, for both of these guys. Mm -hmm. In like Come enough stage here. for everyone, Come enough real estate, real enough for value. Let's go. And yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. Vermillion. Vermillion putting on the uh, putting on the straight jacket instead. And flash punch combination against Haji. But right now Haji has the pokes. But of course the launch attempt gets punished. Right, now trying to space on the other. Wow, gets the god fist. Getting in the combo. Ah, getting in the wall again. Uh, the OG 5050. Ah, wow. No, it's gonna but kill. It's gonna, gonna be kill. it. Oh! oh! We predicted wrong. Uh, uh, but that's not gonna be it, though. That's not gonna be enough damage, but, but it is gonna put you at very mm. fatal, fatal. Giving health. him another opportunity. Last chance opportunity right here. What? Oh, Down man. four to save the day. No. Good stuff here from Vermillion. Ooh. Best choice he can go for. Electric is used. He's feeling a bit more confident now. Wall carry is being used right now. Steel pedal after that. Hell sweep all the way to the wall. Mm -hmm. oh. And the to try spatial counter. Getting in for the opening again. Uh. Now it's the counter hit jumping from Vermillion. Nice. Uh. Uh. Again, Good putting punish in. here. Uh. Putting him now in the red stuff. Mm. Nice. Punish from Vermillion. Round Incredibly good punishing here from Vermillion. He is on point. And Haji still trying to look for rounds on the board for himself. And there's the launch. There might be the breath of fresh air for him and the sign of life. Mm -hmm. Putting him to the wall. Max is damped right there. And another one guaranteed hit. Oh, wow, the and that's it. up. Oh, no, it oh, ain't. Sidewall situation. Is. Uh, uh. One more hit is going to be it. And that's when I said that. One more hit. Round four giving him another sign of life right here. Mm. Could it be? And now Haji trying to go for on the offensive, but Vermilion responds with a wake up low kick right there. And oh, oh wow. That real estate is insane. It is. Oh, steel pedal. Oh, the mix up. Empty oh. dashing. Going for it, but no. Oh. Good stuff here from Vermilion, and that's him taking game three. The down tree ends it. And I guess uh, we saw the Filipino Pop Dash cancel. Mm -hmm. So good. Good stuff there. The empty dashing here from Vermillion. Putting a lot of pressure. You don't need to wave dash. Sometimes you just need the empty dash. Right. And that's what he did. And Vermillion, even after having a even after having a game two being mm -hmm. taken away under his nose, the way Haji played is what was incredible. Yeah. It was immaculate. But of course, Vermillion responding, uh, responding, showing him why he is at the top of the standings right now. And Look, here we go again with the replay. Uh, I, I guess the uh, mashup earlier was, you know, going with the Julia and Vermilion. I guess it's kind of good, but like Vermilion just played a little bit, you know, on top of the 
mm -hmm. incredibly on top, mm -hmm. and of course that also means that Haji having like was having a having a hard time against Vermillion's pressure. Right, and I really like the decision that uh, he changed from Julia to Anna. Mm -hmm. Like we've seen him playing Anna, if not Julia, right? And dude, that's what that's what made him win the second game. Yep, definitely. The choice of changing to Ana, mm -hmm. having more mix-up options. Right. You don't need that much wall carry. Instead, you got to go for more uh, mix-up options there. And a lot of plus frames really put uh, Haji, uh, Haji ahead at the second uh, second game. Mm -hmm. But instead, Vermillion with really good adjustments at, th at the game three really told it. But of course, this is once again, I, I talked about it. Haji basically robbed Vermillion. He was two rounds ahead. Mm -hmm. And instead, you get the reverse round brown. Man, it there's a lot of this happening in the Nationals right now. Mm -hmm. You might have been winning now, but I'm going to rob you of your momentum. Yes, and of course, that was what ha what was happening. But Vermillion kept himself calm, kept himself collected, right. and took himself, took it to his own hands, taking the, cer taking the third game, I mean, for himself. And of course, that also meant that Haji, with a heartbreaker right there, and like yeah. just dealing with so much pressure. Like, Vermillion was actually playing much more confident in right. the third game. And the game, right. Guys, Tekken is not just a fighting game, it's a mental game. It's a very big mental game. Everyone has to read each other now. Mm -hmm. But of course, guys, the next match of the day, uh, the next match of our second segment is going to be STI Olympians Coffee Prince and PLDT Smart Omega Jassen. Mm -mm. And uh, we've seen these guys play a lot. Mm -hmm. And again, Jassen, the Jaguar Specialist, plus Akuma and Geeks. Mm -hmm. And then we also have Coffee Prince. The Steve God. <laughs> Steve God. He is a Steve God right now, and of course, that also means that he has amazing movement, like a lot of a lot of side steps you have True. to keep track of. But on the other hand, uh, Jason is hungry. Right. This I jaguar mean, is hungry. We are talking. He wants it. Yeah. He wants it. He's a predator. He's looking for a prey. He's looking for the prey because right now he has been at the bottom of the barrel mm -hmm. for too long. He is thinking, I want that. I he want to is, get this. He and is he's, hibernating. And he's been playing incredibly well today. Mm -hmm. Like he is at the top of his like at the top of his mountain. But it's but this is against Coffee Prince, a very, very solid player. Let's see if Jason can actually respond to that. And let's see if his Jaguars can take the kill. Right. And I wonder, you know, he's just hibernating. Now uh, Woken to get, you know, looking for the prey. And I really like the stick. I really like the colors of the buttons. Definitely designed for tech and play. Yep, definitely designed for tech and play. The one, two, three, four is being uh, used there. And Rage Art as well, the R1. Yeah. The R1 also, yeah, being highlighted there. Um, mm -hmm. The like the Rage Art button that you mm. can put in. And of course, Coffee Prince, uh, thinking uh, thinking about it, just talking talking it out with, ja like, talking it out with the Marshalls, Jason. Mm -hmm being informed of the same exact things. And they're just letting themselves adjust for a bit. Really, True. Jason, Jason right now, like, look at him. He's he's very concentrated. He's calm, he's collected, he's and he's collecting looking. collecting yeah. his own thoughts right and now. And he is looking at the screen thinking, I will murder this man. Like, <laughs> I <laughs> need to. Like, it's not like he, like, these guys like each other. These guys love each other as a, like, as a whole community. Right. All of these players, despite being not, despite not being teammates, despite competing with each other, these guys are total friends with each other. But it, right it, now... It just had to that. They yeah. had to... But you know, Jason... It's a survival game. Yeah, Jason wants to murder someone today. Definitely. We're going to be on Dragon's Nest for our stage. Get ready for the uh, next what, can you say, what can you say about our stage right now? Well... Of course, Hong Kong cinema classic. You can mm -hmm. put, a, you can turn it into like a classic Chinese movie. Right. But of course, this means it's gonna be a Coomer versus the Steve here instead of uh, instead of a Jaguar. Jaguar. Jason decides to go for that instead. Like I told you earlier, he may be a Jaguar specialist, but he also has a Geese and a Kuma. Yep, definitely. And now he's gonna use that, and he Round he shows one. flashes of brilliance with that Akuma. Right. A lot of beautiful combos that he can do, FADCs and everything. But of course, uh, that's also another thing. Like what makes Akuma incredibly strong is he has a 10 frame launcher if he has meter. Right, and definitely getting in the Hadouken. Uh, 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 wow. Still trying to spatial things. It's under, but wow. I didn't know that Steve also has a punch for that. Down forward to the Uh huh, and definitely he's just. Coffee Prince having the life lead here. Jason having like, having a hard time himself. 
Uh, okay, the Rage is going to be there. He does have one. There's the FADC, but it wasn't FADC enough. The focus attack still came out. But of course, he does have Rage. He can use the Demon, oh, the but D4. there's that down four, the down four to sweep him down. And that's like Jassen that. taking the first round. Wow, the counter hit back one. Good night, Harada indeed. And now Coffee Prince puts him near the wall. No Masaji after. Oh, the down four again. The down four again. Oh, wow. He conditioned him. He conditioned him into crouching. Getting Beautiful mix up wow. right there from Jassen, but no wall carry, uh, no wall carry in Unfortunately, sight. Unfortunately, yeah. But it was so good though. Oh, oh, what a duck from Coffee Prince. You have to teleport away, but you're back against the oh, wall. The EXDP counter hit. And this is really, oh. really close right now, guys. Just oh, like that. Nice. Jassen takes round, round two. But then shoots the meter, though. Fight. Yeah, that's problematic. But of course, that was the safest choice that he could do right, at right. that point. And of course, after that blue spark, guys, you cannot guard the second hit of that Steve, of that Steve move. Right. Oh, uh, wow, the cancel. There we go, the cancel is Wild Rising 3. Uh, Beautiful uh, stuff right wow. there, down four once again. Oh, nice side step coming in from Coffin Prince right here. Yep. I really like that. Side stepping on the Demon Flip. Yep, Demon Flip being side stepped here, but of course, Jason still putting up pressure, putting mm. up pressure, he does. Like, of course, the life lead has, wow. been dis has disappeared, but there's the flicker, there's the screw, and Coffee Prince taking takes, the game. takes his round. Mm -hmm. Fight. What? Oh, Ooh, baby. Uh, uh, we're going to see a wall here. Masaji. Oh, never no. mind. Going, oh. for the safer, uh, going for the safer option there, and going for the more guaranteed option, of course. That also means that Coffee Prince punishing that down four was a breath of fresh air for himself. But, but we now have Jason with two bars and the meter as well. Are we gonna see a racer? No, never mind. Off axis right there. But we still have Ooh, he still has the red stuff. Oh never mind what I say. Yeah. Red stuff and everything else, Jason could have taken that entire health bar by himself, but of course, Coffee Prince. Act, oh, putting up his mug, EX Tatsu being used as a screw. Into the wall you go, sir, but no. Not enough. Oh, the down Good low is parry. Seen. He could have seen that low, like, he saw that down for a mile away, seeing it from the future. And now right. Jason looking for his targets. There it's still go. one It's still one more round for both of these guys. Life lead belongs Ooh. to him. Oh, oh not oh. enough. Holy moly. Oh, there we go, the jab. Beautiful jab here from Jason and taking the first game against Coffee Prince. Right. Uh, it was it was so uh, it was an okay match. It was a pretty good match actually. Incredibly close for both of them. No walls, Coffee Prince says, and I want that Arctic snowfall. Mm -hmm. On the other hand here, Jason, being uh, being still the Akuma, you are very wall reliant as Akuma, but that doesn't mean you have you aren't dangerous yourself. Right. And again, as an Akuma player, as a Keith player. We're gonna need the walls. Yes, but that, as I said, you're still very, very dangerous with that FADC, with right. that meter, and of course, with all of that setup that you can possibly do. The resources. Every resource that you have is incredibly dangerous. Round one. Round one, here we go. Second match, Coffee Prince versus Jasmine. Going in immediately with a 4-3. Focus, focus attack being canceled there. Good strings here, but good night, Harada. Once again here from Coffee Prince, going for Oki instead. Oh, but he now has some red stuff, and we know almost he's going to fill the first bar. First Ooh. bar, first stick of butter is going to be there. Is oh. he going shopping? There it is. But of course, Coffee Prince says, go buy your butter, but I'll take the round. All right. Hey. Oh, the one, two. Nice counter hit coming in from Coffee Prince right here. Getting in the combo, the maximum damage he could have gotten. Oh, nice break coming in from Jason right there. Good one plus two break here from Jason, but of course Coffee Prince is about to activate. He's steering his mug of coffee mm -hmm. on a cold winter's day. Right, nice cancellation from Jason right there. Uh, ooh, nice. Trying to bait out him by using the focus attack. Yep, definitely, and trying to go for the counter hit focus attack instead. Now has access to two more. Nice oh, what a up. launch. This is dangerous right now. Beautiful oh, FADC. Oh. But it doesn't matter. 
It doesn't matter. I'm going to counter ahead your race drive with an FF4. Good night, Harada, for immediately. Immediate back one. Good night, Harada from Coffee Prince. And he said, okay, you take that. You go ahead and take that. But right now, Jason trying to take everything else from Coffee Prince. Oh, nice, but no FADC here, but it's still oh, a lot of nice. damage, but that might be the round it, for it, Jassen. Oh, never mind, he drops it. It could have been, but oh, man. Oh, man, the side step coming in from Jassen right here. Oh, nice jab. Nice that jab, jab has a lot of reach. Have it you is. noticed? It has. I mean, I, I, didn't, I don't think it even reached him. Yeah. Like physically, you know? Like, like it, it just hit his soul. That's what you're nice. saying. <laughs> Right, just like uh, oh no, you should ooh. punish that a oh, lot. There we go, but not the proper punish. Uh, uh. Okay, okay. <laughs> like it's, this is pretty tense right now. Both of these it players is, it is. moving accordingly for each other, and of course, Coffee Prince gets his launch, and he's gonna go for the Sonic Fang as the finish to set up for more. Okay, instead, oh. Albatross. And oh wow, now on the final, final round. round of this match, but Jazz and on the game turn. Yeah, he is at match point match right point. now. And of course, Coffee Prince having, like, trying to look for the for the openings. And Jassen playing this Akuma really well. Right. Again, coming in with a punish from uh, Coffee Prince right there. And yes, Jassen. Oh, no EXTP. Why would you do that, sir? It, Coffee Prince saw that a mile away and blocks it. But of course, nice. FADC. That's oh, what we were looking it. for. He went for the Demon Flip 3 instead. Yep. And oh, okay. Oki okay. oh, tried God. to go for the cross up Tatsu. That was big boy stuff. Right. I love that. Oh! oh! And Jason takes it 2 to 0 against Coffee Prince. I love it. He finally got the redemption he's been longing Three for. Three points, the first step for him to get out of the bottom of the barrel. And oh my goodness. The redemption that he Jackson. has been looking for. Like you said, he is hungry. The he's man hungry. is hungry. He, he was looking is. for prey. He was looking for the meat. And he smelled blood in the water. He got it. He got what he wanted. He Wait. got the meat. Blood in the water. Wait, he's not a shark. He's a jaguar. He smelled blood in the jungle, and that's what he's going for. And even, even with a little shaky start here, Jason performed out mm -hmm. of his mind. Right. And again, with the down force, man, it's so intuitive. I like that. Incredibly good. And of mm -hmm. course, EXDP's on point for him, on and looking for some meaty well. setups himself. Even though this, this is Tekken. Meaty setups are hard to find here. Mm -hmm. But of course, that also means that, look at that combo, that is amazing. Right, if it wasn't off accident, he could have went for the rage shard instead mm. for the maximum damage. Yes, definitely, but instead, he does settle for that and takes his beautiful, beautiful 2-0. Right. And, oh my, man, Still. he wanted that, he wanted that. That is pure hunger right there. And look at this jab, okay. Look how much... He wasn't reaching him, it's like, I'm gonna punch it like this. Yeah. Like, it's not reaching, but it, it still hits you. It's his stance, it's his stance. Like, look, it is. At, look how far Akuma's stance is. Like, Ugh. Mm, yeah. Like, it's so far. And Dude. really, like, props to Jason here. Finally Definitely. taking that 2-0, finally taking his three points. And Definitely. the hunger is still going on. He's yeah. still gonna, it's still an He's uphill still battle for them. But of course, Coffee Prince playing really well, giving Jason a run for his money. Those were two rounds apiece each game. Right, and man, He's still, he's still hungry. He's still hungry. Incredibly hungry. And let's see what, what that would put them in here. But of course, we're going to go on a short break, guys. And stay tuned for more tech in action. Again, I am JJ Kun. And, and I'm Ernest Young Rafiki Bazan. Don't go away for more tech in action. Only here on The Nationals.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, the Nationals is kicking it really, really hard, isn't it? I am here again, ladies and gentlemen. Yours truly, Pika on commentary, joined by... Chisto. And yeah, I'm very excited for our upcoming matches. And so far, the matches today have been so hype. Of course, I have to mention Jasset in our just recently concluded match, mm -hmm. picking up his first set victory, I believe, here in yes. the Nationals. So congratulations to him. Uh, rather, the first of uh, 2-0 that he has oh, uh, yeah. in this tournament. Uh, he did have a 2-1 before, but this is his first clean three crisp points, ladies and gentlemen. And congratulations to Jazz. And of course, a battle well fought uh, with Coffee Prince. He's still looking really good up in the rankings, isn't he? But, ladies and gentlemen, up next again here is Ren Ipro's Maru uh, with that grin on his face. You know, the, the, the sign of confidence. And Lao's Auto Group Playbook Esports is AK the Eagle once more here, Chisto. Yeah, and let's talk about Maru. Maru so far here in the Nationals, you know, I feel like he's been one of those players that have been constantly improving throughout <laughs> the competition, you know, sticking to that Kazumi pick as well. He has been showing up very, very well recently. And AK, you know, I feel like AK, he's been just juggling around these two characters. You know, he's been playing the Geese yeah. sometimes, sometimes he wants to go for that Shaheen. I wonder what he's going to pull out here up against Maru. Yes, and Maru, of course, uh, a, a guy who has a lot of characters up his sleeve. Again, he could surprise us. You know, just the very last minute, he, he could go for that Kazumi again, as you mentioned. Maybe even, maybe even the Josie, which has done him some work in the past, right? But remember, Maru does have a Lars. <laughs> That's worth noting, even a Dragon. But, okay, maybe I stand corrected. He is gonna stick with his comfort pick. And, you know, this is, this is anybody's game right now. Yeah. It's basically 50 50 for yeah, both of these players. But yeah, you know, I really like that both of them decided to stick to these uh, very comfortable picks for them. But yeah, here we go. Can't be risking anything now, can we? And we are moving into the arena, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very, very oddly shaped stage again. I think octagonal, maybe even spherical, you know? Because uh, th this will favor anybody at this point. You know, one wall carry and you are good to go. <laughs> All right, let's see. Maru against AK. Like you mentioned, the wall could be a factor here. Let's see, the basic from both players. Maru starting it off with a low, checking the legs. Oh, there it is, the fearless warrior launcher here. and. Maru is going to take this to the wall. What is the combo? There is the Tiger, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, again, Crimson Dawn, and he takes it out of the wall. Very much aware is Maru. Yeah, and good conversion as well. Going to push to the other wall, and right now it's AK with a huge life deficit. He has to overcome, but he has a combo. Can he Great. make a comeback here? Weird wall splat right there. Trying to pressure Maru with a full crouch 50-50. Great magic for their 4 1 rather here from AK. And this is going to go to the wall in a straight access. Does not waste any time and uses the rage art before. He might not get the chance to. And AK now with a slight, I think, a pixel worth of advantage against Maru. Okay. Ooh, wow. AK just while standing for there from AK, closing the round. All right, here we go. One round for AK. Starts off with the hop kick, gets punished by the flash punch. Maru pushing here to the wall. But a good launch here from AK. He's feeling good. Drops the combo though, spring kick. Maru, what's for oh breakfast? Boy. All right, he lets AK up now. He's pressuring, pushing AK back to the wall. And oh right boy. So uh, the game continues, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for that quick technical difficulty, but we are back. And with 38 seconds on the clock, here we go. Shaheen's wall splat just catching Maru. Oh, really good conversion here from AK, but pays the prize from a whiff. Yeah, rage drive whiffs though from Maru. The slide from AK. One more hit to do it for either player here. Maru gets hit by the low. AK now up two rounds to none. Let's see, can Maru bounce back? Third round, AK. You know what they say, Chisto, you know, the generic low, it does wonders, especially during crunch time. And here, AK now, again, with a slight life deficiency compared to Maru, pokes-wise, rather. Yeah, just trying to poke at the legs here, trying to open up Maru right now, but it is Maru currently with the life advantage. Hopkick gets punished, good there, by Maru, pushes AK to the wall. Good block as well, and you know, unblockable oh. whip. <laughs> I think that was a little too linear and the damage won't be too much. Oh, never mind. AK again with his signature, signature full combo damage. Here we go. Is this going to go to the wall? Yes, it does. Look at AK now, ladies and gentlemen, on fire, double scorpion to, to end things. Yeah, big damage as well. One more hit to do it here. Oh! Maru able to clutch it out. He's still alive here. <laughs> Two to one now in rounds. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, Maru again has come from the depths of upset. But look at that, AK again with a great, great sidestep, evading that unblockable from Maru. Yeah, the movement here from AK has been drifting. Right now, he is 
at the wall here. And you know, Mario can convert off a lot. Kazumi has a lot of tools at the wall. AK gonna be able to move out of trouble. But a magic far here from Mario will lead to a combo. Drops it at the end though. AK, good duck into the hop kick. Can he convert? Yes! Gonna hit the ender here, push it to the wall. A little too far. Oh, great punishment from Maru. Did not quite optimize on that one because it was a little too far. But both guys just pokes away from winning here. 20 seconds on the clock and everybody is just clenching. Maru still still very much alive and both players not in range yet. Great block and punish by Maru. Got the job here. AK spends oh, the range man. drive. The wall though could save Maru's life here. One more shot would do it. The low once again, Pika, just <laughs> gives AK the victory. What did we tell you, ladies and gentlemen? The generic low. Always. The generic low will be your friend and your opponent. You know, granted the, the, the scenarios that they present and Maru now thinking, oh, of course, very much uh, thought of is Maru. He's going to stick with the comfort pick, but will go to a stage that might favor him a little more this time. Yeah. Being the Forgotten Realm. Forgotten Realm. So the party stage here, guys, of course, we have a lot of floor breaks available here for big damage combos. Let's see. Will this uh, switch on the stage be the key here for Maru, of course? AK currently up 1-0 to zero here in the set. Not to say that the matches weren't close, right? Because uh, Maru, again, very, very Still dangerous close. player. He may, he may be getting the reads here early on in the match and then eventually comes back with a reverse sweep. Let's see if that is the case here again. And there's Shaheen literally demanding the truth out of Kazumi. Here we go. Oh, good block on the slide. Maru's going to be able to convert here. Going to push to the wall. You know, whenever Kazumi is at the wall, she has a lot of tools she can use to end. Here, always reliable. Right now, AK with a life deficit. Maru poking away, trying to pressure. Good flash punch as well, but a counter hit on the get up here from AK. They'll be able to push Maru away. He's feeling good about this. There we go again, okay, but no break on the floor here. AK, I think, is taking his time when it comes to that conversion because Shaheen is also equipped with what he needs to break a floor. And as you said earlier, oh, but the, the pendulum throw was enough. I was going to say that you mentioned earlier Kazumi's locking tools on the wall. That being back to. You know, the, the Rolling Thunder kick as well. Even the Orochi heal, those are really good tools for Kazumi to keep you in check. Yeah, hop kick once again gets punished. You know, Maru has been very on point when it comes to punishing those blocked hop kicks. And right now, once again, AK is at the wall here. No break on the throw again. That was a basic throw as well, worth noting because, you know, ladies and gentlemen, basic throws are easier to escape in this game, but Maru not doing so. And again, the Block there on the hop kick, but the big launch here from AK might mean the round for him, but drops the combo. Another chance. Can oh Maru capitalize? No, AK Never gonna mind. shut the door. <laughs> the 2 3 just paying dividends here in AK. And we still have floors to break, ladies and gentlemen. AK again gambling that hop kick, and Maru now, now with a slight punishment and poke lead. Forget it. <laughs> AK yeah, forget already, that. already has already has a combo lined up, and there it is. All right, AK pushing here, pushing Maru to the wall, trying to close it out, counter hit into the wall splat. Breaks the floor, could this be it, Pika? Can and AK close it out? Almost with a sliver, but ends with a scorpion tail and Maru. Maru swept literally off his feet by AK, who is steamrolling right now. Chisto, I cannot believe my eyes. Maru, wow. Maru, as great a player as he is, AK was, was, I think, more on fire this day. I'd say that the choices were all on AK's favor. He did gamble a lot of, of launchers, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. the Altair, the hop kick, you know? Those were those were kind of risky in AK's side, but at the end of the day, the wall gods, you know, the, yeah. the combos all favored AK, right? Yeah, and like you mentioned, you know, the gamble there on the hop kick, whenever it was blocked, guys, you know, Mario was always on point with his punch. He's able to land the flash punch on that. As we see right here, you know, AK able to clutch this out, I believe, like the wall situations. But yeah, you know, AK tosses a lot more hop kicks. You know, I noticed that he's been using hop kick a lot more compared to that slide which we normally see from mm -hmm. Shaheen. I'd say because uh, the punishment uh, ratio between a slide and a hop kick being blocked, I think of course uh, you, you'd rather take a normal hitting uh, punish of a 10 framer, maybe the mm -hmm. jabs. You know, yeah. you would rather take that than your slide being blocked because if the slide gets blocked, ladies and gentlemen, it leads to a combo. So you can't risk that, right? You cannot yeah. risk that. That's a great adjustment as well from AK. You know, just shows you the level of preparation that they mm -hmm. do whenever they face new opponents here. But man. That set went by super quickly, you know, yes. very quick 2-0. <laughs> uh, it's, it's not always that we see that, ladies and gentlemen. But AK, of course, again, proving that his his mix of offense and defense, and of course, a little bit of mind games here yeah. and there, 
does prove its point right here. And even that throw, right? Just mm -hmm. like that. I mean, Maru's very good with yeah. throw escapes. He's very good with throw breaking, mm. but you saw the two throws at AKUs, <laughs> he just mixed it up really, really nicely. And Maru, I feel like, just wasn't able to react in time to those. And one of them being a generic throw, yeah. right? That's worth noting because I think that closed the round mm -hmm. for AK, right? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you for tuning in. The Nationals, yours truly, Pika, still here in commentary with the Chief. very towering... Very ta towering cheese stone. Fairly like. towering, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Being too humble here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, again, the fun never stops here. Some of us having too much fun. <laughs> I'll say that right now. But speaking of fun, let's see how Do Jin from Laos Auto Group Playbook Esports is going to fare against a serious Suha Execration Prime, a Punisher's Prime, right? And we've seen Prime have a share of fun. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Both on and off of the game. So let's see if this will really mean business because these guys are on the upper part of the rankings right now. Yeah, I believe they're around top four in our rankings yeah, right yeah. now. Just very, very close with the points. So every match will count mm -hmm. for these guys moving forward. But yeah, let's see how Prime is actually prepared because whenever we see Dojin come up to stage, we just have this sort of uncertainty, Pika. What does Dojin want to play? What does he want to pick here? Not only is it the character, but what is the mental plan as well? Oh, yeah. Because Dojin could just stick with a character you have faced before, but play it completely, completely differently. Just uh, one example is Gigas, right? So when he when he brought out the Gigas before, we did not expect that at all, and it actually got the job done. So what is Prime gonna think of it? Is does he have a character as well of his own to co to contradict Dojin's uh, mindset, his ever confusing yet effective mindset? Well, let's see. As we're now gonna see what characters they decide to bring here into the matchup. Of course, Prime has been sticking to the geese so far here in the nationals. Geese Howard is gonna lock that in. So let's see. Dojin <laughs> usually takes his time whenever it comes to picking these characters. You know, I feel like by the end of the nationals, he's gonna be. Ha <laughs> He's gonna have played all of the characters here on the <laughs> roster. You know, uh, safe to say as well, when he plays casuals, you see him, uh, you know, just fiddling around with some characters wow. that we do not expect. But, but, wow. Okay. Chisto, what, are, what, what is going on right now, man? Uh, Dojin's Do playing Bob, you know, like we mentioned, he could be picking a character you've faced before because we've seen Bob before here in the Nationals played by Jules. Yes. But like you mentioned, Dojin can pick the same character but play it with a completely different playstyle. Yes. Wow, and uh, just just looking at this right now, it just baffles me. We're moving as well to Dragon's Nest, ladies and gentlemen. Again, now, one of the smallest stages the in this game, but not to say not dangerous, because characters like Bob, who have incredible wall combo damage, and he doesn't need a meter to do it, can definitely inflict pain in this scenario. Okay, so first match, ladies and gentlemen, between Dojin and Prime. Yeah, both players trying to find the openings, and you see there Dojin just ducking inside Prime, so he's not afraid of those mids coming in. But Prime will land the first hit here, Gonna push to the wall. What's the ender? Gets everything very reliable there. Dojin, 50%. The claw, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, wow. Falls for the second hit of wall standing 2 2 is prime. There's the 4 4 2, the Bob beatdown, as we call it. Great wall carry here from Dojin, but a little too close on the wall. Good punishment from Prime. Oh, attempted another half kick is Dojin. All right, now Prime has the meter. Dojin, though, is in rage. Spends the rage drive for pressure. Prime, gonna get hit by the slide at the end. Can Dojin close oh. out here? Yes, he can. The One round. The cannonball sweep there from Dojin. Ooh. Very gutsy of this kid because that is very punishable, ladies and gentlemen. Quite risky, but Dojin really conditioned him there. Yeah, and like you mentioned, just the play style could be completely different right now. And Dojin is pulling all of these things out of his back pocket. Of course, Prime right now he is 50%. He does have a meter to work with, though. If he can just land one thing, not going to be able to convert off of that though. Dojin with the getup. Now two meters available here for Prime. But Dojin, the pokes are working out so well for him. <laughs> here we go. All Prime checking. Yep. Just checking Dojin. What low is the parry, plan here? Though. But there is the low parry from Dojin and immediately gets two straight well, rounds three. off of, uh, of Prime's geese. And now it is raining. Chisto. Yeah. It's raining. They're going to get wet here on the Dragon's head. But yeah, Dojin. 2-0 up now in rounds. Prime trying to find the opening. Hasn't had the chance to actually spend this meter here on the Geese. Now Dojin's going to push to the wall. Very big damage there on that combo. Just continues knocking down Prime. Prime trying to use the maximum to do something. But right now, he's already in rage. Dojin just dropping wow. away. The burning of the meter of Prime actually did not prove effective this time around because Dojin, again, like a freight train, just went went ape all over Prime there. And that is Bob at his best, I, I would say right now. And Bob, again, one of, the, one of those characters that are so humble who does not necessarily uh, need to rely on stances. 
has really emerged on top. And here, here we go, Prime, again, a character we haven't seen from him in a while, Kazumi Mishima, but not the first time in this entire tournament. So again, there's a reason, ladies and gentlemen, as to why Kazumi is very favored, because her simplicity, her, uh, her, her lack of uh, any gimmick just makes it makes this character very, very efficient. Like, as we said so earlier, Chisto, it's anybody's game and it's any style that can, that can help you win this. Mm -hmm. Let's see, can this character switch from Prime, like you mentioned, will his style on this Kazumi be the key here to tie things up against Dojin? We are heading to Souk. Very small match here. So let's see, 1-0 for Dojin. And a three, uh, I, I believe those were three rounds straight I, from Dojin. So that that is uh, prob probably some mental damage here. But I know that Prime can can most likely compose himself because the Kazumi pick, there's a plan behind this. I'm sure of it, Chisto. All right, let's see here. Prime pushing forward. And this is the range that Kazumi wants to play at, you know, just up close with you, trying to get you with all those folks. Right now, Dojin just jabbing him. What is going on? It is literally a boxing match right now. That would be six jabs total right there from Dojin. Yeah, keep him at that range, you know, just jab over and over. You want to play up close? I can do that too. And right now, Prime bringing out the kicks. Magic Force too far though to convert. And see Dojin, like you mentioned, boxing match. Jab, hook, jab, body, head. What's he going to hit here? There we go again. Here we go. The reigning ones. Oh, there we go. One, two, one plus two. Pulls the trigger now is Dojin with one, two, one plus two. Wow. Wow. One zero now for Dojin. Just purely with jabs. Or, you know, trying to play at that range. But Prime here is feeling good with this combo. Gonna put Dojin in a corner. Dojin, of course, trying to escape. Remember that Bob actually has a very, very good jab range. And I think that rivals Kazumi as well. Oh, geez. Look at this. And Prime now trying to retaliate with jabs of his own. All right, but Dojin has Rage here. Can he use it? Hell Sweep. First of the scene, Rage Drive. What's the mix up here? It's a lot of pressure here. On to Prime. Let's see. One more hit to do it for both of them. Man, Pika, this is really, really close. Oh, Prime and, and with remember, the lows. Dojin has spent his Rage, so he does not have access to it. And Prime makes Dojin pay for that block hop kick. Chisto, wow. And this is Suk again, ladies and gentlemen. If you notice, most of them if not for combos, they end up really close to the wall because the stage is quite long, but at the same time, really short as well. Yeah, very small stage like you mentioned, but right now Prime trying to push Dojin into the wall. Dojin fighting back here, trying to use the jabs once more. Like you mentioned, the jab range from uh, Bob, but right now, he's doing a lot of losses. Just all pokes, no combos at all. What is Gets happening? It's perfect. A perfect. And Dojin is in a hurry here, ladies and gentlemen. Again, you saw what happened. That sequence was all pokes. And there we go. Dojin attempting another hell sweep, but did not pull the trigger. Prime, however, however, hits him with a power crush. Yeah, just gonna relieve a bit of the pressure here. Now, good flash punch there. Knocks Dojin down. About even in life here, but Prime gets the float. Gonna convert into a small combo here. Of course, Kazumi, very reliable here. At the most, stature kick, power crush from Bob, misses. One more hit. Yes, Prime, able to tie us up in rounds. Two rounds apiece now. Oh, wow. Okay, here we go. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you notice, oh, there he is again. Dojin tried to condition Prime with that hell sweep, but to no avail. And here we go, Prime again, ladies and gentlemen, now with half-life advantage. And is Dojin going to come back from here? Because he was very authoritative earlier, but never mind the Crimson Dawn just doing wonders for Prime on the wall. Yeah, big advantage here for Prime, but Dojin, he gets a launch here. Can he capitalize on this? Going to get a bit of damage here. Not going to be able to kill yet, though. Spends Whoa, the rage drive, but gets boy. interrupted there. <laughs> wow, and Prime very much aware of what was coming his way. That rage drive cannonball, and Prime just thinking through. Again, ladies and gentlemen, let's remember, none of these players now are getting three points. So yeah. this is anybody's game. One will go home with two, and another with a consolation one. And here we go. Who is Dojin going to pick here, ladies and gentlemen? Because Prime is locked onto Kazumi after uh, the match he had earlier. And now Dojin has the privilege of closing this should he pick the right character. Again, anybody's game. But is Dojin going to shock us once more? Oh, he might shock us here. He is. You know, at this point, it's really difficult, like you mentioned, to predict what Dojin wants to pick here. Just picking. Mm. You have a guess, Pika? Absolutely. <laughs> <Tell you right. laughs> None of us do. None of us do. Because him picking out Noctis, that already was a shock to me. And we've seen the Armor King. We've yeah. seen the Gigas. We have seen Asuka. Whoa! Oh, wow! We haven't seen this from Dojin. Okay. 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 Well, traditionally, we have an Anna Williams in the form of Haji, right?
Yes. But this time, it is Dojin. It is Dojin who picks the widow, <laughs> Anna Williams, right now, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. You know, what if Dojin just has a notebook where, okay, Haji plays this, Jules plays this. Why not bring it out the <laughs> next day? I, I won't be so surprised <laughs> if he uses everybody's character here. Yeah. Right? Everybody, he brought out his Lars already, by the way. Yeah. So now I think he has the freedom to, you know, express himself in a completely Come different character. Game. That being Anna Williams right now, Chisto. And we are moving in Use to Twilight Conflict. Again, a stage that's huge downstairs and has a breakable balcony. All right, let's see here. Will the Ana work out here for Dojin? Of course, Prime stuck on that Kazumi like we mentioned. And earlier, we were talking about Dojin and his playstyle. It could be a similar character that these players have faced before, but Dojin on that character is a very different type of beast. And right now, he's cornering Prime, goes downstairs. What's the combo? Here we go. Big There's damage. And a blonde bomb, as we call it. And that was enough to break the, the, the balcony right there, Chisto. And Dojin not wasting time. He wanted that combo. And because of that, he closes his first round easy. Yeah, and you see here, Prime still trying to adjust to the matchup, no? Trying to find oh. that opening here against Dojin. Oh, there it is. Guaranteed slap from Chaos Judgment. And look at this damage already with just 10 seconds spent. Dojin is looking really confident here against Prime's Kazumi. Yeah, and that stance, you know, like you mentioned, the Chaos Judgment here from Ana is very threatening right now. And Prime just eating all of these folks. Finally put in rage here. Can he make use of it? Gets a hot kick. Can he capitalize? Gonna get a big combo here. No, not gonna be able to end it. Prime was a little skeptical in his wall combo there and the crushing knee of Kazumi that up forward for that hop knee, ladies and gentlemen. That is very dangerous for Anna because most of her moves revolve around her crouch game. So I think Prime was anticipating that as well. Yeah, and all of a sudden here, Pika, we're already on match point. Set point here yes. for LTE Dojin. Can Prime stay alive here? He's just eating a lot of these folks. The strings, the jabs, everything from Dojin is landing right now. He's getting through the defense of Prime. It's so close. He's Anna all the way to the wall. just harassed. Harassing, harassing the life out of Kazumi Mishima right now. And Prime, with ha he has the red dress here, ladies and gentlemen. Do not count him out just yet. There it happens. Go. The rage drive. Oh, and that is a bad trade here in favor of Dojin. Wow. wow. Anna Williams. Anna Williams, ladies and gentlemen. Again, another Chisto, another uncanny pick from Dojin. And it paid off really well. Anna Williams. Yeah, and like you mentioned, Pika, another un uncanny pick there from Dojin. You know, at this point, I'm expecting that we're going to see more yes. as we go on here in the Nationals. But man, what a great set from both of these players, really. You know, after dropping the first match mm -hmm. there on that Geese, Prime was able to make the adjustments there on his Kazumi, able to get the read on what the Bob wanted to do and was mm. able to pick up a point of his own. But yeah, yes. like you mentioned before that set ended, you know, one of them will go home with two points, one of them with one point. And for this case, it is going to be Dojin going home with the more points. Wow, um, again, I cannot move on from that Anna pick I'm telling you right now. <laughs> because Kazumi Mishima, we've seen that character a lot of times in this tournament. You know, a lot of people have used it. But with Anna, only one guy, uh, uh, ex excluding today, mm -hmm. was using Anna Williams. It was just uh, uh, Haji from Happy Feet Emperors. Yep. Now, Dojin, Laos Autogroup Playbook Esports as Dojin, just brings him out. We've seen the bear. <laughs> you know, we've, we've seen, seen the, the bear as well. Yeah, the Gigas. The Armor King as well. But the Anna was just really, really surprising. Even the Bob, I would say. Mm -hmm. Right? The Bob pick. It is the first time we've seen him do this, right? Yeah. And like we mentioned earlier, we are expecting to see more of these uncanny picks here. <laughs> these new picks come out from Dojin. So far, he has played the most characters out of everyone here in the National. I think it's very safe to say yes. that right now, Pika. But yeah, going back here, we're seeing the highlights of our match right now. And you know, Prime was able to have a very good showing on his Kazumi. But I feel like once the third match arrived, you know, it just took him a bit of time to adjust to the Ana pick. Because like you mentioned, only Haji has brought out the Ana. So not many people have that much um, info on what the character can do. Right, and more so with a style like Dojin. Yeah. That, that's very unpredictable, uh, very, very loose. You know, there's confidence in it, if, if, if I could say so myself. Because the harassment was real, like I said. The pressure, ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the flow of offense from Dojin was really uh, imposing. It was it was very commanding, rather, you know. And Prime, like, just just like that. Look at look at the life difference mm -hmm. in this in this particular clip right here. And Dojin was was sitting pretty. Of course, Prime really did do what he can to get close yeah. to that offense. But again, it's Anna Williams we're talking about. And this was the bad trade that cost Prime that match because Kazumi's rage drive, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, blue spark uh, attack that Kazumi uh, thrown out, despite hitting the wall, she is not in, in positive frames. <laughs> yeah. 
she doesn't have the momentum. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. But before we move on with our matches here at the Nationals, we're going to have to go on for a short break. We have been your casters for this one. I'm Chisto. With me is Pika. Pika. Right here. Mm -hmm. So please, ladies and gentlemen, don't go away. The Nationals will be right back. And we are back live right here at Eastwood, Quezon City for the Nationals. And it is a great evening that we've been having today. We're already more than halfway through day six. And man, oh man, these games, these games. Of course, I'm your courtside reporter, Theo Tacuno Rodriguez. And joining me today is none other than our boy here, Dojin. Dojin, how are you doing today? I'm good, sir. Thank you. Great to hear. So I just got to ask because, first of all, this is my first time actually interviewing you for courtside and I just want to say thank you because these past years you've been doing phenomenal for the esports scene and just having you here at the nationals is pretty darn good but I'm very curious because you've been joining a lot of tournaments both local and international so what's the biggest difference in terms of practice for you from those past tournaments going into the nationals uh, the difference is my training routine this time for the nationals is more on hands-on and uh, three times better in terms of uh, uh, the duration of the practice, the quality, 
and uh, it's being more specific on different characters. And uh, as part of that is uh, getting a bit of rest. Uh, you should be well rested before competing, especially here at the Nationals. And uh, breakfast, of course, and uh, always pray to God and just continue to uh, make uh, consistency in terms of practicing. You see, guys, that is added value right there. Not only do we find out about his practice, but also some pretty good tips if ever you want to be competing against this guy at the Nationals, hopefully in the future. I know a lot of you are kind of dreaming, but one last thing, because I brought this up to AK last time. I've talked to a number of people, not just locally, but even when I was in Thailand, people are just praising you across Southeast Asia. Like, oh, wow, Dojin's a great player. We're so happy to have him in Southeast Asia. So do you have a message, by the way, or maybe a shout out to maybe some sponsors, partners, or everybody that's been supporting you throughout your journey in the past tournaments, even right up here to the Nationals? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Lowe's Auto Group Playbook Esports Eagles. I, uh, I'm really uh, thankful for your support. And I am actually representing them here at the Nationals. And of course, shout outs to my fans, uh, both local and international. Thank you for your, the support. And of course, I would like to give my shout outs to my family, my mom, my dad, uh, every, each and every one of my friends down south and the MLE. I'm really thankful. Thank you so much, Dojin, and we will definitely continue to support you here at the Nationals. So, with that said, guys, be sure to watch the broadcast of the Nationals on Pay TV at One Sports and EGG Network via Signal TV and on Free TV at Five Plus via ESPN. And also, the Nationals would also like to thank PayMaya, our official digital payments partner. And for more updates on the Nationals, be sure to check us out Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, slash PH Nationals. So, we got you guys updated for everything that has been happening here within the Tekken 7 community. So, with all said and done, we are down to our last three games. Getting chills right now, even more so with lots of curiosity. What the points are going to look like towards the end of day six. So in order to determine that, we'll just have to find out with how the games unfold as we go along. So you know what, casters, let's get it on. Thank you so much, Articuno. Wow. Okay, so again, what, what a very enlightening uh, interview with Dojin right there from yep. LPE, right? Because uh, we do have a lot of people watching. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the Nationals, ladies and gentlemen. Yours truly, Pika, still here in commentary with the very towering. Chisto. And yeah, we just heard from Dojin. Like you mentioned, you know, talking a bit about his new training routine. Mm -hmm. And you have to train really hard. If you want to play that many characters yes. in a competition, you're going to need to know the ins and outs of each and every one of them. But yeah, so far, that's been working out very well for Dojin. Well, lab time-wise, ladies and gentlemen, Dojin has put on the work, and I'd say it paid off with, with Anna Williams being the latest addition to his surprises here at the Nationals. Wow. So, Chisto, again, uh, we do have a lot in store uh, when it comes to matches. Uh, sure, uh, Articuno said we have three more sets to go, right? Three more to, to watch out for, but not to say they're not the least. We have a featured match coming up, Chisto. Wow. Could you tell them more about it? All right. So, our featured match, like you mentioned, coming up, it will be Happy Feet M. Emperor's Ray against Suho Execration Punisher's J Disaster. Wow, okay, so as his, he signals his inner strength, ladies and gentlemen, we know that J Disaster has been crawling up. And I exaggerate that not, ladies and gentlemen, he has been inching forward uh, to get away from the bottom spot of our Nationals uh, group stage right here. And Ray, of course, has been uh, enlightening us with a lot of his good performances, some, a, a little few two O's here and there, you yep. know what I mean? And uh, again, again, this is something to look forward to, ladies and gentlemen. Show us some love as well of the characters, you know, that you wanted to see here. And Dojin will listen. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. you know, the rest will listen too <laughs> if, if there are some characters that you're, look for, you're looking forward to. Yeah, and of course, if you sh get the character that you want to see in the Nationals, maybe you could pick a few things up here from watching mm -hmm. the pros do it. You know, they are the best of the best here. So one of the things you mm -hmm. couldn't do, you may, may see come out from them. But yeah, like we mentioned, going back here, it, it is our featured matchup of the evening right now. Happy Feet Emperor's Ray facing off against Suho Execration Punisher's J Disaster. Okay, so the contemplation and the meditation may have paid off here for Jay Disaster, ladies and gentlemen, because we have seen his Eddie Gordo pick. More so, his very, very 
very fruitful Miguel Caballero Rojo pick, ladies and gentlemen. And Jay Disaster has been getting wins as well with that character. So Chisto, wow, I, I, I wonder which one he'll go first with this time. It seems like he is going to go first here for the Eddie pick. And you know, the way, oh. he does, the way that he plays this Eddie, you know, it's just playing at his own pace, trying to land these pokes. I'm going to back off, of course. Eddie has one of the best backdashes in the game. So once he makes use of that great movement, he can really just set the pace and just control the match all throughout. But let's see what Ray wants to pull out here against that matchup, knowing that Jay Disaster might be playing his Eddie. Talk about compact, and that is what Jay Disaster did. You know, he does go for that occasional negativa, aka relaxed stance once in a while. But I think the wins really come from the patience. And as we dubbed him before, he is definitely Time Lord in this tournament because he has gone quite the distance just with time ops, my friend. So that that right now is probably a determining factor whether Jay Disaster can advance cleanly in this part of the tournament. All right, but we saw Jay Disaster get his Eddie signature pick right now, but Ray is on a signature pick of his own, something he's very, very comfortable on. The Master Raven. Mm -hmm. So this should be an interesting matchup, Pika. What can you tell us about this one? Okay. Uh, realistically speaking, uh, the damage, uh, combo damage, of course, goes to Master Raven here, oh, you yeah. know, because uh, she is insane when it gets to a w uh, when it gets to a wall. She can do more than half. Granted, the right launcher connects, but Eddie, of course, the problem for Master Raven is how to get Eddie off of his feet. All right, let's see. Can Ray get Jay Disaster off of his feet right now? Speaking of feet, Jay Disaster just kicking Ray over and over, trying to check the legs here, all with those pokes. He's gonna back away here. Oh boy. Here we go, the down fourth, he connecting only the second hit, and Jay Disaster is still up on health. All oh, right. never mind. The shadow slice here from, from Ray just connecting, hitting its mark. You know, one big hit here, Pika, could do it for any of them, really, just trying to find the openings, but right now it's all just facing, trying to get that range and trying to warm up here. About even in health. Slight advantage here to Jay Disaster. Ray is in rage. Can he make use of this? Jay Disaster backing off here. Like you mentioned, the Time Lord gets the float. Wow. And Jay Disaster, I think, with an inadvertent yet useful, useful pickup there with uh, with Happy Feet Ray. Okay, here we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is Devil's Pit. It means that a potential final round here will always eliminate the walls off of this stage. All right, but a low parry here from Ray will lead into a combo. And like you mentioned, the combo damage is just huge right now for Master Raven. Jay Disaster trying to fight back. Trying to land the pokes here up against Ray, of course. Trying to space his time away as well. Trying to be as patient as possible here. Finding the openings against Jay Disaster. And see the pokes here. He's evened out the life. There we go. But never mind. Jay Disaster now still looking pretty without any rage on. But that could be Ray's advantage right now. Because one launch from Master Raven. Oh, and he burns it right away here. And Jay Disaster now has life to spare. Oh, and here, here comes Ray with an attack. But never mind. Jay Disaster just barraging with 15 seconds left. Yeah, and like you mentioned, Pico, when we go to the final round here in Devil's Pit, we go to the infinite stage. And right now, Jay Disasa is already ahead with two rounds. And now he has even more space to maneuver. Right now, though, he's in the middle of this big combo. Oh, wow. Ray. There we go, that, that hook to a, to a blind ghost here and Rage. Jay Disaster has Rage, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, never mind. The backswing blow here from Ray doing its job. And again, despite Ray winning one round, there will be no more walls in this stage, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's see. Jay Disaster, this is where he absolutely shines. You know, no walls is trying to find the cracks in your defense. And he's definitely just going to run away with this, ladies and gentlemen. Jay Disaster, but now he has to come up with damage. Otherwise, Ray is going to take this round again. Yeah, 40 seconds still on the clock. Jay Disaster going to get a few hits there. Ray, about 60% now on life, trying to fight a launch, trying to get that big combo damage in. But Jay Disaster is not allowing Ray to crack his defense right now. Ray, just outside of Ray. One oh! more hit would do it, but the big launch there from Jay Disaster Whoa. would mean the match. A massive, massive mirage there from Jay Disaster. Okay, we jinxed it, I would say, that Jay Disaster was going to move to Miguel, but he did not need to for this one because he is sticking with Miguel because of that one win. He secures himself a, a sure point right now, Chisto. So now, I think Ray, again, as he did earlier today, he is moving to Mishima Dojo. A, a fairly small stage, but it could favor, favor Ray entirely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this has been something, like you mentioned, that Ray wants to do whenever he goes into stage select. He usually opts for Mishima Dojo. Like you mentioned, Raven has great combo damage and great wall damage as well in the proper situation. So a very 
a small stage, I should say, here in the Mishima Dojo should favor him if he does get the right launches. Okay, now Jade is asked again, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie, one of those characters, will say it right now. He has combos that might get really iffy. You know, along the way, they might break or they might they might drop or they could look really different simply because Eddie was engineered that way. And here we go, Ray with a huge life lead, 15 seconds on the clock. Uh, left, uh, still spent here, ladies and gentlemen. 40 seconds and Ray, wow, with one round of his own. Yeah, and you see how quick that was, Pika. You know, just the adjustment here. The fact that Jade is has, has less room to maneuver. Ray just seems to be in his huge comfort zone. Oh. And as I say, that the big launch will lead to the big combo damage. Like, we're talking about it. Man, oh. a huge combo down on Jade Zasta. He's in rage. What is the mix-up here? And Ray, wow, with a down forward on the body blow here, proves useful for Ray. And now, compared to a while ago, he's looking a lot better with two rounds straight against Jay Disaster. What is the combo here? Jay Disaster tries to carry to the wall. Again, as we were saying earlier, the combos could be quite iffy here for Eddie. Yeah, but speaking of combos, it's right now Ray hitting one onto Jay Disaster. He's feeling pretty good about this one. All of the momentum in the match currently on his side. Jay Disaster jabs away, trying to push Ray back. Oh boy, here we go. There's the crouch dash here from Ray. I think he's trying to go 50-50 here. Jay Disaster, remember, Raven does have the right to do it, but F2-3, the second hit connecting. Oh, wow. wow. Natural combo right there. And again, here we're back in the situation, Chisto. No one goes home with three. It is now one all, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Feet Emperor's Ray and Suha Execution Punisher's Jay Disaster. Yeah, and man, you know, how quickly did Ray turn that set around? You know, just switching stages, knowing that this is his comfort zone. Gets a no round round over Jay Disaster. Oh, and here we go. As we mentioned it, ladies and gentlemen, we, we dare not to jinx it again, but here is Miguel Caballero Rojo for Jay Disaster. Okay, are we going to see another another sleuth of comebacks? That That's what he's been doing here, Chisto. You know, his Miguel has been proving itself effective even in the toughest situation. So oh. let's see if the basic game of Miguel can outmatch Master Raven. Oh, yeah, like you mentioned, Jay Disaster, super clutch right now. Whenever he does have this Miguel, so let's see who gets the more points here. Currently tied up in the set. Will the character switch here work out for Jay Disaster? Let's see. Both Again, players. this is one to one right now here, Chisto, and these guys want that to, to to land on their scoreboard. Here we go, but never mind the Shinobi Cyclone trading with Jay Disaster. Here we go. Yeah, and you know, Jay Disaster, he wants to run up here, wants to play up close, stand up against Jay. He wants to close the distance, but the power crush. We'll even out the life here. All right. Let's see who gets to find the momentum here. Oh, what a hop kick. Oh, here we go. And what is Jay Disaster going to close the round with here? And he, he opts for the traditional wall combo. And again, simple yet effective. Jay Disaster now with one round. And this is Abandoned Temple, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the oddest shaped stage we have in the game. Yeah, and right now, Jay Disaster is chopping away. <laughs> chopping away at the legs of Ray. Another kick. Do it again. One more. Great block and great punish here from Ray. Tries to follow it up with a forward three. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The back swing. And what a block from Jay Disaster. Now one round away from running away with his 2 1. Yeah, and all of a sudden, you get three rounds on me. Jay Disaster is on match point right now, trying to get into that rage against him. But another big hop kick there from Jay Disaster is going to be in huge damage here against Ray. Oh, here we go. And that, what a great doctor from Jay Disaster. Called that mix-up right down the wire. And here we are. What is Ray's mix-up here? Oh, a little too far on the wall, but I think the plan was there that he was going to go for a wall combo. Here we are. 35 seconds on the clock. And Jay Disaster has a little bit, a little bit of catching up to do yeah. towards Ray. And this is a great position now for Ray. He just left Jay Disaster out of rage. So there's no rage art, no rage drive available for Jay Disaster. He has to come in here. He is on a life de deficit. 20 seconds. See okay, wait, again, the hatchet kick of Miguel. Oh, <laughs> just what's going to happen up. here? Oh, Big man. low there, Pika. And just like, oh, doesn't close it out, though. Finally Back does. three and Jay Disaster okay. with a 2-1 against Happy Feet Emperor's Ray. Congratulations. And Jay Disaster, well placed. Back three over there. Crazy, crazy set there, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Oh. Ooh, man. So Jay Disaster Pika will be able to get the victory here in our featured matchup of the evening. But man, very close set as well with that 2-1.
Okay, I mean, safe to say right now that J Disasters Miguel is looking really, really sharp. You know, uh, the, the, the Eddie before was the catalyst. You know, he was the one who, who brought J Disaster a bit up, you know, a, yep. a bit higher in the scoreboard. But now it looks like Miguel right here, my man, is, is doing the job for him. And congratulations again, J Disaster from Suha Execration Punishers, who just gave us one heck of a show and please let's 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 show them what what went on yeah and you see here you know jay disaster has been opening a lot with his eddie where he wants to play this play style where he just controls the pace backs off just pokes you over and over just very slow in a sense but when it comes to him playing to miguel it's a much different mm -hmm. pace compared to the eddie because miguel's play style generally you want to get up close yes you want to be in your opponent's face and you see the adjustment there it takes some of his opponents time to adjust to the matchup more so that there's a little bit of aggression a little bit more mm -hmm. toward uh, with miguel than he does with eddie because again eddie is again not a conventional second character she doesn't he doesn't play so much like kazumi or bob or Jin or those characters he is very stance heavy however miguel can choose between both right he can choose whether to stay in savage stance or no stance at all and I think that's what g gave Jay Disaster the win. Yeah, and once again, guys, congratulations here for Jay Disaster picking up our victory here in our featured match of the evening, like we mentioned. But man, all right, <laughs> so we do have a few more, a couple more matches. Yes. A couple more sets, guys, actually, for you tonight. And the next one should be very interesting here. It is STIE Olympians Don Argus. Facing off against Signal Ultra Warriors Machine Head. And again, this is this is interesting on its own. Because uh, because th these guys are actually users of non-traditional second characters, just uh, just like I said earlier. Because Don Argus is an Elisa user who also has a pocket Hihachi. Machine Head, on the other hand, is a Geese user. But maybe you know, for whatever it's worth, what if he brings out? The Shaheen again, because we've seen that before, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what is going to go down. Again, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. The Nationals still here is Pika joined by. Jeez, though. And yeah, like Pika mentioned here, Machine Head has been sticking to that geese, but could he pull out the Shaheen? Do we get to see the traditional Tekken characters, like you <laughs> mentioned? Or do we get to count who has more meter? Who gets <laughs> to spend the meter on those very big moves right now? So let's see. We are going to head into character select okay so real enough just just like that you know chisto these guys will will farm for those meters right now the gauge against the lemonade glass so <laughs> that is something that that is something that we are looking forward to because either one could just inflict crazy crazy damage with those bars filled oh yeah and of course both of these players as well pika have great execution to go <laughs> with that big damage you need to have that really nice execution if you want to go for those big damage combos mm -hmm. on these meter characters. And right now, this is the moment we've all been waiting for, guys. We are already here in character select. What does Don Argus decide to pull out? We're going traditional Tekken Pika. It's oh, never mind, my friend. We are seeing Mishima action right now with Hayachi. Mishima, literally a Mishima right here, ladies and gentlemen, against Geese. Wow, of course, no doubt about it that uh, Machine Head is really going to go for the comfort pick. Mr. Howard himself, and we've seen the game plan, ladies and gentlemen. Random stage at first, but should Machine Head lose this one, Howard he is does dead. get home court advantage. But right now, it's anybody's game to get the first win here at Dragon's Nest. All right, so traditional Tekken here for Don Argus. Not so quite. On the side the here machine of Machine Head, he's gonna go with the Geese. Round Man, that's a badass four. intro whenever Geese Fight. is up against those Mishimas. But yeah, here we go. Who gets to find the first big hit here? Oh, here we go. There's, there, there are the Street Sharks, the Land Sharks as we call them, the Ripukins. And nobody nobody has gone significantly damaging yet, but there, there it is. <laughs> I stand corrected. Here we go. This is gonna go to the wall. Chisto, what is the combo? Yeah, very reliable combo here. Already 50% now on Don Argus. Machine Head continuing his pressure. Wow, here we go with 35 seconds on the clock. And Don Argus in a little bit of trouble, but just inches away from Rage. And oh, Don Argus, I think, tried to go for that Omen Thunder God. Fest. There we go again. Flying Plank from <laughs> Machine Head's Geese. All right, Don Argus is in Rage right now. He is pushing Machine Head to the wall. Another wall run there. Hell Axel. Great 1-1-2 one, one, there from Don Argus. Again, a machine head. Oh, again, a fuzzy guard. A very quick flash duck there. 10 seconds left, though. Big electric. Could this mean a lot here for Don Argus? Trying to get a huge combo. Get a stomp there on the floor. 
gets the mid hit there Insane onto Machine. Insane crouch dash three from Don Argus. Well placed because Machine Head did go for a low right after getting up. Great block here. And there's that overhead claw from, from Machine Head. All right, Don Argus has the lead here in the set so far. Trying to pressure Machine Head here onto the wall. And I think one of the things that Heihachi can excel at is that pressure at the wall, but Machine Head has done a great job of keeping this in the middle. Does have the meter, spends it right now. The blue lemonade is coming out, pushes to the wall. What's the ender? No, misses it. Not quite. Here we go. And oh, the mix up goes for a mid, is, is Machine Head, and Don Argus is falling for that one. Not, let's not forget that the reminder is there at the bottom of Giza's side that is the lemonade glass. And great block here from Machine Head. What is the combo? Here we are. A little too far in the wall, I'd miss it through. No, it was really a little too far here. Oh, what a reversal here from Don Argus. All right, about 50% here on both characters. One launch could do it for either of them. Of course, keep note of the meter here on Machine Head. One hit has a lot to spend here. Could get a big combo onto Don Argus. Oh my god, what's going to happen here? Ooh. There it is, Pika. There is the hit we were talking <laughs> about. Machine Head. Now up two rounds to one. We've said it before over and over in Philippine second. The moment that Geese lands even one on that meter, he is as good as any character with the rage drive. So here it is. He's already equipped with one. Is he going to grind for a second meter here? Machine head. And it's worth noting, this is only the first match of their set, Gisto. All right. But the big counter hit there from Machine Head will be able to push Don Argus to the wall. Misses the ender, though, but the resplat not able to find any more damage after that. Don Argus trying to reposition. He is in rage right now. Can he capitalize with it? Error for error here, Chisto, but these guys are not letting that go just yet. But Machine Head, again, with a commanding down forward one, ending that first match. Okay, wow. I'm, I'm curious, you know, I think something big is coming. I can feel it right now, Chisto. Mm. <laughs> I'm hearing characters. Are we in character select? Oh, we're in stage, stage select. And now moving to a stage Ooh. without any walls. I think uh, Don Argus recognizes that dread of a wall, especially with a, a geese with meter. So given that advantage, he is going for Infinite Azure 2, ladies and gentlemen, a map with no walls. All right, but you know, speaking of no walls, I feel like some of the other geese players, you know, once they get an advantage in a wallless stage, they can just keep you away with those Rapukans. So yes. let's see, that is also something that we could see here. Of course, Don Argus, let's see, will this adjustment pay off for him or will Machine Head capitalize on this? Electric gets stuck, Machine Head gets the first hit there, but another big pick up there by Don Argus, gonna get the screw. Oh, caught with his back turn is Machine Head. Great low parry here from Don Argus, looking a lot stronger in this match than a while ago. And he already is up by half health here. And 40 seconds left on the clock. These guys, what an overhead club from Machine Head. But to no dice, there's the electric again. She's doing it. It's raining lightning here today. All right. Let's see Don Argus Hell Axel trying to push Machine Head back here. All right, 50% on Machine Head. What's going to happen here, Peter? You know, it's so tense right now. One hit to do it for either player here, really. But right now, the meter has been built up here from Machine Head. That's all he needs. Spends it. Finally gets a blue lemonade out. And the mix up there with the low. Just to, just to remind everybody, that is not a natural combo, ladies and gentlemen. It just so happened that Machine Head went for a mix-up between a low combo starter and a mid combo starter. In this case, it was a low. Don Argus gets drawn on that one, and that gave Machine Head that round. All right, but the anti air there from Don Argus gets the electric once Machine Head jumped up. 50% now on Machine Head. Gets the throw here onto Don Argus. They switch sides. Rupukin trying to create some distance here. Trying to... Find the opening here against Don Argus, and Don Argus, does he go in here? I am more than sure, Chisto, that these guys are also holding their breath a little bit because this is too close to call. They haven't really, uh, you know, strayed off of each other's health bars. They've always been close. And what is the mix-up here? Machine Head runs with a Rapukin. There it is. A meteor shower right there called the, <laughs> the Shippuken. And Machine Head now trying to close this immediately with two rounds straight. Yeah, and right now he is on match point. Like you mentioned, Pika, can Don Argus find the opening? He hasn't been able to crack the defense of Machine Head, not able to find those big launchers. I feel like Don Argus is just trying crack open Machine Head right now. Oh, there we go. One talk. That great punch parry there from the right Jin stands. And Don Argus still, still very much alive in this. We have seen him in a situation like this before. And he could turn things around. Remember that Hihachi Mishima does deal great insane damage. So here we are. 28 seconds on the clock. Machine Head now 
now slightly behind on health. And let's see if Don Argus has something in mind to, as you mentioned, you know, crack open the armor that is Beast Howard. Yeah, right now, though, Machine Head is enraged. Don Argus, very close to getting a round of his own, closes it out with a very chunky load there. Don Argus <laughs> finally on the board, but. Let's see here, Machine Head has, does have that one meter. Can he make use of it here, Pika? Big electric, they trade. Misses the follow-up though. Don Argus trying to go for a big combo, but right now, still gonna find a combo board. Goes for Oki, of course. Forward for two from Hiachi, lands grounded. And that was a guaranteed hit from that combo as well. Don Argus adjusting himself to make it so that that combo is inescapable. Now Machine Head with Rage and one stick of butter right here with 35 seconds on the clock could change the tides entirely. And there he is, literally running away is Don Argus. Two now on the meter here. For Machine Head, this is it. Chisto, is this gonna be, is this gonna be the momentum that Machine Head needs? Oh, never mind, he runs away. And another round from Don Argus. Yeah, another big low there from Don Argus closes out the round. Now two rounds apiece for both of these players, Pika. Let's see, can Don Argus tie up this set? He just needs one more round. The lows have been working out so far, but Machine Head gonna be able to find a small go. Big block into the electric. This is gonna be big damage for Don Argus. Gets everything now, Machine Head. More than 70 damage right there from, from Don Argus. And the Crouch Dash 3 again. That is one of Hayachi's best moves, safe to say. And Machine Head now a little bit, a little bit behind, but still, still in this, very much alive. Yeah, he's very close to getting that meter there. Finally has one, that gets that one hit into the max mode. But Don Argus, one more mix-up for either player could do it. It is Don Argus with the life advantage. What's gonna happen here, Pika? It's so close, 19 oh seconds! Oh, a single Ripuken hitting. Now with the Hell Axel. Oh, Ooh. and the second hit. Wow, Machine Head letting go of the lever with that block. First hit of a Hell Axel. Wow. Man. Unbelievable. Very clutch there by Don Argus. Of course, like you mentioned, letting go of the lever. You need to be holding back in order to block that second hit. So you called this earlier, Pika. <laughs> Whenever Machine Head drops a match, usually we go over to Howard Estate. Get to see that really nice. Intro of Geese Howard and of course the breakable wall. So home court advantage right now for Geese Howard. For those of you who may be unaware, ladies and gentlemen, Howard Estate does have three breakable walls and one balcony break that leads you to a huge stage downstairs with all the Sakuras in here. So Chisto, what is the game plan here for Don Argus? He is, he is tying things up here with one match apiece. Again, these guys are not letting the other go with three points. So neither one. Neither one are getting three, so it's just a matter of who will get the higher point here. Okay, this is the intro. This is the intro we're talking about here, Jesus. Yeah, we need to appreciate this intro every time it pops up. It's just so good. It's just so good, Pika. Okay, here we go. So again, very quadrangular is this stage, but who gets to break the walls more? Let's find out, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, early crouch dash three plus frames here from Don Argus. Yeah, and you know, Don Argus has been getting a lot of mileage from that move, the crouch dash three, like you mentioned, just continuing the pressure here onto Machine Head. Doesn't break the throw though, they're gonna switch sides here. Right now, Don Argus is in a bit of a corner here. Machine Head trying to continue the pressure, but they switch sides, all right? Very combo. smart and very good block there from Don Argus. 35 seconds left on the clock. Again, there's the Hell Axel again. And great throw escape from Machine Head. Smart of Don Argus to switch positions while standing one here, Chisto. And Don Argus Ooh, showcasing, showcasing his execution. Yeah, and right now the execution, will it be for nothing though? As Machine Head, he's looking to close out this first round. Stand up! Gets the first round, Machine Head on the board. Has momentum here in the set. And without the need to use one meter is Machine Head. He's, still, he's keeping it for that perfect, perfect moment, Chisto. And still not pulling the trigger on that one. And it runs right into a huge electric. Don Argus dropping that though, very crucial. Here we go, back, back, one plus two. It is not unblockable, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, just adds a lot of pressure here and right now. Don Argus about to close out, about to tie us up in rounds. Machine Head, though, does have those two meters. Runs away, puts himself in a corner, though. Can Machine Head find that one hit? And just as I mentioned it, gets the hit there on the wall. Good adjustment. Gonna get even more damage. Oh, we are seeing a deadly rave here. Is this enough? Yes, it is. Wow. And picture perfect combo there from Machine Head with a with a Shippuken to re-splat Hihachi on the wall. And great block here from, from uh, Machine Head. All right, Machine Head now on set point. Still has one meter. Remember, he only needed to spend one to close out that previous round. And right now, he is pushing Don Argus to the wall. Going to be able to break it. Yes, gets the screw. Does he push to the next one? Yes, has amazing wall, oh Gary. Oh, boy. 
combo oh, video? Oh, that is unfortunate for, for Machine Head. The Jaken out right there was not enough to actually break that wall. And Machine Head now on the verge of taking his third round and his second win. Yeah, but Don Argus is in rage right now. Checks him with the low. Washi. Let's see. Don Argus though, with a huge sidestep there will be able to wow. close <laughs> it out. Wow. Head. Okay, the glasses never came off and Machine Head just did exceptional, exceptional work right there. Okay, always a treat. I'll tell you right now, it's always, always eye candy to see what Machine Head does in Howard Estate. You saw that. That was two walls to, his, to himself. Yeah, two walls to himself. And <laughs> even before that, you know, like you mentioned, the perfect execution on that combo in the previous round. Man, I want to see that again in our highlights. It's going right to be here. I'm so sure. For sure it is going to be here. But yeah, you know, this was still a very closely contested set between both of these players. You know, Don Argus was pulling out some of those um, very unconventional tech that we don't normally see on the Ihachi. Mm -hmm. We don't normally see those crouch dash, dash threes, threes yeah. for pressure. And he did get a lot of mileage. On um, from that move, more so with the perfect uh, omens, right? Oh the yeah, the, the the OTGF, ladies and gentlemen, or the Omen Thunder God Fist, which is pretty difficult to do if you're not used to that motion. So Don Argus again, he did not let Machine Head get away with, just like that with with uh, just one or two wins straight. And the hell, Axel, very odd. And is this gonna be it? This is it, man. Look at that picture, perfect. Shippuken all the way to a Rage Art. And ladies and gentlemen, that Rage Art with a lot of hits, you don't let go of the stick. You have to do something to make that connect. There are buttons to press. Yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> buttons to press. Like you mentioned, we cannot stress how hard it is to execute all of those, that full combo, that entire yes. combo right there. And man, we talked about this at the start of the match. Both of these players have amazing execution, Pika. But in the end, it will be... Machine Head picking up those two points, but don't worry, Fardon Argus was able to get that one match, so he is going to go home with that one point. But yeah, we are going to head into our next and final match of the evening. It's going to be Bren E Pro Mounts facing off against PLDT Smart Omega Jewels. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you so much for tuning in. The Nationals still, still here despite the last match, not being the least. Casting is still Pika, joined by the very towering Chisto. And yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's going to continue as the Nationals go on. Oh, Whenever okay. I'm with another caster, they're always going to talk about how tall I can be. But yeah. He's in an apple box right now. <laughs> Anyway. I'm actually standing on something under here, but yeah. Just, just, yep, yep. <laughs> Focusing on the next match though, guys, like we mentioned earlier, it's going to be Mouts facing off against Jules. Hmm. Okay, again, character specialist Mouts is oh, a yeah. Nino Williams, fully-fledged Nino Williams. You know, we, uh, we have said it before, and he himself justified that Nina is the character he grew to love ever since. Now, Jules, on the other hand, has some characters that he intends to bring out. You know, we've seen it. There's a Hihachi, there's a Claudio, a Bob, and of course, signature Jin Kazama. What is the plan here? I don't know, but let's see which character is Jules comfortable with facing off against that Nina. Because, you know, you're talking about uh, players such as Doji, you have a plethora of characters, but then you have Mouts. Mouts is literally the most loyal guy here to his character. I believe he hasn't switched away from Nina the entirety of the Nationals. But yeah, let's see, like you mentioned, Jules does have a, a bunch of characters as well available to him. Let's see what he wants to pull out here against the Nina. Of course, Jules doing a shout out there to his sponsors, <laughs> PLDD Smart Omega, just representing with his jersey. Yeah, the same manner, of course, uh, as, as happy and as uh, enthusiastic, you know, as bubbly as Mouts is, he means business right now. So let's see what the plan is here for both these players. Again, I cannot stress it enough. This is very crucial being the last match of the day. And those points are really, really of the utmost paramount because three, you're going for that three, not two, not one, three. That's what you want right now. All right, Nina Williams. It is what we expected here to come out <laughs> from Mouth, but Jin Kazama, the character that Jules is very much known for, very much popular for here. You are going to go to Forgotten Realm. So party stage right now, and both of these characters, Pika, they have a lot of those um, tools to break the floors here for big damage. And you know what? I'll, I'll just throw it out there, Chisto. I know you're looking forward to this because this is a Jin, my friend. And you, you are taking down notes. He is taking down notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to learn the character. <laughs> yes, yes. I'll confess. Okay, so Forgotten Realm, again, uh, we did our stage bingo. I'm, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, we couldn't do all the stages that we wanted here today. Round and one. now we are in this triple floor break stage known as Forgotten Realm. Match 14 of 14, so meaning 
This is gonna be one barn burner. Yeah, it looks like we're going downstairs early immediately <laughs> after the Hell Sweep goes for the floor break. And right now it's Jules exerting pressure onto Mouts right now, pushing forward. And Mouts, he's hesitating to press buttons here, not tossing out as many moves, afraid of the counter hits happening here against Jules. Okay, here we go. And again, these characters somewhat range deficient, but not to say they don't have the tools to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against each other. And 30 seconds on the clock with Mouts slightly, slightly behind in terms of health, because one combo could spell a difference. Great poking here from both players, and it down back to catches Jules in mid-air. Yeah, I think Jules was going for a slash kick here, but the Ivory Cutter will send us downstairs. Big damage right now for Mouts. He's taken back. The life advantage right now puts Jules in rage. Nine seconds. What's gonna happen here, Pika? And it's worth noting as well that the No parry! What is the plan here for Jules? And he breaks the floor. Well, do we have enough time? And a rage art? No! no! Man! Heartbreaking! Oh man, and Mount gets one. One round because of that floor floor break that this did not give enough time for Jules to do the rage art. Man, what a clutch moment there for Mouts right now. Does pick up the first round here in the set. We're already starting out so exciting right now. Good block there on the statue kick. Good punish as well. Jules right now half health. Let's see Mouts. He is backing away. He doesn't need to rush in. Doesn't need to risk getting hit by one of those big counter hits that Jin has. He does have the life advantage here. Force Jules to come to you. Oh, but there is the God Kick and not not quite in distance there. Then again, the Hook Fist here from, from Jin Kazama just doing his job. And now Mouse enters Rage. And Jules still, still being very comfortable here. Better be careful because again, a while ago, the time was not on his side, Chisto. Oh, and a down forward too, carrying it to the wall. This should be the round here for Mouse. No, one last chance here for Jules. Can he find it? The time, the time. Look at the time, Pika. Five. Oh, it's Five seconds left, and he gets picked off by a down forward one. Mouse now up by two rounds, and there are no more floors to break here, Chisto. Again, a great sidestep here from Mouse. Tries to go for the butterfly flaps here. Magic four clips, Jules, and carries again to the wall. Yeah, and Mouse is riding on so much momentum right now. Up two rounds to none. Jules trying to fight back, trying to find his way outside of this wall. But Mouse, he's not letting up the pressure. God kick, gonna convert into combo, but the side wall. Does mess it up a bit there for Jules, just outside of Rage Mounts, trying to push forward. He can smell the blood, he's trying to close it out. 30 seconds left. Oh, and, and now Mounts' Mounts's back is against the wall here, and, and Jules trying to position Mounts where it will be more favorable for him. Great block on the right hook fist. Here we go. While standing four, great attempt here for Jules, and he does have access to Rage, and Mounts still, still looking really comfortable here with 13 seconds on the clock. What is the plan here for Jules? Oh, tries to go for the one plus two. Great block here from Mouts, and they have forward two, and again, this time, this time, with five seconds left, Jules manages to close that round out. Yeah, Jules still alive here in the match, still down a round though. Can he tie it up here? Mouts trying to find the opening with those jabs, pressing forward. Like you mentioned earlier, Pika, the range deficiency on these characters might be a problem, but they are closing the distance very, very well. Look at the movement! <laughs> Jules tried to go for a parry there, but Mouts not falling for it, not pressing any of those buttons. The slide right there for Mouts gave him an initial boost of damage. And look at how quick time is running out. And these guys not releasing anything heavy. There's the Demon Paw. And Mouts, 30 seconds on the clock with his back against the wall. Jules is trying to figure something out here. There's the God Kick again. Yeah, it's all been moving with a big electric there from Jules. Will lead to a big combo here. Mouts, Savage start to end it. In Rage, gets hit by the Hell Sweep. One more shot. 4-4-3 four, four, there for Jules. We are now tied up in rounds. Two rounds apiece. Rather the 4-4-4 four, four, four of Jin Kazama right there. A heavy, heavy axe kick. Clipping mouse. And that is actually ground hit. So he could not stay down at all. And now a slight, slight poke lead here. For the first time, we have we have seen Jules here with a little bit of composure. Because a while ago, Mouse was just all up in his face. God yep. kick connecting. Yeah, this should be a big combo here. Like you mentioned, the God kick to the wall. Gonna end it with the Electric Savage Shard. Bang! Big damage there. 50% on the combo. Mounts. It's under a lot of pressure right now. Jules not letting up. Hop into Jab. Weird situation right now there. But Mounts still with a life deficit. Trying to make it back. Lands a few pokes here. Does have a slight advantage now. Jules. But 20 seconds on the clock. Anybody's game here, ladies and gentlemen. One launch could do it. And with 15 seconds, Mouts right here being very, very assertive. And Jules uses the Rage Drive here. LLRK. What's the mix-up? Oh, missing wildly. What's gonna happen here? Six seconds. Oh, but the God, God kick. kick. Five seconds. It is lucky five. How many times did the clock land on five seconds and the round ended? Jules, of course, 
Wow, too close for comfort and breathes after that excruciating final, final round. Man, Pico, we could see the relief in nodding to himself as well. Like, man, I just clutched out yes. this match up against Mounds. But like you mentioned, that was very, very close. You know, both of these players very patient as well. We were seeing the clock go down to under 10 seconds before yes. each of those rounds ended. And man, I'm just excited to see what's going to happen for this next match. We did go into stage select, so we are going to stick to the same characters. Again, oddly enough, three matches ended in five with five seconds left on the clock. Is it going to happen again? And now with Infinite Azure, it was understandable a while ago because there were walls in that stage, right? But is that going to happen here when one of them could actually run away literally when the time is on their side? All right, let's see whether or not that will happen here, Pika, of course. This is something that Mouch has been doing a lot. You know, whenever he drops a match, he does switch over to the infinite stage where he has more room to maneuver on this Nina Williams. But right now, it is Jules with a pretty nice life advantage here. Working on a perfect. And not a combo to, st to actually note just yet. This, is, this has been looking really, really good here, uh, Cheese Dots, I'd say, because the combos are not really the priority at all. It's mostly the stand-up game because th these two characters are having a hard time launching each other. Yeah, and that's usually the case in these infinite stages. Mouts misses the Blama. Very weird situation there. What happened there, man? Harada? This, this orientation, ladies and gentlemen, from both players here. Both characters, there it is. The stomp here from Nina Williams. 15 seconds on the clock. And Jules still with a huge life lead. This is what we were talking about, Chisto. Literally running away with this. But with 10 seconds left, Mouts can still catch up a little bit. Oh, wow. Look at the effort that Jin exerted with that hop kick right there. Yeah, hop click to close it out. Something we don't normally see. But yeah, one round now for Jules. Has momentum here. And like we were talking about, the infinite stage. Oh, big jump oh, there. Twice already that that has happened, Chisto. So be better be careful with those notations. Mount yet to catch up on health here because Jules is yet to take damage. All right. Jules are trying to open up here with the strategy kicks. Gets a punish there with the 2 4. Pushing forward here, Mounts. Half health right now. Jules just running away. Like you mentioned, he doesn't need to be afraid. But a big counter hit there. This is going to be a big boy combo from Jules. Oh boy, here we go. And this is it. This, this is 25 seconds on the clock. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. The red stuff from Mounts has paid off in previous matches. Is that going to happen here? Jules still looking really dominant here with 17 seconds left on the clock. And he is literally just sitting pretty with these pokes. Little by little. And there was the blue stuff, but no health to spare. Yeah, and Jules able to put himself right now onto match point. Pika Mounts still trying to find the opening here. Trying to crack the defense, but a hell sweep there from Jules. Will lead to a nice combo. Goes for Oki. Mount's gonna be able to roll himself away. Stature kick. Oh boy. Four there. Mount's just trying to find his offense, but right now he's just not being able to crack the defense of Jules. Jules is playing so compact, so nice right now. Okay, 38 seconds on the clock, and yet to take damage. Jules, look at the footies here, just staring at each other's faces. And there's a 1 2 from Mount. There's another down back three here. Again, ladies and gentlemen, poke is the name of the game for Nina Williams. So she better, she better come up with a lot of those because clock's running out. 24 seconds on the clock. Here we go. Yeah, 20 seconds right now. Very, very close. But one combo could do it for either player here, really. If Mount is able to find the hit. And you no, know, Jules is just backing away here. Just not taking damage. But Mount able to find a few hits. And we're about even on life. 10 seconds. This is going to be very close once again, Pika. This set. <laughs> oh, what's going to happen? Five seconds. Magic five, four, three. And Mount just literally running away because Jules, Jules let go of the gas pedal just a little bit. And Mount, Mount really caught up to that one. Yeah, and I feel like Jules has hesitated a bit too much there. It, not wanting to close out, but gets the hit. Goes for Oki. Nope. Ooh, a little too far on that uh, Electric Wind hook fist. Gets a conversion, you know. Not gonna be able to find, not enough range on that. But like you mentioned, the time has been a huge factor so far here. But Jules, he's pressing a lot more buttons now. He's trying to find his offense, going in a lot more, playing a bit more aggressively. Just looking at him though. There we go, good escape on the overhead throw. And this time, both players do not want to leave it to time. They want to end this. Oh, but there's a god kick, heavy, heavy god kick. 25 seconds on the clock. What is the ender here for Jules? Tries to go for an Oki. There we go, 20 seconds left, and Mouts with a command throw. Yeah, once again, we're going super low on time right now, but Mouts, he is in rage. Gets a big launch, Mouts special right here. Ladies and gentlemen, how does he end this? Will it reach though? Yes, it will. Nina Williams is the queen of the long-ranged rage art. And here we go, final, final round here, ladies and gentlemen. We have two match, two rounds apiece, and Jules on, on set point, and Mouts with a potential tie-up.
Yeah, Mouts, he's found his rhythm right now, and Jules seems to be hesitating a lot whenever Mouts is trying to crack his defense. Now, Mouts. There you go, great block on the Demon Paw and the loser adding up. 10 seconds in Mouth. Look, look at this with Mouth pokes again. Nino Williams, the the queen of, of these quick, quick offenses. Yeah, and you see what Mouth is doing here. He's playing with a lot more urgency now, not allowing Jules to just wait it out. Mouth is going in here for the kill. Puts Jules in rage. He's about to tie this up. A few more hits would Ooh, do it. 30 seconds. Oh my god, it's so tense right now. But oh, the LLRK me. again. Let's see how much damage can Jules put down. Both of them in range. What's gonna happen here? 20 seconds once again. We're so low on time. Mount. Oh, one more hit. One more mix up for either player. It's basically 50 50 right now. Pika 10. Both of them one hit away from dying. Oh, but and it's a down Mount. forward one from Mount tying things up. Too close to call, she's though. Too intense to end up with a slight <laughs> grin in Jules' face, knowing that that was really well played for Mount. Yeah, Mouts played that situation very, very well, keeping his cool. But man, going back, you know, I feel like Jules, like you mentioned earlier, uh, took his foot off of the gas pedal because he was already on set point, up two rounds to none, but just started waiting for Mouts to come in. It let Mouts reset and just find the offense there against Jules. But man, we are going to head into our definitely the final match yes. of the evening to decide who gets to go home with more points. And once again, we are going to go to an infinite stage. Infinite Azure 2, ladies and gentlemen. That is, again, kind of like the stage you saw earlier, but in a nighttime, more beautiful setting, safe to say. Okay, so now again, ladies and gentlemen, both guys denied each other the three. So only one is going home with two points, and the other, again, the consolation one. Okay, so again, Chisto, this is looking too close to call. What is gonna happen? Here we go. I mean, we get to find out right now, Pika. Let's see who gets to find the offense first. Jules trying to check the legs, dropping away here at Mouts with the stature kick. All right, already 10 seconds burn and nobody's oh. taking damage. Oh my God, what's gonna happen? They're just looking at each other. Very, very patient play here from both players. Just biding their time. Forward, forward two there from Jules gets blocked. There we go, the great interception again of Nina Williams. Remember that Nina is the queen of poking and harassment. Now with 33 seconds left on the clock, Jules is now on the defensive. There's a while standing three counter hit. And what is the combo here? Jules maximizes it with a Zen 1 to Ender. 24 seconds on the clock. Not too far on life, these players. All right, Mouts though. He's trying to find it again. So Jules is just dashing in his face. You need to be careful though. If Mouts gets a big launch here, it could mean a lot. Checks him with the low 13 seconds, Jules. Finds a hit here. Just leaves Mouts out of range. So that's something that Mouts can't use. All right. Finally in range. Six seconds. I think Jules could get this round. He would definitely All get right. the round because of that Demon oh, Paw no. connecting in mid-air. And Mouts has to recollect himself just a little bit to avoid that situation again. Because again, this is one of the longest matches we've had today, Chisto. Yeah, almost all of the rounds here have been going to those time-ups and right now both of them just playing extremely patiently but right now it is Jules getting the hit here onto Mounts. Can he maximize the damage? All right. Goes for an OK there. Additional damage with that ground hitting down too and Mounts now here with half-life deficiency compared to Jules with a speck of damage only and 35 seconds on the clock here. Jules racking up those pokes and Mouse again. We've seen him. We've seen him come out of the situation on top, right? Yeah. Let's see whether or not Jules will continue to put his foot on the gas pedal. But right now, a big low parry there from Mouse. But gets put in rage, but a big counter hit there from Jules, not letting up there on the gas. Now on set point, Mouse. Can he come back here? We've seen him do it time and time again. Stature kick here for Jules, trying to push forward, Mouse. The patience of both players here is just astounding, ladies and gentlemen. Here goes a down four here from, from Jules, and he's still up on pokes. Again, this is so fun to watch, Shisto, because these guys never really needed their combos to begin with. They were just using their own stand-up and neutral game here. Yeah, and speaking of the neutral, it's Mouse pushing forward. The good sidestep into the lodge. He is going to get a combo here. Yes, he does. And ending with a slide, the priority on his side here. And Mount again, again with the barrage of offense with 25 seconds and the LLRK. But missing its mark here is Jules's chin. Wow, here we go. Forward for the God Kick blocked here. 17 seconds on the clock. What is the mix up for these guys? Oh my God, Pika, how many times have we been in the situation <laughs> just in this set alone? We're under 10 seconds right now, but the LLRK, Savage tried to end it. Slight life advantage here for Jules. Mount, you need to go in. Oh, oh and trade. that is so unfortunate for Mouth oh. with a bad trade on the slide. And three rounds straight goes to Jules with two points to one. Congratulations. Wow.
That was one of the most intense ones I've seen today. Man, Pika, how many times did these two players put us in the same situation? Yes. The time's up very even on health. Who gets to land the last poke <laughs> before we time up? That's always been the question throughout this entire set. But man, it was Jules able to close it out, able to find the clutch moments and just land those big counter hits when they mattered. Successful rage art and rage drives from both players as well. And let's look at the highlights on how it went down, how it gave us mini heart attacks throughout three matches right here, Tisto. And there it is. That was so heartbreaking right there with no more time to spare because that would have wow. killed should, have the, should it have been one second longer. Yeah, it took them quite a long time to go downstairs. <laughs> Actually, gravity was not on Jules' side. In that situation, well, like we mentioned again, five seconds left. On always under 10 seconds in these situations. And you know, you can only imagine what the players are going through whenever they are in those situations. But yeah, you know, you need to keep your cool. And here we see the good rage art, like you mentioned earlier, the long range rage art there for mounts, able to clutch it out. And once again, similar situation. And this is, this is what it was. Those guys really tried to close it out here, but it was Mautz who, who finalized that, that round with that down forward one. Man, you know, we just take deep breaths after every end of the round. We're always holding our breath, guys, trying to see what's going to happen next, what's going to happen. Breathing so deeply, I am. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> and there it is, the Savage Sword closing a little bit of distance and noticing that the clock is really running quick. Mouts tried to do a slide, but Jules with that God Kick creating the distance he needed to secure that round. And again, that answers the question, ladies and gentlemen. You don't really need to knock your opponent out. You know, you just need to actually let the time run out. Yeah, but with our final match concluded, guys, we are going to go on to a short break right now. Of course, it's me, Chisto. By with Pika right here. You know, I'm I'm gonna keep mentioning he's really tall, so <laughs> stay tuned guys. We'll be right back.
And welcome back. We're here live here at Eastwood Quezon City for the Nationals. I am your courtside reporter, Theo Articuno Rodriguez. And joining me today after wreaking havoc and disaster, or should I say disaster, it is JD Sasta. Dude, kamusta yung araw mo ngayon? Uh, ngayon naman, parang okay na okay ako ngayon. Kaso nahirapan lang talaga ako. Kasi si Andre talagang strong yun pag kalaban yun. Ngayon, kanina kay Shoti naman, medyo focus ako. Kaso nawala ako nung nanalo ko. Tapos nabawi niya yung panalo. Nabawi ko rin. Parang nagbawi ang kami. And in all fairness, ha, para sa araw na to, ikaw yung pinaka ina Kayong dalawa ni Ray, actually, yung pinaka inaabangan na labang ngayon. Kumbaga, ito yung sinasabi lang highlight match of the day. So, with that said, ano nga ba yung naging practice mo going into this? Because these past few days, nakikita talaga namin na ang ganda ng nagiging improvement mo day per day as the Nationals go along. Mm. Ayun, yung tungkol kay yung sa parang featured ngayon sa araw na to, sa day 6, yung ako pati si Shoti, sabi ko, ano to eh, Battle of Hokage. Kasi <laughs> ano siya eh, ano siya, uh, character niya is Master Raven, is ninja. So ako, maaaring mahilig din ako sa mga ninja-ninja, kaya parang pinagandaan ko, ang ginagawa kong vlogging practice is more watching, ano, pas video na natapos na, pinapa, in, 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 parang, Pinupokus ko, ah, anong pwedeng iba to dito? Ah, anong pwedeng panlaban dito sa mga ganun? Ano, ang ginagawa ang practice mo, nood-nood lang. In all fairness, it's actually a good way to practice not only yung execution, kumbaga, pero also studying other players so that going into this, you're much more better prepared with how to react going into these games. So, also another question is because another thing that I really like about you is clearly, ang ganda ng mindset mo parati going into these games. And I think, especially in your case, lalo na nagiging build up yung sayo. Like, people are expecting that JD Zasta, we could actually potentially see him going up and up and up. So, ano nga ba yung nagiging mindset mo going into day six? Hmm. Kasi lahat naman kami dito ang player, parang ayaw namin mapunta sa pinakamababa. Lahat kami parang compete Ang hanggat maaari, mapunta kami sa taas. Hanggat maaari, manalo kami. Kaya nung habang dumarating yung araw, yung ng day ng day ng laban ng national nung unang araw ko medyo pressure ako eh pressure sa first day second parang yung pressure na yun nawawala pa unti-unti sa pagtagal ng pagtagal ng araw and sa, sana ano pala rin ako sa mga susunod pang araw na, na manalo pa rin so before we pass it off to our casters I gotta ask especially with the great performance that we've seen from you may gusto ka bang pasalamatan or any shoutouts that you'd want to give to either people that have been supporting you or even cheering for you here at the Nationals. Yun. Ano, una sa lahat, syempre, lagi ako nagpapasalamat tayo kay Lord. Sa, fa uh, sa family, yun. yun shout, shout out sa family ko, sa ma family taron kay Mami Remy, Papa Jacinto, kay Matit, uh, Jason, Gerson, Ate Mitch Nori. Uh, shout out din sa ate ko na, na nasa Japan, si Afamiya Maguchi, pati yung mga anak niya doon. Shout out din ngayon dito sa supportive kong girlfriend na pinakamamahal ko. Nandito ngayon para sa mapota sa akin. Shout out sa family nila, sa Mama, Papa, kay Ate Risa, kay Nini, kay Cheryl, kay Pia. Shout out sa Cervantes family. At siya, shout out sa boss. Ang, so ay, mga boss namin, mga pogi namin mga boss. Kay Boss Arvin, Boss Joe, Boss Arvin, Boss Joshua. Tsaka shout out din sa partner ko na si Prime. Shout out lahat and God bless. Thank you so much, JD Zasa. I really look forward to seeing the next days to come. Like I said, been a great build-up for you, and hopefully we see you at the top as the weeks go by. So there you have it, guys. This has been your courtside reporter, Theo Articuno Rodriguez. Things have been awesome for today. But by the way, before I pass it over to our casters, I'd like to once again invite you all for all the future weeks to come for the Nationals. Be sure to watch the broadcast of the Nationals on Pay TV at One Sports and EGG Network, by Signal TV, and on Free TV at Five Plus by ESPN. And of course, the Nationals would also like to thank PayMaya, our official digital payments partner. And for more about the Nationals, be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. It's all slash PH Nationals. So. So with that said, not much else to say. We're going to go ahead and let our casters wrap it up. So why don't you guys do the honors, gentlemen. Chisto and Pika, let's go. <sighs> Always a place of zen. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Articuno, <laughs> and of course, that very wonderful interview with Suha Execution Punisher's Jade Disaster. And, you know, it saddens me right now that the day has come to an end, but not sad enough to not remember the matches that came our way, right? And oh boy. Speaking of the matches right now, after those results, we are going to get to see the standings right now. Here, of course, it is still Signal Ultra Warriors Vermilion up 
in the top with 28 points but just below him right now LPE AK with 27 and at third LPE Dojin with 26 followed up by PLDT Smart Omega Jules with 23 points and now tied up to Execution's Punisher's Prime with 21 points Signal Ultra Warriors Machine Head with 21 as well followed up by Happy Feet Empress Haji with right. 20 for the second half and these guys have been grinding it out truly is Brandy Pro's Maru with 16 points STIE Olympians is Coffee Prince with 14 tied with Brand E Pro's Mouts Wow, 14 is really lucky for them. And Happy Feet Emperor's Ray with 13 points. Don Argus from SDIE Olympians, of course, with 11. J Disaster, as we saw earlier, is now on 9 points with PLDT Smart Omega's Jason with the infinite 8 points. Again, ladies and gentlemen, these guys are going to grind it out for the remaining days of our conference. Yeah, and you know, Pika, like uh, J Disaster said in his interview, everyone's trying to move up in the standing. So everybody's really trying to compete. And right now, we're going to see the schedule for tomorrow, Sunday, August 25, day 7 of uh, the Nationals here for Tekken 7. Of course, match 1, it will be Signal Ultra Warriors Machine Head up against Bren E Pro Mouts, followed by LPAK against PLDT Smart Omega Jules. And then match 3 will be J Disaster from Suho Execrations Punishers Prime and facing off against STIE Olympians Don Argus. Wow, okay, so now we have uh, Ray, of course, as we saw earlier. He is, he does have his hands full, you know, but not to say the same for Vermilion, who is facing Dojin again. Now with Jason and Haji facing each other for the first time, we could expect only the craziest sets. These character specialists have a lot in store. And lastly, Bren Maru versus Coffee Prince. And again, ladies and gentlemen, this is only a preview of the first half of this day. Yeah, it should be very exciting to see how those matches will turn out because you know all of these players they're really stepping up their game all of them have been improving throughout nationals wow okay so again realistically speaking hmm i'm i'm, I'm making more character gambles here my friend so <laughs> let's see but right now ladies and gentlemen we are so sorry we're gonna cut this short but thank you for tuning into the nationals pika here with chisto and see you on to the next one